Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final day of these four MSSs in a row. Once again, I'm Matthias, also known as Matthias, and I'm joined by Eric King Levchuk. It is an exciting day today. We have 26 players who have woken up bright and early this morning to compete in our final tournament of this MSS weekend, and we should see some great battles this morning. Exactly. We have so many great battles on the way here today. We saw so many teams yesterday, so many different teams as well. And to everyone's surprise, everyone's banking on this Ice Rider. We'll get to uh, the, the stats in a minute. We were looking at the play rates. But Ice Rider, one of the most popular picks and most anticipated to win picks, but it only won the first day really after that Maridon has proved dominance every single day after that yeah I think Maridon has come out and been this really great Pokemon a little bit harder to use but has made a great effort in proceeding today and congrats to Rowan on some amazing plays last exactly. night I was watching from home and that finals game was intense the double burn was absolutely insane I think we do have to talk about the true the true MVP of that team was Volcarona. Volcarona is a Pokemon that coming into this weekend I did not think was competitively great, but I was wrong, and I am sorry, Volcarona. It was an absolute monster yesterday, and I'm excited to see how people counter it going into today. Exactly. That Ice Rider totally counters out the Maradon, so that's why you have to bring that second semi-carry there with the exact opposite typing of that of that Ice Rider. You know, you have the bug, you have that fire, you have everything you need there. Yeah, and... We can look at our stats. John bringing us some uses stats from the past three days. Ice Rider has been on over a quarter of our teams. Yesterday we saw it on 34% of teams. So going in today, players know Ice Rider will be here and will have developed strategies for Ice Rider. And speaking of Ice Rider, the first team we're going to see here today is going to be from Emma Brooks. And they are going to be bringing that Ice Rider. And that is looking to be the team we've seen before, of course, relying on that Trick Room setup, followed by Amoongus Incineroar, Raging Bolt, Urshifu Rapid Strike, and Gothitelle, which is an interesting pick as well. But before we get to the nitty gritty, who is Emma Who is Emma facing here today? It's going to be Matthew Warren driving in after their 2 a.m. shift ended all the way from <laughs> Kingston, coming here today to try and win it all. They're going to be running Rillaboom Incineroar Tornadus, Ursaluna Blood Moon, Urshifu Rapid Strike, and Calyrex Shadow Rider. So, it's going to be a battle of the Calyrexes here. Yeah, it really is. I think the interesting thing on Emma's team is that Gothitelle. That Gothitelle has a ton of different things they can use. We've seen it pair up with Pokemon and trap people in. I remember on Friday night we saw a, Chi, a Terra Ground Chi Yu paired up with Gothitelle to instantly one-shot Maridons. So it'll be interesting to see what Gothel can do here and how it can win that matchup for Emma, one of our locals here in Windsor, who's normally out here pretty often. Exactly, yeah. We love to see it, but honestly, I don't know how that Shadow Tag's going to work here. The Caloric Shadow is a ghost type, and along with Incineroar, the one that's going to be swapping in and out the most out of all of these teammates, is also a, go a Kintera ghost if need be. So there's a lot on this team that gives it a little bit more... Uh, <laughs> movement that it needs to get going so that gotham might not be getting the value that we expect it to so we might see a swap in for one of the other supporting mons which could be that incineroar or the amoongus or even bring in that urshifu for just a little extra pressure yeah urshifu is another pokemon we've seen almost all week the on set we've seen it at 50 percent usage rates pretty much the whole week except for yesterday where we saw it drop off drastically going from 50 percent of on all teams down to 26 yesterday so people are starting to drop urshifu for these different counters so we'll see if urshifu can continue today to be that dominating force i think people want uh another dps pokemon that has maybe just a little bit more survivability uh, rather than the urshifu i think that's maybe why we're seeing the switch up because when you're going up against another restricted mon you just have that one hit ko potential that's just so scary but hey with all that being said let's see how this one shakes up we're gonna be going right into the first match we're seeing the Calyrex Shadow and the Rillaboom versus that Urshifu and there's that Gothitelle that's coming out nice and early trying to trap something in yeah now Calyrex with that has one ability is just so strong making berries no more part of the meta relying on that Rillaboom's grassy search to keep yourself in this all right, we're seeing the Goth still already out here. This Calyrex could pivot out here if it need be, but I think they're going to stay in. Urshifu has the U-turn to threaten as well. Yeah, I think this first game especially is going to be a lot of playing each other out. 
exactly. Obviously, Matthew hasn't been here all weekend, so this is his first time here. So a lot of these players won't know how to go at them. The rest of these players have been playing for the past three days and know how to play how each one plays if they played them before. So Matthew is a total wild card in today's competition. Absolute wild card indeed. The Astro Barrage goes off though. It's just so fast. Doesn't even need the Trick Room setup. And oh. almost gets the double KO, taking Urshifu down and Gothdol down to 20 HP. Yeah, that's a ton of damage, and seeing Urshifu go down that first turn is not a great scenario. We'll have to see how they bounce back. I don't know if we'll see Calyrex Ice Rider come out yet. They do have that Raging Bolt as well in the back. I think you need to start getting ready to bring out Calyrex and doing some intense damage. Exactly, you need to start closing that damage gap as soon as you can, because it's going to spiral out of control as that Grim Nay is going to keep on trucking here. Now, the Raging Bull being committed. They want to try and clear out this Calyrex, maybe with a Draco Meteor being covered. There's a lot of options here for Emma, but none of them are quite clear just yet. Yeah, you look at that Electro Web as an option to start slowing down Calyrex to get some of your faster Pokemon in the back ready to go. You also look at Gang Trick. You can also look at Thunderclap for that priority to Calyrex. I wonder what the damage calculations here. I'm not sure if Thunderclap even knocks out Shadow Rider. Yeah, Matthew in an absolutely amazing position. Pretty much starting this one fresh with a special attack boost after that wipe. Emma has to dig deep and think which way to pivot this. You have the foul play, you have the trick room. You have a few options here to try and set up your next few choices. Bolt switch being committed, the trick room being committed as well. Let's just hope you can get it off in time. Yeah, I don't hate this play. I think this is a great play you protect Raging Bolt for later if you still need it. There's the Terra. Ooh. Terra Ghost. So really, this Terra Ghost we don't see very often on Shadow Rider. Shadow Rider has been commonly playing a defensive Terra like Terra Fairy to block, but we're seeing this Terra Shadow to really just up the damage of Astral Barrage. This is probably going to knock do a ton of damage. Yeah, with a plus one from Grim Nay, this is, might even one-shot the Raging Bolt. Just barely That's does it. not, but <laughs> as you can That's see... That's a lot of damage. Another special attack boost going forward. The enemy Calyrex is going to have everything stacked against them. There's the Woodhammer to probably finish off Raging Bolt, and it does. All that is left is the Soul Calyrex. What a dominating first few turns by Matthew here. Exactly. We don't even know what uh, the other two mons he brought in are. Like, we can have an idea of what they may be, but the fact that the strategy hasn't been fully revealed by Matthew is going to be such an uphill battle for Emma. Oh, absolutely. And now, it's going to be an FF, because <laughs> sure, you could bank on a few lucky things happening, but a plus three Grim <laughs> Calyrex with the Grim Nay, not, you don't want to go up against that. No, pl it's plus three. There's still four Pokemon still alive. There's really not much you can do, but you take the FF and you refocus and try and figure out what you can do in the next game. Exactly, but it's going to be hard to figure out what you're going to do, especially if you're on Amistin, because you lack that normal type. Even the normal psychics, psychics we've been seeing, like uh, the Farigarath and the Ndidi, they provide some immunity, some good defensive coverage against this Calyrex Shadow, even if for a quick swap and guarantees a Trick Room. kind of makes them have to weigh their options, maybe go for another move. But the fact that you don't have that makes this that much harder. You have nothing that's immune to these Astro Barrages Slur. Even if it's not super effective, it's gonna do is so much damage. Yeah, there's the, there's a Terra Dark and Amoongus here that could be really impactful and really help that battle, but it's gonna be a hard fight. I mean, we're seeing this, again, for the first time, this Terra Shadow Calyrex here that we don't normally see. So that uh, Astro Barrage is doing just so much damage and you really have to play around it and avoid it, give it can't give it the opportunity to, to Terra Ghost. Exactly, and the Focus Sash is going to be on the Calyrex Shadow, so I think this is maybe a glass cannon build here, just going all in, even if there is a Dark type or someone that could single strike it out here, it's going to still be standing guaranteed two turns with that at least. Yeah, we've seen the Focus Sash a few times this weekend, and it's been really impactful in the games that it's won with Focus Sash. It means you have to hit it twice, it means you can't take it out in one turn, and even if you get that Trick Room up for Calyrex Ice Rider, it won't be able to gl Glacial Lance one shot because because of that Focus Sash. Yeah, now, even if there would be a switch up on the team, there's so many heavy hitters on Matthew's side. You have that Incineroar to even pressure that Calyrex even more, lower the attack, make it dead in the water just that much more. There's so much going on Matthew's team that it's going to be a tough battle for Emma, but it's not impossible. Leading with the Incineroar is a good play. Yeah, the Incineroar Calyrex lead here, I don't hate this. You can try and get up the 
Trick Room with Calyrex. Maybe you fake out the Rillaboom and hope to survive. The important thing to know here is that this Incineroar by Emma is just a pure Dark type. No Fire type moves, just the three Dark type moves of Knock Off, Fake Out, Parting Shot, and Will O Wisp. So great, it's good against physical attackers, but doesn't have a way to deal with Rillaboom, which is a big threat here. Exactly, but it does have a way to deal with the enemy Calyrex that Knock Off is not going to do. Uh, bad damage here. That fake out pressure isn't going to work on Calyrex because of the normal typing. Yeah, and they're not going to. Not running Terra Fairy, so they're never. Go so even if they Terra, it doesn't matter. So you really have to fake out the Rillaboom. Exactly. Now, so many choices here on your Calyrex. Do you want to Terra? Do you want to try and lose out on those bonuses? There's really no defensive reason as to why you'd want to go water right now. Yeah, Unless there's I'm something I'm not seeing. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Emma is looking looking into the future and seeing something possible, maybe trying to avoid a super effective attack. But Terra Water in front of a Rillaboom, you gotta be very confident you're able to stop this before it gets going. Yeah, my guess is they think they're gonna be able to one-shot it. I wouldn't be shocked if Glac Glacial Lance does get the one-shot. They just have to survive that Terra Ghost Astral Barrage first. Exactly, there it is. Both horses have now been teared. The Calyrex is the kings atop their mounts, ready to face off in a spar right here. There it is. Now let's see how this one plays out. We have no idea what Matthew has in store. Rillaboom being faked out. Gonna at least get one turn in here. Astro Barrage Astro goes Barrage. out. The Terra Astro Barrage should be doing a lot of damage here, but it should not kill both. Yeah, it brings them both down to half. Yeah, some really great survivability there. And here's the Glacial Lance on the rebound. Gets the gets the one knockout, doesn't get the Calyrex, but get that gets that Calyrex really low. And now you have that chilling nay going up, attack boosting on the side of that Calyrex is gonna be absolutely massive. Now Matthew needs to act quick. Sure, he'll have one more turn here, one more Astro Barrage, but he needs to ensure that he can take out both of these Pokemon. Yeah, and that grassy terrain actually really helpful for Ice Ride here. Took a big hit from Astral Barrage, but can now heal up. Could protect this turn, except the Urshifu comes out. That Rapid Strike is going to really put pressure on making that Protect Read. Yeah, this is looking very, very difficult for Matthew, but there's there are some exits here. There's some plays he can go for. Looks like Emma going to try for something interesting here. Hovering that Amoongus swap in to put even more pressure on this Calyrex, maybe eat another uh, Astro Barrage there, try and save the Incineroar. Yeah, Urshifu is such a threatening Pokemon for Emma to face here that the fact that it can hit through Protect means you can't stall it out. You have to deal, you have to do something here to make a play, make a read correctly. Switching out the Incineroar here. But they're gonna go for that Protect play anyways. There's the Amoongus. Is going to be switched out. Calyrex using the Protect, hoping to play some mind games here, using a big brain play. U-turn comes through, hits through, and now we're going to see another swap out. Yeah, the big thing with that U-turn is it does get Calyrex into knockout range from Astral Barrage. So we're going to be sent out here. Now Calyrex Shadow has a few options if they did read this Protect. Could go for the Astral Barrage, try and take them out. Yeah, try yeah, and take the out the opponent. Barrage. So we'll see how much damage that does onto that Amoongus. Let's see. Wow, it does, does a, a lot. Ton of damage. And this is even before it gets any of its nays off here. Yeah, Calir again, Shadow Rider is such a strong Pokemon. We haven't seen it win this weekend yet, just because it's so frail and it struggles in a lot of these matchups sometimes. But if it can get into the right position, it can do a ton of damage. Exactly, it's such a glass cannon there, even more so the one made of ice. <laughs> and now, looking at this options, these options here, Emma looking to spore and shut down that Calyrex to get a swap in here, and save the Calyrex of their own. You're losing that stat bonus there, but I guess you did get lowered from the Incineroar. Yeah, well no, they have the clear amulet on Calyrex to block oh, that right. eliminate, but I think you have to switch out there because I don't think they actually survived a Astral Barrage. So you're trying to get Incineroar in here. You eat the fake out, thankfully, and now you'll get the sleep off on the Shadow Rider. No, they won't. It doesn't Amoongus go first. Go down. Yeah, it loses the speed and it's going to be taken down as well. Incineroar being taken very low. A critical hit on Amoongus to just add insult to injury there. It's just going to be down to Incineroar. The Calyrex 
and a one more. And as you can tell, the snowball is starting to spin up here on the side of Shadow Rider. Yeah, we'll see Raging Bolt from here. I actually think that maybe with a Thunderclap, that might do enough damage to knock out Shadow Rider. We'll have to see. Maybe not, though. It will be close. Going for this Volt Switch into the Calyrex. I don't hate that. It's going to do a bit more damage and allow Raging Bolt to get back in the back and hide for a little bit longer. Yeah, you have to try and play this one carefully. Very, very difficult scenario, especially with Emma. You have the lead. You just have to make sure to not let this Calyrex get too strong. The defensive play is going to be massive. You have the fake out pressure you need to protect here. Raging Bolt also using the Volt Switch there, but it gets blocked out. Yeah, a pretty, a pretty, pretty, a good read by Matthew to protect that bolt switch, keeping Calyrex along for even longer. Grassy Terrain is probably close to going down here, so we'll lose that additional health bonus. It yeah, should be going down in a turn or two here. Now knock off, super effective against that Calyrex. I think that would even knock it out at this point. Yeah, I think you have to go for it just to make sure you deal that damage. You just want to be careful because you don't want that Calyrex living on one. There's Thunderclap, Ooh. and it lives on less than 10%. And now it's going to get another Nay off here. Even if this doesn't take out the Raging Bolt, it's going to absolutely put them in a position to take this one, as that Raging Bolt is now knocking on Death's door here. Just so close to being knocked out. Yeah, that did a ton of damage to Raging Bolt. And now it's hit with the parting shot, so it won't be able to switch out anymore and remove those stat buffs. So it is a rough position. And the Calyrex that Emma's going to switch in will not be able to defensively protect next turn either, because this Urshifu is going to be swapped in. Yeah. I think they would have loved to get the Volt Switch off onto the Calyrex, and then you could switch in Ice Rider and still gain that Grassy Train defense boost. Now the Grassy Train is gone, and now Calyrex will come in here just under 50% of its HP left. Yeah, now it is down to the wire here. Sure, there's three Pokemon left. You could maybe turn this around if you're Emma, but the odds are stacked against you. Matthew just has positioned themselves very, very well here. Trick Room going to be set up by Calyrex. That's the only chance they have to win this. Urshifu actually switching out. I did not see that one coming. You want to get the attack drop on that Calyrex to try and even further ensure your victory. Clear amulet, though, not going to do yeah. much. There's a clear amulet. That's why you make the switch out, because you protect oh, Urshifu wow. from the Thunderclap. Disable the Thunder Punch wow. is a beautiful play by Matthew. Disable on Shadow Rider is a move you do not commonly see. And Encore as well. Wow. But maybe that play was not. I think you did have to do that. But now with Trick Room up, you have to play this very carefully. Yeah, that is a. This is a very interesting Shadow Rider set that I actually haven't looked at. Normally we see Shadow Rider running a second attacking move, either that Draining Kiss or that Psychic or some move in that variety. It lives the high horsepower. The Will-O-Wisp comes out, now it's going to be burned here. Oh, you hate to see that. It looks like it might come down to an Urshifu duel here because the Volt Switch is going to come through, take out the Calyrex. Yeah. Again, that Disable being or the Disable hitting Thunderclap is really detrimental here, and that might be the game deciding winner. That Will-O-Wisp and the Sovereign Tantrum miss really hurts as well. 95% chance to hit, so there's that 5% chance window that it will miss, and it just happens to be the turn you really needed it. Yeah, now, is this Urshifu strong enough to weather a Glacial Lance and probably another move by this Raging Bolt, because we are still in Trick Room. High horsepower gonna come through. It wow! Incineroar stays up and gets the flare bullets off. Doesn't do much though, cause it's Terra Water. Yeah, that Terra Water really protecting it. But to miss stopping Tantrum two turns in a row really hurts. And Urshifu survives the Volt Switch. Wow. And Gap goes Raging Bolt. But will they live this Glacial Lance coming their way? That's the big question. Uh, they're both very, very low. They're within one hit KO territory. Yeah, I would say probably not if Calyrex wasn't burned, but that burn is gonna lower its damage. I don't disagree with this here. Just trying to single target knockout that Urshifu gets the knockout. I don't know if Incineroar has enough in the tank to take out Calyrex. All he has is Flare Blitz. He has no knockoff to try and take out this 
fours, and he's going to be taking a lot of nice. damage from this as well. He's going to be taking very low. Will this be a knockout? No, it will not. The burn's going to get them very low, though. 7 HP. This is coming down to the wire, and now it will be decided within this next turn. They just need to hit this high horsepower, and they do, and Emma. Wow. And we're already going to a game three this early in the morning. Yeah, this is getting so competitive. This new regulation is absolutely amazing, and props to Emma. The odds look stacked against them all the way throughout that series, or that match, and they managed to turn it around. Yeah, that was some incredible fight back there. I mean, they were really down against the cards, and then you see the burn, and then you see the stomping cancer miss twice. Wow. And really, that's got to affect your mental game a lot. Exactly, but, you got to stay locked in, though. Yeah, but that ability to <laughs> bounce back is really crucial here. Got to stay. Yeah, absolutely, I agree with you. And now... The Caloric Shadow, even when it was performing though, you could definitely tell its fragility really came into play. It was not able to stand up all the way through to the end when you absolutely needed it. No, and that's the hard part with Caloric Shadow, is that it is just so frail. Sure, it hits like an absolute truck, but what does that do for you when you die to one Thunderclap or one of these other really damaging moves? I do like the actual tech of Encore and Disable, that's something I would have never thought of coming out from a Calyrex. Yeah, that's a really interesting play. Uh, the Disable, absolutely imperative for that Thunderclap, but I think the fact that that came so late into it, like the Thunderclap was not committed, so it was not able to be disabled. The fact that it was not able to be disabled for so long, just the threat of it yeah. staying up was a beautiful play by Emma. And you have to think about that Disable now going against an opposing Calyrex, if it will get that if it will disable Glacial Lance. If it turns off Glacial Lance, that makes Calyrex so much worse. Yeah, and now the Intimidate coming through. And Sonora, though, I think it is stronger again into the Shadow Rider because it is that physical attacker there. Yeah, with both Fake Out and Knock Off. Knock Off will do a ton of damage to Calyrex and remove that Focus Sash from it, even if it were to survive. All right, let's see. Switching out the Shadow Rider here. Now Matthew playing a little bit more defensively. Going for the Urshifu switch in. Going for the Terra nice and early, trying to really lay on that damage. But if you know that that Urshifu, or that Imposing Incineroar only has Flare Blitz, that's a great move there. I'm trying to see if uh, Matthew has anything to cover this water terror type. You have the Reelaboom, but that's risky going to something that's uh, when it's weak to ice. Yeah, especially with the Trick Room up here. We're going to see those Glacial Lances coming in real strong and real fast. Now we're seeing the Parting Shot come through as well. You want to try and nerf that Urshifu as much as you can. Yeah, force that Urshifu to switch out. Make sure it can't stay alive, can't stay on the field for too long and force something else in that you want to take out in one shot. There's the high horsepower, does connect, does not pick up the knockoff on the kill on Incineroar, but Incineroar gets that will of bomb that hurts. Yeah, that's gonna sting quite a bit. Calyrex's gonna be burned down. The will o -Wisp right back, but Urshifu dodges the will o -Wisp. Wow. And using U-turn, gonna get decent damage and give Matthew the ability to reposition a little bit, but I'm wondering now, you swapped into Urshifu and now you're swapping out. What do you do? I guess you're trying to put pressure and force the Terra type so you can switch into this Rillaboom. Yeah, you can bring in the Rillaboom now, you can Grassy Glide, and you probably think that Rillaboom survives one Glacial Lance because of that burn having the damage from those physical attacks. Yeah, I think Re I believe in Rillaboom. They're able to withstand at least one Glacial Lance. Now Calyrex, side of Emma. Gonna try and set up that Trick Room. Maybe go for a different play as well. The Glacial Lance could get a double knockout here, or at least take Reloom down to half. Yeah, if you're lucky with this Glacial Lance here, that could be crucial. We'll have to see what happens here. It's gonna be a really close game down to the wire. Emma is not having a ton of luck with the accuracy today. No, it has been that high horsepower missed quite a bit. When it even ma mattered very, very much. Yeah, missing twice and then missing the will, the will o wisp on the Urshifu. If you get that will o wisp off, Urshifu is pretty much dead in the water. Surging Strikes becomes a non-factor. All right, we're gonna Terra the Reelaboom. 
good defensive terror there. The high horsepower is still going to threaten it, though. But at least you're not going to be threatened by the big spread move of Glacial Lance. Goes over to the Incineroar. Gets the knockout with high horsepower. And now, I think we're going to see a grassy glide come through from this Rillaboom to try and take out this Calyrex. I think they might be going for Wood Hammer. Glass, grassy glide would have activated already. And there's the Wood Hammer. Gets the knockout. Gets wow. the one hit kill. That's exactly what you need if you're Matthew. And now, you can bring in your Calyrex without the threat of another Calyrex shutting you down. Yeah, you do still have Raging Bolt in the back. A lot of Pokemon can hopefully be helpful. And there's the parting shot. Again, restricting those options that Matthew is sort of forced to switch out now. Yeah, Emma, though. Gonna do a double switch in here using parting shot to bring in the Amoongus. And now, probably gonna bring in that Raging Bolt as well. Oh no, they're gonna throw out the Incineroar to just go for some debuffs before they bring in the heavy hitters. Yeah, I mean, you might as well throw out Incineroar. There's nothing stopping you from putting Incineroar back out. Again, Raging Bolt is your end game win con if you really need it. So we'll see what happens here. There's the Unnerve. There is the Intimidate. Gonna really put a damper on that Rillaboom, especially with the Parting Shot as well. That Re Rillaboom, not gonna be doing much of anything. Yeah, I think Rillaboom's goal here is going to be to switch out. Rillaboom is probably gonna U-turn, get out of dodge, and switch into something else. Up in Sinor now, putting a lot of pressure with this Fake Out and the knockoff as well, threatening the Calyrex. Protect on the Calyrex, a good move. Keep it alive. Fake out comes through on the Rillaboom. Spore comes out from Amoongus, and it gets protected out by the Calyrex. With the flinch, Rillaboom can be struggling with choices here. Doesn't have much of anything to t absolutely take out this Amoongus for sure. Yeah, with Trick Room still up, that Calyrex is going to be moving at the end of everything. So you have to decide what you want to do. Yeah, you have a lot of choices to make here. I'm wondering which way this one's going to go. Emma's still in a position to turn this one around, as long as this Calyrex doesn't get going. A few more nays, though, and things will just be out of control. St. Vila Boom. Rillaboom really not doing anything right now. You need to get the swap out there. And you're yeah. going to maybe go for a double swap out. You're going to go for Calyrex, switching out with the Urshifu. Eat the Spore. Now your Urshifu's asleep. That's a dangerous position to be in. But at least nothing has one hit potential here on the field for it. So there's the U-turn. Now we're going to see Calyrex actually enter back into the field. So a great switch to sort of move Calyrex to the other side of the board here. Good swap, trying to prevent it from being spored out, but I don't know. You have to try and take out this Amoongus because they're just going to keep clicking spore every single turn. Oh, and the parting shot comes through on the Urshifu as well. That Urshifu, even if it wakes up, not going to do much. Yeah, I think we'll see the Raging Bolt make an appearance here. Now Raging Bolt puts a ton of pressure on Shadow Rider, puts a ton of pressure on Amoongus. I actually, if Trick Room does end this turn, I'm not sure how many turns of Trick Room we have left. Trick Room does end. I wouldn't be shocked if we saw maybe a Encore from the Calyrex, an Encore or a Disable. If you disable that Spore, Sleep is now out of the game. That would be smart. That'd be a very, very good play. But do you want to use that Disable right now? Because it could be switched up with a Pollen Puff potentially. There's the Electroweb into the Protect. And really, this Rillaboom is not having a fun time this game, as it's now even slower than it was before. Yeah, it almost wishes that Trick Room was up at this point. The Spore comes through, and we blocked out once again. Yeah, I think disabling the Spore is the must play here. That leaves your Calyrex open to eat at least one or two hits, or at least one hit from this Raging Bull. Yeah. Now the Draco Meteor could do devastating damage to this Calyrex or the Rillaboom. Yeah, Draco Meteor will do a ton of damage if you think if you think Rillaboom's gonna switch out. There's the fake out into the Amoongus. And the Encore into the Electroweb, so Raging Bolt will not move this turn. 
It will get the Electro Web off, but that's not going to do a lot of damage, except it will slow down the Calyrex. That's not the worst move to be encored into, but it's also not great. No, you're now forced, you really, your damage output is severely reduced. Electro Web is not a very powerful move. It can do damage, but it's not the greatest. Galyrix protecting itself. Electro Web goes out once again. Gets blocked out, though. Speed falls. The Spore comes through. Blocked out once again. You need to disable the Spore because it's putting way too much pressure on you. Yeah. And there, Rillaboom switches out, so it will lose its speed drops. Go back to the back. Go back to the back, indeed, and bring out that Urshifu once again. But that Urshifu... Uh, yeah, it's asleep. <laughs> it is a sleeping urge food. It will be asleep for at least one turn. That Electro Reb is not going to do negligible damage there. It's still going to be a super effective hit on that Urshifu. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if we see actually disable from the Ghost Rider this turn. I think you really just shut down any power that Amoongus has for the rest of this game. There's the switch back into Rillaboom. Does Rillaboom live in Electro Web? I think it'll be close. I think it will, but you're right, it will be close. This Grassy Surge comes out once again. Trying to keep that rich. There's the disable. Up. Beautiful disable, beautiful play from Matthew. And very patient as well. He wanted to get himself in the perfect position before committing that disable. Calyrex avoids the Electro Web as well. Um, so it's not going to be the slowest thing on the field just yet. And Reelaboom lives. Reelaboom lives. And with Fake Out Pressure from Reelaboom. Things are looking very good for Matthew. Yeah, I think Emma's just not having the luck today. Everything that could go wrong has, in fact, gone wrong. And you got to find the way to reverse reverse that going forward in the next future rounds. Exactly. You know, it's just the beginning of the day as well. You got to get used to your team once again. It's like getting warmed up before a workout. It's not the first games just don't go your way. And both players also bring this to a game three, so you know things are already very spicy here. Ash Barrage Ash coming Barrage. through. Does not take anything out, so you're not going to be nade just yet. Raging Bolt unable to move. You get Pollen Puffs back up a little bit. Yeah, you're going to get a ton of healing. Ashley heals it all the way wow. back up to full, which is incredible. That's a ton of health that still gets. Yeah, that's an amazing Pollen Puff right there. This Amoongus going to be an annoying thorn in the side until it goes down. Seeing a swap out be hovered again as well. Incineroar being committed, going to eat another Astral Barrage. And I think we got at least one or two more at least Astral Barrages here before anything goes down. Yeah, I think you have to Astral Barrage that turn as you need to remove any chance of it getting a Grimne off the Amoongus death. Both Pokemon and eat that incredibly well. And there's the Draco Meteor. Does not get wow. the knockout. Yeah, now it's special attack going to be going down. The U-turn comes through once again for this Rillaboom. Yeah, Shadow Rider really not the bulkiest of Pokemon, but you have to wonder. Maybe this is a Shadow Rider more trained in bulk to live these big hits. Because I'm, if you're Emma, you're probably assuming that it's a Shadow Rider. It will go down to Draco Meteor here. Yeah, you'd be assuming that, but, you know, sometimes people put in those unexpected IVs and natures that just make them that much more tanky. Akaf, though, could definitely seal the deal on this Calyrex. Urshifu, weak to lightning, so that might be the play here. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if we see another Protect here. This game is getting down to the wire. It is anyone's guess at who can pull this out at this point. Exactly. It's down to the wire. Both There's players the could pivot for a win. Protect comes through. Urshifu not waking up that turn is going to be imperative for Emma to be able to turn this one into a win. Knockoff gets blocked out. Was it a double commit onto the Calyrex? No. It one goes over to Urshifu and wow, just the Volt Switch almost takes it out. Yeah, it's a ton of damage. And now you also remove that Draco Meteor debuff. Draco Meteor leaving it with that minus two. You need it back at full HP if you want any, or back at at least neutral stats if you want any chance to win today. Now the Moonga is being swapped back in. You're down to your support mons, but they can still do some decent damage against whatever is up right now on the side of Matthew. Matthew has three Pokemon, Pokemon advantage, but he does not have 
Or, wait, all three are up. I thought Raging Bull died for someone. No, it just got no, swapped out. Still up. Emma in an amazing position here. Yeah, the question you have to ask is will Urshifu wake up this turn? By Emma's luck in this first game, Urshifu will probably wake up. You have to hope that stays asleep and hope you can get one more turn off of doing some meaningful damage. So we're being swapped out once again for this Raging Bolt. It does sleep, so it will be asleep for at least one more turn. There's the Spore. Here it is, sleeping the real boom, that Fire Terra now coming back to bite you. Urshifu regenerating a little bit of HP. Grassy terrain, not too bad, but it's almost working against Matthew at this point. Regenerating Emma's team as well, giving that Pollen Puffer even more survivability. That Moongus was at, I think, yellow or red health a few turns back, and now it's back up to green. Yeah, Amoongus is in a great position. Battle is canceled. Emma comes back from behind and picks up the victory, reversing the sweep. Beautiful reverse sweep from Emma. Rough start in that game of one, but you know, you can always pivot for with your team, even without your Cali Rex, without your restricted, and still perform and bring things around. Yeah, Emma played abs some great matches there, and really, again, turned as much as their luck was against them in this whole game, found a way to win, and we'll have to keep an eye on them for the rest of the day today. Exactly. Our first game already going to a game three. It was an absolutely amazing performance from both players. Congrats to Emma for getting the win there. But we're just getting started here. We've seen both riders, both expected teams we've seen here today. So maybe going into the next round, we'll see some of those more unexpected teams as we have more locals here today in the scene as some people are busy on the weekend. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if we see Necrozma pop up today. I know there's a Necrozma floating <laughs> I heard around. about that. Zamazenta has been a huge pickup recently from our players, so I wouldn't be shocked if Zamazenta makes an appearance. There's the question of, I know Karaidon is on, is on two or three different teams here. We'll see if Karaidon makes an appearance today. It really is a question of who can knock down Maraidon or Ice Rider. Exactly. There's so many questions, but there's going to be so many answers after we throw it to a quick break. But Eric, what are you most excited to see if I had to ask you a question? I want to see Kyogre. I love Kyogre. I think we got Spiel Alpha Rider over here. I want to see Kyogre and I want to see it perform well today. I'd love to see that. And you know what I'd love to see. I want to see some wacky stuff. I would even love to see the Necrozma. But we'll see if we have that in the next game. Thank you very much, everybody. We're going to have to ask you to take a quick break, though, with us as we get ready for round two of Swiss.
Hello everybody and welcome back to Swiss round two of this Pokemon VGC mid-season showdown. Now we're seeing some familiar faces over these four days and we've seen both of these players on stream before but I don't quite remember if we've seen them face off just yet. This is going to be Lewis versus Diego. Diego running that Zamazenta team that we've seen. And we've had so many expectations for Zamazenta as well, haven't we, Eric? Yeah, Diego has been an incredible player and I think he has been the one that has been shepherding this Zamazenta hype. On Saturday, he finished in the standard rounds with a perfect 5-0 and and the loss in the, in the semifinals. So he needs to make it to the finals today to get his world's invite. So he is fish he's trying to pull for that today. So he really needs his win. Yeah, he really needs this win. He's going to be going all the way here. You can tell he's ironing out some, some methods with his Zamazenta team. And it's some interesting... Pokemon on here. Of course, we have the Tinglu, but that's not the typical Tinglu that we see with the Stomping Tantrum Fissure. It's more of a support Tinglu, running that Sand Tomb in the Ruination to just take care of those more tanky targets, put up some damage over time. We also have that Dondozo with the uh, with, that one's running Fissure with Wave Crash, Yawn, and Protect. It's a little bit slower than Sport, but hey, it's a little more, more dynamic. You can shut down the Among Us. You can shut down those grass types like Reelaboom. Yeah, Dondozo is a really interesting Pokemon, a Pokemon that really dominated early in the Sword and Sh in the Scarlet and Violet metagame, pairing up with that Tatsugiru, but now it's just on its own. It is still an incredible, incredibly strong Pokemon with Unaware. It will ignore all the stat changes and just stay there just as it is. I think we also, we also see Golden Go, a Pokemon that is really good, but sort of fallen off a little bit, but I think will make a big impact here. Yeah, it's good just to just have some more dynamic hyper carries on your team, but I think the Zamazenta matchup into the Ice Rider is pretty advantageous for it. I mean, you might have to Terra type it so it doesn't get hit with that high horsepower, but otherwise, well, never mind. He might actually have some trouble here, because with the steel typing, it's open for that high horsepower, and then with that grass terra type, it's going to be open to the glacial land. So, I don't know if grass terra is going to benefit it here. Yeah, it will be really interesting to see what happens. We are seeing the Ting Lu and the Jondozo open up against the Landris and the Calyrex Ice. Landris is an interesting Pokemon here. You don't see Landris super commonly, but I think it's not a bad choice. It's got the Earth Power, the Sludge Bomb, Substitute and Protect. It can hide away behind the Substitute, deal a ton of damage, and brings and just start knocking things down a little bit. And now it may not be weak to anything on the field right now, but that Calyrex is being threatened by the Dondozo here. The Fissure could take it out in one clean hit, potentially. Yeah. Fissure is such a risky move. It's if you a gamble. Click it, you got a 30% chance to just instantly remove something from the field. I don't think we'll see it this turn. I wouldn't be shocked though if we see a really power, if we see the Yawn come out. Yawn is a great move to force something out. Give it a turn to make a decision on if it wants to stay in or switch out. Start playing those mind games a little bit. Exactly. So we're going to see Lewis go in for a standard play here. Defensive play from Diego going for the protect turn one on the Ting Lu. Lander is using substitute, getting set up here. Now he's going to be that much harder to take down. The Yawn comes out, like you said, correct read there. But this Calyrex is going to get one move in. Yeah, we'll hit that big Glacial Lance. Probably won't do a ton of damage to Dondozo here, as it was probably looking to mainly hit that Ting Lu, but we'll see how much it does. Not much at all. Not much, Barely, no. just brings it out from the graphic. That's all we're going to see there. But the leftovers put it right back where it was. Yeah, so I Calyrex probably going to have to force out and switch here. Does not want to be put to sleep. We have Incineroar, Incineroar and the Rillaboom in the back. Incineroar, a great Pokemon to bring out here. A yeah, great Pokemon to bring out here. You can try and you know lo lower some of these stats here that are threatening you so much. But this Calyrex going to be going to sleep next turn. So you have to think and you have to think quick. Yep, you go for the Calyrex switch out. What are you going to throw out? The Rillaboom set up that grassy terrain. Yeah, I think Rillaboom puts a ton of pressure on both Cali on both Ting Lu and Dondozo here. So we'll have to see if either of them switch out. Here's the Earth Power. going to be doing a ton of damage with the Sheer Force and the Life Orb. Gets Dondozo almost down to half. It will probably take go back up to about 60% after both of the leftovers and the grass terrain here. But now Rillaboom trapped in the sand tomb. Oh, another yawn. This Dondozo just making everybody sleepy here. Yeah, so Rillaboom either now has to U-turn to get out of this or will be stuck in here and just forced to go to sleep. 
Yeah, great plays by Diego, playing the slow game, but getting the setups he needs. Yeah, I think this is interesting. We're seeing both Ting Lu and Dondozo. It can't, it can't switch out because of Santu. That is true. I think that's interesting here is both Ting Lu and uh, Dondozo are both Pokemon that were very big offensive threats, and now they're both playing these support roles in this new regulation. So it's interesting to see how Pokemon change over time. Yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting indeed. But let's see what this Landorus does against this Dondozo. Sure, you have that substitute up, but it won't protect you for so long. It's beautiful protect. We're seeing the protect from Ting Lu. The, the double, double protect. protect really forcing Rillaboom to not be able to do anything, to take those turns and go to sleep, get a little bit of rest in. He's going to throw out a U-turn here, but it's going to get protected out. It's not going to have anything happen. Oh, what? What happened there? Oh, it what? Wait, it does get the U-turn. Wow. wow. That is a play I did not consider. You turning into your own Pokemon to guarantee the switch out because it's in substitute. That's brilliant. Brilliant play by Lewis. Wha really considering all his options there. Yeah, I didn't even think about that as an option. That is an incredible play by Lewis. Actually, probably predicting the double protect. I'm sure him and Diego faced off quite a few times. So knowing that your opponent is such a crucial part of playing Pokemon. Yeah, an absolutely crucial part of playing Pokemon. Now, that just goes to show the caliber of these two players. Diego forcing him to do these insane plays. And the fact that Lewis is able to find these plays is absolutely massive indeed. Calyrex using the Protect, and we protect against every, anything that comes its way this turn. Earth Power going to be con doing consistent damage on this Dondozo, getting it down to oh, yellow. Oh, and the crit. And the crit as well. Ruination, though, coming through. Going to get blocked out, though. Yeah, Ruination is a really scary move. Very scary. It brings you down to half HP. For those who don't know what it does, and the substitute goes down from Landers now. Going to be exposed for the next turn. Grassy Train going to heal up that Donzo just a little bit, along with the leftovers. It has very good survivability here. Yeah, I'm shocked by the actual survivability potential of this Dondozo here. The fact that no Pokemon has gone down yet, we are seeing a much slower game than we have in previous rounds. Yeah, this one has slowed down Diego, really dragging this one out. Not to be like, he needs to. That's what his whole game plan is around with this Dondozo. Trying to put things to sleep with Yawn and maybe even go for a sneaky Fisher play if need be. And now, with everything lined up here. Lewis playing through this slow game absolutely perfectly. Not taking him very much damage at all. He's doing those swaps when he needs to. Here we are going to see a Terra here, maybe a defensive Terra. Seeing a Terra. Terra Bug. Terra Bug. Interesting. Terra Bug is not something you see super common. But I think with the lack of powerful fire types on most. Calyrex teams, it's not a horrible Terra. There's the Earth Power into the Ting Lu. Ting Lu taking about 40% of damage, gets the Ruination off. Brings it down to half. There's the, the Wave, wave crash. crash. Does the Wave Crash pick up the knockout? It, it does on the Landorus. Landorus goes down. A beautiful knockout from Diego. Now he's put himself in a very good position. This Calyrex awaiting to be knocked out within another turn or two. There's the Glacial Lance as well. Super effective on both, taking them both down. Ting Lu, now one HP in Dondozo. He's taken down, that is a chilling nay. Yeah, that puts Calyrex in a really powerful position. And as much as it was hit by Ruination, it'll be healed back up now by that Grassy Terrain. That Grassy Terrain going up once again. We're seeing a lot of things being covered here. Cineroar, Rillaboom, both very good options. Cineroar being committed out of the two. Let's see what Diego picks here. Golden Go. That's going to be a rough matchup against this Incineroar. Yeah, Golden Go is a really powerful Pokemon. It is fast. It is resistant to all of the sort of status effects that Incineroar likes to put up. So we'll have to see if Incineroar stays in and just tries to slug it out with this Golden Go, or if it'll, if you make the defensive switch here. Yeah, this Golden Go has Terra Water, but it can't because of the Terra Bug on the Dondozo. Trying to keep it around just that little bit longer. It really didn't get much use out of it. And now, 
Glacial Lands being hovered, it could take out this Tinglu while still doing good damage to this Golden Go. Yeah, we're also seeing, actually this time, we're seeing the Terra Grass on the Calyrex Ice Ryan instead of that Terra Water. There's a ton of different Terra types that people are throwing around with this Terra Grass more here to defend against those ground type moves. Those ground, those fighting type moves. Try and block those out. There's the Shadow Ball into the Protect. It's blocked out though by Calyrex. The knockoff knock comes off. through. It's gonna do a lot of damage onto Golden Go. And the choice specs are knocked off as well. Ruination comes through, but instead of dodges it. Wow, I forgot that that Ruination had a chance to miss. I mean, it was a move so strong you would hope it would. Exactly, it just stays that balanced in that little way. Now looking at the rest of this board here. It looks like Lewis wants the swap and Incineroar got the knockoff. He wants to maybe prepare for next. This Calyrex still wants to get these two kills if possible. You want to try and guarantee the double chill in the A and then it's just easy pickings from then on. Then on. Rillaboom being covered for a swap in. And the yeah. knockoff being covered once again as well. Ruination has a 10%, has a 90% chance to hit, so there's that 10% chance to miss there. So really powerful. And speaking of Ruin, we're seeing the Sword of Ruin come into play here. The double swap out with the Calyrex happening here on both sides. Real Boom coming out once again, putting up that grassy terrain and keeping everybody nice and healthy. Yeah, the Chiyu here, or the Chen Pao here actually does have Ice Spinner so be able to sort of maneuver around that. There's a Steel Beam. That's a move we do not see very often as Golden Go knocks itself out by using Steel Beam. Yeah, knockoff goes through. It's gonna hit this Chen Pao, getting rid of that Sash. Yeah, that's not an item that Chen Pao wants to lose as it would love to keep it for later in the game, survive a hit and stay in it. But that Steel Beam is not a move you see very commonly. So Diego's pulling out some sort of different text here that people maybe aren't ready for. Exactly, now Ting Lu comes back out, but Ting Lu only has a little bit left in the tank here. Just one more round. Meanwhile, it looks like Lewis still has three healthy Pokemon raring to go. And now looking at the rest of the board, Lewis is in an absolutely amazing spot to take this one. He has so much going for him. He has the Reelaboom out. He has the Incineroar out. There's so much threat, so many threats. Even if he just plays this way more support-centric, he'll be able to whittle down the Chenpao and Tinglu to very, very low stats. Yeah, the hard part here is that Diego did not bring Zamazenta. Zamazenta not a super important, super great matchup here. So having to leave it behind means you're going without a restricted Pokemon like the Calyrex that is so impactful and so damaging. Exactly, that Calyrex did swap out, lose one chilling nay, but it can get to uh, get one more right here before the end of the game. Ice he spinner, that ice spinner. Doing decent damage. Yeah, grass train gone, so it will not get that passive healing. And there's the knockoff into the Ting Lu. Does not pick up the knockoff though. And it's hurt by Rocky Helmet before removing Rocky Helmet. And the oh, Ruination through. finally does hit. Now in Cinnor. Very, very low. This is coming down to the wire here. We're seeing this Calyrex potentially getting Terra typed here. Gonna play very defensively though. Yeah, I think the Terra Grass is an interesting choice as it leaves you op it leaves you weak to those Ice Spinners in the future. Exactly, it leaves you very weak to the Ice Spinners, but is there some tech there with grassy terrain and being a grass type? I don't, I don't quite know why you would even want to go grass type here. Yeah, I'm not try, quite sure on the grass terrain here, move here, but maybe there's something that we're not seeing that Lewis is seeing. Just gonna go for the protect instead. Lash there's the lash out. out. It's blocked out. Yeah, the Rix has protected itself. And the Will -O -Wisp. Will -O Wisp comes through, but is that Will O Wisp doing much other than blocking out that Sandu? Oh, it's slow enough that Burn might even get a kill. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the damage calcs are. I'm shocked that they would go for the Will O Wisp instead of just straight up taking out the Ting Lu, so that's, that's a little shocking to me. And it still lives. 
That Tinglu will die in the next turn, but Incineroar is going to take some Sand Tomb damage as a result. It'll stay in at least one more turn. It'll do something at least. And that could maybe even put Diego in an advantageous situation. You know, Sand Tomb on that Calyrex, whittle it down to nothing. There's a few other options it could even pivot to. But I wonder actually if they're going for the burn to try and leave it open for Calyrex oh. to actually pick up the double knockout with Glacial Lance. If so, that is a great move there. Try and get a plus two Calyrex on the field. I think your s summary is correct, Eric. That should be the plan. And now he has another will o -Wisp cooking up here. There's a few other options. He could either completely nerf out this Chen Pao or go for that knockoff. You have so many good options on this Incineroar. Looks like Parting Shot is going to be the one committed. We are seeing the Terra here. Let's see it. Terra Grass, Calyrex takes to the field. The nature flows around it as it gets powered up by the flowery crown on top of its already big crown. <laughs> yeah, so it is the king of flowers now. The Ice Spinner comes through and Sonora not going to be doing anything this turn. Now it's just going to be Calyrex in the Ruin duo. There's kid. the taunt. Don't Ooh. think taunt really matters as the Glacial Lance was clicked. Won't be able to get up Trick Room, but will that matter? Here's the Glacial Lance. Just picks up the knockout on the Ting Lu. Chien Pao survives for another turn. Yeah, Chien Pao gonna stay up just a little longer. Critical hit on the Ting Lu as well. And now things looking very, very dicey here. Now we're gonna switch into the Rillaboom. Let's see how this one shakes up. The boom gonna activate that grassy surge, try and boost the survivability of its teammates, but it's still gonna be an uphill battle for to take out this champ. You can't use that glacial lens, gonna have to use the high horsepower, and that not 100% accurate. The fake out though, gonna put a lot of pressure on this champ, unable to take out this, uh, this Calyrex this turn. Yeah, I think the protect is a great move here. You have to protect this turn and then hope that the ice spinner will knock it out next turn. If it doesn't, you're not in a great position, but you have to draw that fake out so you don't just sit there and get knocked out. Exactly. Diego is not out of the game just yet. Lewis could potentially win this as well. This is a very, very close game. Yeah, and this is still game one here, folks. These players could be going to a game two. Even a game three is on the board. The question is now, if you're, Lewis, if you're Diego, you do have to be worried about that timer slightly as you are down Pokemon. So if that timer does run out, you will he will lose. Exactly, you can't stay too long on this timer. You have to try and bring it to a decisive victory. And I think actually that's what Lewis might be doing here is he actually might be waiting out the timer. Give him another win condition. I don't know if he has the time to wait though. Oh, a super effective Ice Spinner lands! Because no Trick Room, Calyrex would be going last. It's going to come down to this last duel here. Can the Rillaboom close this one out? Grassy Terrain is gone. There's the U-turn. U-turn does. does pick up the knockout. Lewis wins your first get game. Beautiful play from Lewis and a beautiful play from both players. Diego is sticking out all the way to the end. Somehow turning that one into a very risky one after it did not go his way in the beginning. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens here. We are going to go into a game two here shortly. Players are going to take that moment, rethink, re-strategize. If you're Diego, what do you do differently? Exactly. What do you do differently? And what does Lewis do differently? Because I think while he did come out with a win, that was not a decisive victory at all. He had to do so many pivots here to get himself in the right position. You'd love to see that, but when you're in the when you're in the game and you're playing. You don't want to be put in that position if you can try and avoid it. So I'm wondering if there's anything Lewis would be able to do to try and avoid those scenarios. I think the ones that really gave him trouble were, was that Qian Pao and it was that that Dondazo from the beginning. It just stayed up so long and put so much pressure on Lewis. Yeah, and it's been a long time actually here at St. Clair. I don't know if we've ever seen a game be decided by timer. This is the first time we're seeing that really slow methodical play. I was going to say, did he bring Zama Zenta into this? No, he did not he bring did not. Zama Zenta last time. So we'll have to see if he does that. We also didn't see, we didn't see Zama Zenta. We didn't see Raging Bolt. I don't know if either of those two Pokemon really help him here. I doubt Lewis is going to bring Pelipport or, or Urshu Rapid Strike. 
Yeah, I doubt that as well. Fire was not really an issue at all. You also don't want to bring the rain for that Dondazo, because that rain wave crash is going to do a lot of damage, and I don't think you want to run the risk of that at that point. No, and the only spread move you're really worried about on a Zamazenta team is that Golden Go and it's Make It Rain. So really, you don't need Wide Guard. Probably not, no use for Pelipper in this matchup. Exactly. So Diego's team, just team comp alone, is putting a lot of pressure on Lewis. It limits his choices a little bit more. And you could run it for the Tailwind to get those speed bonuses to try and get the edge out on Diego. But I don't know if that's going to be it. I th really think Lewis wants that Trick Room up. Yeah, both players taking that chance to really think about how do I maneuver this mode. Trick Room's hard to go up. They've got Lewis has got a lot of Pokemon that are actually slow and can take advantage of that. So I'll have to see what he does. That Trick Room goes up, and now you have a really slow Dondozo who is ready to go in and just sort of finish off things. Exactly. We didn't see Fissure. I know, like you said, Fissure's a risk, but sometimes backs up against the wall. You need to go for those risks sometimes. Yeah, Fissure's a really interesting move. It's scary to click. It's a move that you have to say, well, I've got a 30% chance to hit. This could be a 30% chance for me to really change the game here. If it hits, you're in a great position. As we get ready into game two here, Golden Go and Chen Pao actually taking the lead up front versus Urshifu and Landorus. We're seeing Urshifu this game. We did not see Urshifu last game for Diego. Yeah, that Urshifu is going to be putting so much pressure on this Golden Go because it has so many moves that could just mess it up, especially that close combat. Oh, wait, can't land because it's Ghost. Can't land, but I think what Golden Go is actually more worried about is that Landris there and that Earth Power. That Earth Power is going to do a ton of damage to Golden Go. So you have to play around that carefully. Play around it very carefully here. Shen Pao being targeted oh, out of the gate by this this Urshifu. It's going to try and close combat it, knock it out right away. It's Swords of Ruin being used against it here. Yeah, Swords of Ruin is a really, really interesting ability. It do, it's a benefit, but also a negative as you power up at, or you power weaken everything else around you. The Dozo actually taking the field here, probably to counter that Landris, as we know that Wave Crash is a one hit knockout on Landris. And we are seeing the Terra off the bat. The Terra off the bat on the Golden Go. Terra Water. Terra Water, that's a really good move here. Very defensive Terra type here especially into Lewis's team. Yeah, we have to see what Lewis has in the back. If he did not bring Raging Bolt that, or Rillaboom, that Golden Go becomes a problem very quickly. The Landorus did do a Protect, so this Golden Go, if it targeted it so low, it could be a very dicey Whoa, situation. Well, Lewis didn't bring the Calyrex Ice Rider. Interesting. It's like we're going back a regulation here. Yeah, I know, we're back in Reg F or something. But this is interesting, Rillaboom will take the field. The thing with Golden Go is Golden Go does not have Protect, doesn't have any way to defend itself, so it will be eating this full power Grassy Surge. There's the Shadow Ball into the Rillaboom. Ooh, doing a ton to Rillaboom, doing almost just under half. And there's that Grassy Terrain. There it is. Now Don Dozo using that leftovers and grassy terrain to just get right in here and stay so healthy and so tanky. But Landorus has some options as well. Could go for the substitute, could go for the protect. But I think you still want to keep hammering away with that earth power. Yeah, you do know that the Golden Go is choice spec into Shadow Ball here, so you wonder if the Golden Go decides to switch out. It's not going to, it's gonna stay in. We didn't see the grassy glide. There's the Shadow Ball again. Shadow Ball comes through. Wow, Lives almost on six knocks HP out. and the Wood Hammer. Takes out the Dondozo, but Rillaboom is going to take itself out as well. As Golden Go stays on the field at full HP, now without a Rillaboom to deal that damage back to it. Exactly. Rillaboom being taken down as well. It's three on three. Beautiful plays from both players. You do have to wonder what is the counter condition to Golden Go at this point. Incineroar comes out. Yeah, the only thing is Incineroar not going to be doing a lot of damage to anybody on the field right now. Yeah, Golden Go is in a great position. I don't know what threatens it at this point. Yeah, I don't know at all either. You could go for the fake out pressure, but it's not going to be on 
that golden go, I think he's hoping the golden go protects, just keep itself at 100 HP. Well, the golden go can't protect here. It is locked into shadow ball, so it's going to be hitting shadow balls real hard. Probably into Landorus here. Chan Pao flinches with the fake out. There's the Earth Power. Wow, that does so much even without the super effective bonus. There's the Shadow Ball. Does the Shadow Ball pick up the knockout on the return? Gets it down to 18. Down to 18 there. Does not get the stat drop either, so this Golden Go only has maybe half a turn left, another turn, because this Landorus is going to knock it out soon enough. Yeah, I do wonder if that was a low or a high roll there. Not 100% sure on my damage calculations, but there may have been a chance where that Golden Go does pick up the knockout and just misses it just short of the damage. Wow, yeah, that was just the decision of a few short numbers there. Urshifu being swapped out with the Landorus, even though Landorus could commit the kill on the Golden Go. I think you do have to switch out as you're worried about that Ice Banner. We'll probably see, we're gonna see the double protect. No, we're seeing the Protect as it got flinched last turn. Yep, we're seeing the Shadow Ball be committed there. On to that in the center where we're not doing much damage at all. So what's interesting here to note is that Landorus would have had a turn to move as Landorus was not targeted that turn. It was not, right. So Landorus would have had to turn. I think Golden Goat knew what was going down anyways. Knocks off the choice specs as they fall to the ground off the cheese stick man's head. Exactly, he's not feeling so cheesy today. And this is not going to be a cheesy fight as Zamazenta is going to be coming out now. The shiny shield takes the stage. Dauntless shield giving the defense boost. Now, surging strikes is guaranteed to crit. There's no Terra on the field, so will we see the Terra bug? We could see the Terra bug, but. Want to come in it just yet? Might even throw the Landorus as a panic swap here. Let's see. Looking at this board, Lewis. Well, he does have three mons. He has the mon advantage just ever so slightly. Not in the best spot. No, you do have to be worried about this Chen Pao on the field still. Back at full health, pretty much. So you have to figure out how do I deal with it. Taking those full turns to really think about it. going for the close combat into the Chen Pao. It can't protect. There's the close combat. It lands and picks up the knockout. Now it's just this Zamazenta left on the field. That's all that is left on the field for Diego. It's his restricted mon, so it could do good work here. There's See, the body press. Does not get Almost the knockout. So close to picking up the knockout, but that Will O S is going to be a factor now. Zamazenta is on the timer. Yeah, Zamazenta on a timer, and also that's going to be nerfing that body press just a little bit. Yeah, it will. Urshifu's still up. Zamazenta does have Protect, so I wouldn't be shocked if we see a Protect this turn to block that Urshifu from doing even more damage as it is just Zamazenta left. Lewis in a great position here. It's an amazing position. Terra oh, Ghost. That could be massive. Thinking about it. Make him immune to body press. We are going to see the Terra Ghost Bear instead. Yeah, he wants to try and get some survivability on this Urshifu. Expecting another body press. He will become immune here. There it is. Just needs to get one or two close combats off, and he should be able to close this one out. Yeah, I mean, really, Urshifu is so low. It doesn't matter if he keeps close combat. Here's the first one. Gets it down to about half. Defenses fall again, but really doesn't matter at this point when you have 21 HP. There's the body press into the Incineroar. Incineroar lives, and, and the, the knockoff. Knock doesn't really matter. I already got the boost from its item, but that burn is going to matter as now Zamazenta is within knockout territory. Yeah, I think we see the protect, so I don't disagree with the switch here. Going to try and close combat anyways. Urshifu will hit through protect. So what happens here? Here's the knockoff. Here's the close combat. Battle is canceled, and your winner for round two is Lewis. What a great round by those competitors. Beautiful round from both competitors there, but Lewis wins this one 2-0. Diego stuck through it all the way through the end, forcing both players to really go for the cerebral analytical plays, having to push their knowledge to limits, even going for some crazy plays like hitting your own substitute with U-turn to get the out. Yeah, that was an incredible play. And I think with 
the fact that Diego did so well on day on Saturday. A lot of the players took Saturday night and Sunday night to really tech against Zamazenta and make a few changes to beat it in the future. And maybe that's what happened there, where Lewis just changed his team a little bit enough that it had a win con for Zamazenta. Yeah, Zamazenta, I feel like, is the hard counter to that Ice Rider, but as long as you have enough support mods like we've seen, we didn't even see Ice Rider in that second game because Lewis just felt that confident that the rest of his team counters out everything else so well. And as we saw, it does. The only thing I think that gave them the most trouble was that Dondozo in the early game. That is the main tank you gotta bring down because that thing can put you to sleep. And if it puts you to sleep, you know he's gonna start going for those fissures and that is gonna be the snowball that he's aiming for. Yeah, Dondozo is such an interesting Pokemon and I know there's a few people running it, it's not super common, but playing that support role with those powerful wave crashes in the background is actually really interesting. I wouldn't be shocked if we do see Dondozo again later today. Yeah, beautiful gameplay all around. The Golden Go also was a beautiful pick from Diego. It got a lot of use in that early game, survived a lot, took out a few Mons as well, got them low, but just unable to find absolute value. I don't think it was the really end all be all right there. No. It will be interesting to see what Diego does going forward. He knows he needs to make that top cut, get to the finals to get his spot in Worlds. So he will have a lot of work to do now after losing game one. Exactly. So that's going to be round two of Swiss for today. But don't go anywhere. We're going to be going to round three very, very quickly. But we're going to throw it to a quick break. So we'll be right back with more Pokemon.
Hello, Pokemon gamers. We are here in round three of Swiss for today. And the matchup today is going to be Rishi Gupta versus Patrick Chang. So two very strong moments. We've seen both of these people on stream before as well. So just to go over the teams, we're going to run it right through. Rishi has Gothitelle, Rillaboom, Flutterman, Tinglu, Heat, Rodom, and Coridon. There's a bit of a change there in the moveset, so we're going to cover that in a little bit. Then we also have Patrick running Furigaraf, Chi Yu, Urshifu, Smeargle is the weird pick, and Ursaluna Blood Moon, and Calyrex Ice Rider, of course. Yeah, I think there are a lot of interesting Pokemon here. Um, we see Smeargle coming out for. Patrick, we have Urshifu single strike. We don't see single strike Urshifu very often. Chi Yu is back. We have Ice Rider, Calyrex, and Frigraph. The Chi Yu Ice Rider combo is not something we commonly see or we see very much at all. We're normally seeing Chi Yu with these other support mods. Chi Yu is a fan favorite Pokemon. Was I think we saw it at a 25% play rate this weekend. So I wouldn't be shocked if we do see Chi Yu make some incredible plays. Earlier in the week, we saw an incredible play with that trapping and that. Terra ability, but this is a Terra Ghost to you. Exactly. And now, interesting pick by the Calyrex. This is a Terra Fire Calyrex. So now, this Heat Rotom not getting the value it would have gotten with that usual Terra Water defensive type. And another interesting pick I want to say say on Rishi's team is the Crydon picking up uh, Flame Charge. Yeah, I think that's an interesting choice. You sort of take two fire moves now i mean you get the speed boost from flame charge but with so many pokemon running trick room do you want to spend a turn running flame charge to be put in trick room and now you're faster but you're also technically slower because you're faster because of trick room exactly and also flame charge just isn't that strong like it doesn't i think it's like a 50 40 base power move 60 maybe yeah it's really not sure a powerhouse base 50 percent so again, you're really using it to set up your own speed, but that's interesting in a in a game mode where again, Calyrex we're seeing on over, I think it was like 35% of teams are playing Calyrex this weekend. So it is the restricted Pokemon here at St. Clair this weekend. And now I'm gonna look over at the 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 weather setters and the answers to maybe some of the fields. And it looks like we're not gonna have any uh, fields here we're just gonna have the sun from crydon's over calcum pulse and there's nothing to get rid of that on the side of patrick so crydon rishi is gonna have an amazing time here yeah no incineroars no amoongus is here today so we uh, well, there's a rillaboom on the side of rishi there is a rillaboom on the side of rishi again no incineroar no amoongus so it's going to be a much slower battle here today or not? No, I think it'll be a faster battle because we yes. don't have that spore and we don't have the intimidate and the switching. And we don't have the swap outs back and forth to try and get the right weather conditions. The Pelipper is not here with the wide guard. It's going to be a very clean game of Pokemon. It's just going to be trading blows back and forth, you know, protecting a much status, <laughs> less status reliant game. Yeah. So we'll have to see what happens here as we get to the first battle with Gothitelle and Coridon taking the field versus... As I get confused by names here, as we see the Ice Rider and the Smeargle. Yeah, the Ice Rider and the Smeargle are out here, or Calcum Pulse in full effect. But now we might see the Terra Fire from the Calyrex. But with this Goth Gothitelle, this is the lineup we're locked into. The Shadow Tag, no one able to Terra Ghost out of here. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if we do see the Terra Fire just off the bat, because you can't switch out. They'll go for the Trick Room, which is an interesting play, as that Gothitelle does have Taunt, I believe. I think it does have Taunt, so... It does have Taunt, so it could block play. that Trick Room. Yeah, I wonder what Richie will answer here on the Coridon, because you could go for the Collision Course, which is the guaranteed damage, but you could also risk the Flame Charger Flare Oh, Flare Crydon's just leaving. Crydon's, Crydon's getting that town. And in comes Rotom Heat. Interesting. Really committing to the fire here, but it also gives him some uh, flexibility here because he also has the Volt Switch if it's not a great matchup. And he has that Thunderbolt to try and fish for those Paralysis. Yeah, we won't see the... Again, that overheat's not going to do much now that we have the Terra Fire up, so we probably see a Volt Switch. There's the Fake Out into the Gothitelle. Trick Room will go up. 
Now Gothitelle does not have Trick Room of its own, so we will be stuck in Trick Room, and now the Glacial Lances will start swinging. Exactly, but it's not going to be very effective against this Heat Rotom. It'll still do good damage because he's not a very tanky Pokemon, but it's not going to blow right through. We're not going to get a Chilling Nay right off the bat. No, I think it will be a two-hit knockout on both of these Pokemon at least. So we'll have to see what happens. You just commit to the Trick Room and just try and do as much damage as possible. Probably fearing from a foul play from that Gothitelle. I don't think Smeargle really has a ton of damaging options. It doesn't. I don't think it has any damaging options. It has a fake out, but that's already been used here. That's all the damage this Smeargle is going to do. It's going to go for, I think, a Decorate here. Yeah, so that's the thing with Smeargle. Smeargle is such a powerful Pokemon, but if you can avoid it, it's not going to do anything to you. We are going to see the Terra come out here into the Gothitelle. Go into the Terra Dark to get that power boosted foul play and try and one shot that Ice Rider. That's going to be the play for today for Rishi. That's why he brought it here. The Glacial Lens is going to come through. Let's see if they mention oh. the Gothitelle. One HP, a critical hit. That's absolutely devastating. Decorate coming through. And now, look at that. Attack rose sharply. A beautiful play by this Miracle. Yeah, Decorate is such a powerful move. There's the Volt Switch. Doesn't do a ton of damage, but will it be enough for Fake Out or for Foul Play to one shot now with the Dark Boost and the Double Attack Boost? Foul Play is going to do a lot here. I'd be very scared to see it happen. There's the Ting Lu. And going in here. And what is this Ting Lu built like? We've been seeing the Sand Tomb. This Ting Lu is going to be that stopping tantrum fissure. Foul play, it doesn't live, it lives on three HP. Yeah, this is a very risky move. This Gothel's sure to fall and Ting Lu also being threatened here as well. Yeah, I think that might've been a roll. Living on three HP. That is, if that is not a roll. Wow. All the follow me as well. It's gonna be absolutely disastrous. No spread moves on the field right now. No, this is going to be a plus two Gracial Lance coming out, and that might have won the game for Patrick this early. We're seeing this swap out into the Rotom, trying to tank that hit. Maybe outlast this Trick Room with a, a, a tanky play, but it's not going to go very well. There's the Glacial Lance. There it is. Wow, Rotom lives! Rotom lives, but Tig Luke goes down, and now we have a plus three Calyrex on the field. I do believe that Ice Rider is slower, though, than that Rotom Heat. Rotom Heat does have Protect. You could stall out for another turn. Yeah, I think stall is the play here. This Goth still it has Protect as well, so they could both try and ride out one more turn, try and ride out this Trick Room. Yeah. We actually may just see the protect Protects all around. Everyone just... Oh, Goth still also f putting Fake Out pressure right now. It does have Fake Out pressure, and that Fake Out pressure would be enough to actually knock off Bordeaux here, the Calyrex. Yeah, the Calyrex already being threatened with a KO. You have to really consider your options carefully. And the Shadow Tag makes it unable to switch out. It has to go for a Protect here. So everything's got to stay in. That's incredibly scary. Not sure how many turns of Trick Room are left. Gothitelle actually leaving the field. Wow. So I wonder if we're going to see a Volt Switch from Rotom here to put back in Gothitelle to fake out next turn. Potentially. That could be an amazing game-winning play right there. There it is! Once again, the fake out. Going to be forced if this is a Volt Switch. All oh, the spore. spore. Spore on Rotom. Gothitelle is not coming in next turn. If it is, it is going to go down. Now Rotom fell asleep, and now it's just going to be the Coridon. This is absolutely imperative that these Pokemon try and outlast it. This Rotom is assuredly going down if it's not switched out. This Coridon could protect, though, and continue to stall out these Trick Rooms. Yeah, you really got to stall Trick Room at this point. Coridon is switching out. I think Gothel's going to come back in here, yep. but I don't think Gothel survives the next Icicle Lance that is coming through. Rotom is still sleeping. Nope, unless somehow this it won't miss at this point there's the glacial lamp and one and two two chilling nays going the way of calyrex is going to be absolutely massive i think what is this now plus four yeah plus five i think we're plus five at this point on calyrex so really now all that's left is crowd on it crowd has no priority and spriggle is still alive oh, sure let's wow. go to plus six why not <laughs> 
Just max it out at this point. Yeah. There it is, rising sharply as sunlight has faded. Oh, it'll be right back the up. Trick room goes away. But now, there's a lot of pressure here for both players. Well, right on is going to be moving first. Right, but you have follow me. You do have follow me. Maybe you could try and make a play here. Hope you can take out this. <laughs> This is Miracle in one clean hit. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think that was a pretty safe win for Pat for Patrick there. What an absolutely insane performance. Making that deck rate, making those glacial lances, living on three HP. If Calyrex had gone down there, that could have been a totally different gameplay. But if you're Rishi, you have to know that you probably did get the knockout there. In any other circumstance, you probably have a knockout there. So do you stick with the same strategies or do you change it up slightly? I think you might change it up slightly. I think the Tinglu didn't get the value it needed there. Maybe... <sighs> I don't know. Tinkley's probably the best pick, though, out of the rest of them. Because Fluttermane, I don't know if that... Maybe can just go raw damage and try and burst through that Calyrex. But Boom, it's going to be... I don't know. It's not yeah. not the best choice, either. I think Tinglu, that Fissure Pressure, is, is very good as well. The no. only problem is, is it weak to ice. Yeah, I don't think you want to bring out Boom here. As you don't want to give that Calyrex that passive healing from Grassy Train. So it's really dangerous to try and bring out Rillaboom. I think you have to look at your other... You also know it's Terra Fire. So that Terra Fire is going to be super impactful and block really Rillaboom from doing anything in this matchup. Yeah, this is looking to be very, very explosive going into the next match. These are such close matches just being decided by these small little EV spreads living on through HP. Even rolls, if you are correct there, Eric. Like, this is absolutely insane. That Calyrex, if it was knocked out right there, would have had an entirely different game on our hands. Oh, the battle would have completely flipped in the favor of Rishi there. I think what's interesting to note is we are seeing why Calyrex is the most played restricted Pokemon here at St. Clair this weekend. We have seen it with the Terra Grass, the Terra Water, and now the Terra Fire to complete that that starter tr typing trio. <laughs> so that's the thing is, it is such a versatile Pokemon. I mean, we're seeing Urshifu is always running Terra Ghost. We're seeing most Pokemon stick to one Terra type, but this Calyrex is saying, I can be a multitude of different Terra types and still find success. Yeah, exactly. I think people are just looking for defensive typings and certain people prefer certain matchups right and i think the fire is definitely a strong one because you don't lose out to that maridon which we've seen win twice in a row now yeah so we're starting here with the same lead for patrick i don't disagree with this lead this lead was super impactful and rotom and gothitel coming out well last time he did have that karidon out here so yeah. he's not gonna have the sun going in on this rotom but he does have the flexibility of that volt switch I think if you're Rishi, you really have to look at Smeargle and say, it doesn't do damage, but it is so annoying and detrimental to my team without, with the lack of spread moves on the team. Yeah, but there's not going to be too much you can do this turn. It's going to have Fake Out at the ready to go. Yeah, I think you have to Fake Out Gothitelle. You can't let Gothitelle Fake You Out or Taunt You or Set Up Trick Room in any form or manner. Yeah, and there's the Terrifier out of the gate, just getting rid of that Ice Weakness. And now... It's going to be very tough to take that down. That's, I think that's why he brought the Tinglu. That's going to be one of the few things that's going to be able to shut down this fire type. Yeah, there is the fake out from Gothitelle. So actually going to shut down the Calyrex. And the fake out goes out onto Gothitelle. So Gothitelle was slightly faster, which makes a world of a difference. Trick Room does not go up. So we're already seeing a difference in game plan here. Exactly. And now the Smeargle... One turn away from being taken down, even, I think maybe an, even a Volt Switch could take it down at this point. That'd be a great dynamic play for Rishi. Yeah, I think if you're Patrick, you know you probably can't click Trick Room, as if you get taunted, now you've wasted two turns as Calyrex, and you don't want that to happen. No, so you have sir. to find something here, so I would assume we just see the Glacial Lance come out. I think you're correct. I think we'll just see that Glacial Lance, that consistent damage is what you need at this point. But... I don't think it's going to take anything out this turn. Like, without the Decorate from the Smeargle, it's not going to be doing that lethal damage just yet. Yeah. Something no interesting to note about Patrick's or Ice Rider here is it's also running Close Combat instead of Stomping Tantra. Maybe Patrick does not want to have the chance of missing any moves, so it is doing just the full-out attack mode. Smeargle is taunted, though, and most of it kit all of its kit is non-damaging moves, so that's actually a beautiful play. Yeah, so Smeargle now forced to retreat, forced to switch out. We'll can't. see what else. It can't because of Shadow Tag. 
It can't. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's Virgil's just dead just in the water. Struggle. Beautiful play by Rishi, forcing him to have a useless Pokemon on the field. As long as he can keep it up with his Tingler, you have to eat a Glacial Lance, and it just barely manages to scrape by. Yeah, both Pokemon survive. But now that Calyrex doesn't have Trick Room up, I mean, Smeargle can't do anything. Smeargle is going to have to struggle. It can fake out. It's actually forced to fake out as a damaging move, even though fake out <laughs> won't work. So it's actually doing less than struggle. Yeah, it's just going to stay there. At least it's not taking... Actually, it's even worse. It can't even struggle itself out of the game now. It's going to be no, locked in here. It's forced to sit. Sonic Tantrum does not get the knockout. Leaves it at just under half. Glacial Lance into the Ting Lu. It's going to... Definitely be a knockout right here, and we're gonna have a chilling nay come into effect. Chilling nay goes into effect, but now you have to worry about that foul play on Gothitelle that did so much damage last time. The gambler in me wanted to see the fissure, you know? You're gonna go down a turn anyways, you're not gonna secure the KO, but maybe you can, maybe you can. Maybe you can, or <laughs> I think you have to play Stomping Tantrum there, because if you click fissure and you miss, now you have a full exactly. HP Calyrex. It was the consistent option, HP. the smart option was yeah. to do that, so props to Rishi, and he's still in an amazing position to close this one out. Only problem is this Karadon gonna be very, very scared of this Glacial Lance. It's gonna still be super effective against it. Yeah, we're gonna see what happens here. Karadon's coming out. I think he's hoping that the foul play from Gothitelle will move first and knock out that glass or that ice rider this turn. That's what we're hoping to see. Could be a protect though, stall it out just a little bit longer. So he gets the Lay of Land, because the Curadon could Terra Fire, and that would make him approach this entirely differently. Yeah, I think you really got to try and stall out as much as possible, see what the Curadon is going to do. Hope that maybe they actually take out the Smeargle for you. The Smeargle just can't do anything here. Yeah, they There's don't the Flare Blitz. They don't want to take out the Smeargle at this point. You want the Smeargle just completely useless here. Just stalling, using the fake out, unable to even die. And it's low enough that it's not even going to be a problem later on. No, I wonder if we're going to see the double protect or we're just going to commit to the attack. I think Patrick is going to fully com No, he's going to try for the double protect. He needs this to go off. But what can he do? The Smeargle isn't going to be doing anything. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing the true power of Gothitelle. Gothitelle has locked another Pokemon into this battle. And it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful lock as well. There's no good switch out here. The fact that he doesn't have to rely on spread moves here. He has these single target options on Coridon. There's the protect. Double protect oh, fails. did not go through. Fake out fails. Yeah, of course it does. And now a useless turn. There's the collision Rishi course. getting a free turn here. It lifts wow. on one! This Ice Rider refuses to die! There it is. As it falls to foul play. But that Ice Rider does refuses to be knocked out under no. any circumstance. It manages to stay even against the odds. Taunt is down. I actually, actually I think that was worse for Patrick. What? The taunt going Smeargle down? Because now is stuck in. If Collision Course had knocked out Calyrex Ice Rider, Smeargle would have been taking the foul play, probably fallen to foul play. Yeah, yeah, it was worse. And now Blood Moon and Earth. Wow. He's locked in still, but <laughs> Smeargle oh, wow. is still stuck. Yeah, this Smeargle, sure, it can decorate now. It could maybe get off a spore, but it's not going to be doing anything game-changing here. No, I I think now that uh, the taunt is gone, you just end Smeargle. Or you leave it up and you taunt it again. Because it's going to be a free swing by Rishi on one of your mons you want to be up and healthy. Yeah. Let's see what happens here. Are we going to go for the Blood Moon or the Hyper Voice? Hyper Voice, you got to be risking it, though. That's risky. You think you might be able to knock out the Gothitelle, yeah. but it's, it's Yeah, but you it's leave that Coridon up and standing. Exactly. I don't think the Coridon would... Do you think Coridon would fall to a Blood Moon? I think I it would get know. very low. Blood Moon is a really strong attack. I think it would just get low. I think Coridon is tanky enough to withstand it, but we'll see soon enough. It looks like that's the play he's going to go for. I haven't seen a Coridon enough at, during this tournament for me to make the call on if it will survive or not. So I don't know the damage calcs here. We're going to go for the Hyper Voice. I don't disagree with that. Into the follow me. Coridon use Protect. We're going to see the double Protect. Yeah, will we see it? There's the follow me. No double Protect. 
Yep. There it is. Taunt. Into the taunt one oh, more time. Oh, wow. That's Smeargle a beautiful is boy. stuck again. As long as this Gothitelle stays in, if he can resist this Hyper Voice, I think Rishi will have won the game on that play alone. Let's see. This Hyper no. Voice Gothitelle goes down. No way to lock this Smeargle in other than trying to get the knockout. Well, no, it can't even get the knockout. The Smeargle is assuredly switching out next turn. Well, it could go for a Decorate, potentially. It could. Let's see. Because you do get the switch in, but do you really want Smeargle to be your last Pokemon? No, I don't think you ever want Smeargle to be your last Pokemon, so that is the risk of can you try and just sacrifice Smeargle to the gods? But that's, that's all single target here, so there's no guarantee unless Rishi wants to make that happen. I think you go for I think you do go for a decorate, get some value, buff up your Blood Moon, and try and go for a big swing. Yeah, I want to look at our speed stats here. Don't expose them. That is, it's cried on a faster Pokemon. So if you do follow me. You actually would pull, not gonna follow me. There's the Urshifu. There's the collision course. That was uh, what I was worried about. I think this might pick up the knockout on it dies. There it is. Yeah, collision course, such a strong move. And now this Smeargle being swapped back in at low, low HP. And wow, on the that Urshifu as well. That's gonna sting. Yeah, thankfully we're dealing with a single strike Urshifu here, so it's not weak to it, but it's gonna take a lot of damage, and I don't know what's possible here. Urshifu can survive another Thunderbolt. I doubt it can survive a collision course. This might be Rishi's win in the bag here, but we'll have to see what happens. We shall have to see indeed. This is an absolutely terrible position for Patrick here. He won game one in an overwhelming fashion. It looks like Rishi is gonna looking to do the opposite right here. Yeah, that is true. Smeargle was stuck in a taunt. I do wonder if you just sacrifice Smeargle the last turn and you leave it in and, and just have it do nothing. Even if the well, Blood Moon goes down, you'd then have a full health Urshifu instead of a half health Urshifu. That's true. This is a very difficult fight to fight, but he's going to keep on trucking here as There's the collision, the collision course, course is set and it will get the knockout as well. Super effective. So we will go to a game three for, for what, the third time? Oh no, second time today. I think the third time. No, I think. No, I, you're right. It was just a long one. It was one. a long game one. Yeah. So game three for the second time today, chat. Who are we feeling? Are we feeling Patrick or are we feeling Rishi? Who do we think is going to win round three? Let us know. As we get set up here, you have to wonder what changes they'll make. Rish I think Gothitelle is the true MVP here on Rishi's team. Again, shutting down Smeargle for so long, Patrick couldn't do anything. Smeargle was stuck. Yeah, I couldn't even decorate because of said taunt before the Gothitelle left. It was just absolutely dead in the water. You had to go for the swap out, but forcing that swap out led it to its death ultimately and made the Urshfu have to take a hit that it didn't, that it couldn't take. Yeah, and Smeargle isn't faster than Gothitelle, so that's another important piece of information as it couldn't get its fake out first before the fake out into the Ice Rider. I could have sworn, maybe there's a speed tie here because I could have sworn that, that Smeargle's fake out went first last game well i game. don't think gothitelle used fake out last game oh. i think i think in our first game i think gothitelle may have gone for maybe a trick or going for that taunt or the foul play or something to deal with glass or ice rider really early you're, you're probably correct there. this time it just goes for the fake out it's faster than the smear goal and blocks the taunt or blocks the trick room from going up yeah, the Taunt Shadow Tag play is absolutely impressive. Just realizing that, hey, this Smeargle, very, very strong in that first game. I absolutely got rolled over by it. What do I have in my kit to cover that? Oh, I have this Gothitelle, I have Taunt. If I taunt it, it can do nothing. It yeah. can't even use Fago. I can't even struggle to get itself out there. Yeah, and that's really the downside of Smeargle. As much as Smeargle is the ultimate support Pokemon, you can only go so far without giving it any attacks where it just sits there. And I think it's interesting to see Gothitelle be such this dominant performer. Last time we saw Gothitelle was honestly when Wolfie brought it to Worlds and won with the Paris Trap team. Now we're seeing Gothitelle run in this totally new style where it's never been used before. And here we got Rillaboom and Gothitelle. Gothitelle taking the lead again. Again, the same lead one more time of wow. Smeargle versus Ice Rider. 
Yeah, there must be a way out that Patrick has surmised because this is that looked nigh unwinnable. How do you avoid that situation where your Smeargle's taunted? Yeah, oh, we'll have to you can't swap out. Here. Maybe you swap. You can't swap because of the shadow tag. Yeah, I said you can't swap out. Oh yeah, you can't you swap can't out. You can't swap out of anything. You're locked into this engagement, so he feels confident enough to maybe hammer this one through. Maybe you spam Glacial Lance and try and just <laughs> go through this Gothitelle wall as soon as you can. I I wonder if you decorate this turn. You this could, is the true mind you games. Could... It's the mind games of what do you think Gothitelle is gonna do? Yeah, does Gothitelle go for the Faco to prevent the Trick Room or? Does it go for that that taunt to shut down the smear goal? There's a choice to make here on Rishi's side. Yeah, and I think whatever, like, it really is up to Patrick on how he reads this. The the ball is in Rishi's court. Patrick has to make the correct read. And the smear goal oh, flinches, out. and there's the taunt. It doesn't need the fake out either. Wait, it taunted the Calyrex. There's the Glacial Lance, though. What's... And it gets the kill on Rillaboom. Gothitelle almost goes down. Gets the crit on Rillaboom. And wow. the crit on Gothitelle! Wow. And I I have to ask this question. Why was that not swapped around? Why would you not want to taunt the Smeargle and fake out the Calyrex? It was the exact opposite. It was the exact opposite of what we thought would be the most optimal move there. Yeah. But now... It's Coridon. Coridon right takes the field. Do you taunt the wow. Smeargle this turn? You know Trick Room can't go up. What do you do? Hey, you prevent the Trick Room, but in doing so, you don't prevent this Smeargle. And you don't protect this Follow Me. That is crucial. Coridon could Terra. It could Terra Fire, but fire. you know that that Calyrex is going to Terra Fire soon here anyway. So maybe you just go for the set damage of Collision Course. Yeah, I... This is an interesting matchup here. I think Patrick's really got to think about what's he, what he wants to do. Really has to consider his options here. Five seconds going down to the wire. There it is. Going for the Glacial Lance. Here's the Terra. the Terra. Fire. Did he get the correct read? Let's see. Terra Fire cried on. Will there be a Terra right back? If there's not, this Flare Blitz could just knock out this Calyrex. Oh, this will be an incredibly powerful Flare Blitz if it does not if it does not connect. There is there the Terra is. Fire. I'm so not shocked to see that. Patrick has not been afraid to Terra Fire the Calyrex when the Coridon is up against it. He had the Terra Fire regardless here because you don't need that threat of the Glacial Lance oh, with your Dragon Typing. So removes that risk and should be able to maybe blast through this. Yeah, Gothitelle protects. Smeargle uses follow me. Smeargle honestly fine with going down at this point. It probably wants to remove itself from the field regardless. It does not want to exist here anymore. There's the flame charge. I'm yeah, gonna get the speed boost, but the trick room trick room is not trick set up can't cannot because of the taunt. taunt. So he's comfortable getting the extra speed here. So here's the here's the question. Does Glacial Lance knock out? Does it knock out? Gets blocked out by Gothitelle. It should Plus not with the fire terror typing, but it's gonna do a. Doesn't even do half. Yeah, it does not do much at all. And here's the thing: is this is a uh, glass shard that does not have stopping tantrum, which would probably do a lot to cry on the, at this point. So yeah. we'll have to see what comes out. We actually do not see the um, the blood moon. We're seeing for Rigoraf instead in this in this battle. Interesting, and maybe just having that extra flexibility, that taunt. Trick Room could still come up here. Yeah, Trick Room would still go up. The big factor in losing Smeargle is you do lose that, you do lose that uh, follow me pressure. Exactly, exactly. But you do gain the Helping Hand and you do gain that Trick Room and you do prevent that fake out pressure with Armor Tail. Yeah. It's a very strong choice to pick up as a support mode. But no, I'm gonna go on the aggression here with the Urshifu. Yeah, Urshifu is incredible. Well, threatening the Gothitelle, trying to run out that Protect as well. Gothitelle is most likely going down this turn. Because you would need to get rid of this Gothitelle so you can start switching out more e a little bit more easily. Yeah. Because right now, you're just locked into whatever is out there. Preventing those combos that you so badly want to create. Waiting to see what happens here. Yeah, it is 
all hands on deck. This is really, again, I think, I think Patrick really holds the keys to what can happen in this battle. There goes Gothitelle. Switching is back available on the field. Who comes out? Ting Lu comes out. Special attack of all surrounding Pokemon. There's the protect from Rhydon. Yeah, there it is. Sucker Punch, Sucker punch doesn't do Fails. anything because of the protect. Now we see the and Glacial Lance. Ting Lu having to eat another Glacial Lance is going to sing. We saw how much I did last time. The crit comes through. That could spell doom. And it and does! It goes down. Not a crit, but at plus wow. one at this point. Oh, you're point. right. I forgot about the plus one from the Nay. This is, a plus, this is now a plus two Calyrex versus a Coridon and a Gothitelle. Yeah, this is looking to be a very dangerous match. Fake out pressure is applied, and there's no swap out into that fr Frigoraph to prevent it. Yeah, do you Wicked Blow? Do you Sucker Punch? I think I think you have to Sucker Punch and focus on that Coridon. That Coridon has to move this turn. It can't get the double protect. It's probably going to go for the collision course into the Calyrex. Does the collision course get the knockout? <laughs> can't say it can't the double protect. It's unlikely to. It's unlikely but it to double protect. I'd be shocked if we see the double protect. Hey, we might see it. There's Fake Out also coming through. Going for the close combat. There is the Fake Out. The lands. There's Sucker the Sucker Punch. punch. Gonna land, doesn't knock out doesn't though. pick up the knockout. There's a collision course heading right towards the Urshifu. Gets Urshifu the knockout. One hit KO. Now we're just down to the beginning pair we've seen so many times. Actually, no, we got one more in the back for Patrick. Yeah, I think it's just, I think actually it's just Frigraph left alive unless Smeargle switched out at some point and I'm forgetting. No, Smeargle is down. It is just Frigraph. Here we are. Frigraph thrown into the mix now. Trick Room is able to be set up by this Frigoraph, and I think that, honestly, could win the entire game right there. Yeah, the question, yeah, ugh. Wait, Trick Room is still up, no? Trick Room is not up. I don't think Trick Room ever went up. Oh. So the question is, you got Foul Play. You have to be careful of Foul Play. If I think Foul Play knocks out Ice Rider, I don't know. I don't think Collision Course would. Not in one shot. I think it could get it very low, but I don't think it would be a one-shot KO. You're gonna have to go for the double strike here, I think. There yeah, it is. There's, there's the collision, collision course. course. Into the ice route. Does it get the knockout? It does not. Doesn't it's even halfway. do half. There's the foul play. God tells faster. It oh, doesn't pick up the kill. No. Ice Rider lives for one more time. Psychic lands. Psychic lands. Right on. This is looking to be it. Patrick Chang looking to win it all right here with one last Glacial Lance. There it is. That is assuredly going to land. And oh, there it is. There it is. Oh. Your winner is Patrick Chang. What an incredible matchup that was. What an incredible matchup indeed. The Smeargle plays by Rish, or the, the Gothito plays against Smeargle by Rish in game two were absolutely amazing to watch. But the pivot by Patrick in the next game was amazing as well. And I don't want to knock any of these players' decisions because they're thinking at such a high level. Maybe there's something I'm not considering here. But... That beginning turn for Rishi, if I feel like if he faked out the other one and taunted the Smeargle, things could have gone a lot differently. Yeah, I think that's a I think it's an interesting point. I think it was a great game by both of them, but really I think that's the power of Glass of Ice Rider is once it gets up and rolling, it is very hard to stop. Its defense is so high and it gets those attack boosts. There's really not much you can do against it, so we'll have to see if Rishi can bounce back and maybe we see him later in the finals today. Exactly. We're seeing so much horsepower on display here today. We're seeing both the riders just in full effect. And even Rishi with these amazing plays with shutting down its opponent, it was still effective to operate on its own. It could set Trick Room up on its own, get itself in a position where it can start taking these first turns and start rolling over its opponents. Yeah, honestly, I think... Again, I think Ice Riders won every match today. I think so, every time we've seen it. But it's gone far. People are waking up having some counterplay against it. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how players overadapt and overcome. And again, all the different Terras on the Ice Horse. I think Ice Rider currently is the MVP for today.
Smeargle also a very fun pick in that battle. So far, so far. We haven't seen some other teams, so we're going to see it going into the next round to see if that will stay consistent. Thank you very much, but we're going to have to throw it to a quick break. We'll be right back with more Pokemon Battles.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to round four of a Swiss. Here we are deciding some of these make or break. It's already trying to get to these points that you need to get to the top cut. These players both battling it out to get the higher ranking, to get the opportunity to even make the top cut at this point. It's going to be Artan, Andy, and Michael Holloway. We've seen Michael Holloway before supporting the Team Rocket Vest, doing some Team Rocket tactics, bringing in that ditto to try and steal one of his opponents. Pokemon away. Of course, Arton Andi running that Ice Rider team we've seen before with a few key differences running that Smirkle as well. There's Luna Blood Moon, Single Strike Urshifu, and the big switch up is not going to be the Frigarath, it's going to be that Grimmsnarl. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting team. Grimmsnarl was a big player back in the Sword and Shield era. Really good at setting up, the tr setting up light screens, reflex, all those annoying statuses, as well as Spirit Break does a ton of damage. Looking over at Michael's team, we are seeing Maridon take the field again with that Hydron engine doing a ton of damage. We've got Whimsicott, one of my favorite Pokemon, for Rigoraph, Ursuline, Ursuline Blood Moon to go with Frigoraph, Incineroar, and of course, the transforming Ditto. A lot of interesting different pieces here that could work well together. We are seeing, it is interesting to see that U-turn Incineroar instead of that Parting Shot Incineroar to do more damage than Parting Shot would. Exactly. And that, what it, that Parting Shot is a very strong move indeed, but you also have that Whimsicott, which we've seen that Tailwind sets are just absolutely key in these yeah. matches. I think Ditto is also a really interesting choice. We did see some potential with Ditto the past few days, but Ditto is a very risky Pokemon. You have to position correctly for Ditto to work, and if you have to, and it, you can't send Ditto out into the wrong slot, or else you really just do nothing with it. Exactly, you can't send Ditto out into that spot. And now, like, yeah, I think you do it. I think you do it. You take the gamble. You send Ditto out right away. Try and get ahead. Try and scan that Calyrex. Try and win the 50 50 chance of which slot it's going to be in. And then just go from there. I think that'd be an amazing play. But well, I think you it's a leave. definite risk. It's not consistent at all. It could, yeah. You could just scan a support mod. But let's be honest. What would you not want to scan here? And everything here has a place. I would say Grimstone would be the worst one to pick up. I think Smeargle is actually the worst pickup here for Ditto. You want Ditto to come in as a very offensive Pokemon with Choice Scarf. But if you switch into Smeargle and now you're Choice Scarf Smeargle, that's not going to do much for you there. Choice Scarf Decorate would be the best option if you do end, take, end up taking that. Or a Spore would not be bad as well. Just having that Spore pressure would be massive. I don't think it's the worst choice. I think it's not the worst choice, but I think on this team of Pokemon, I mean, for Rigograph and Blood Moon, you get a lot of offensive power. Grim Snarl, as Grim much as you don't love it as a choice scarf Pokemon, it's I can at least do some damage, where Smeargle can do no damage. There it is. 
As we start here, we see Ride on Cinderor versus that Smeargle on Ice Rider. Smeargle on Ice Rider have been a very powerful combo. We saw it in the last game, which got Patrick his win there. Yeah, got the win last time, but will it get the win once again? Let's see. Smeargle's attack and not lowered because of own temper in the clear amulet, making this Incineroar really do nothing on its opener. Yeah, it's interesting to see own tempo on a Smeargle instead of Moody. Moody used to be a very broken ability on Smeargle, but not running Moody, running with own tempo is interesting to play here. Exactly, very interesting, a very key play right there. Big out pressure though, being supplied by this and summer is gonna be absolutely imperative. And already we're seeing the Terra be committed onto the Maraidon, of course. Just even the Volt Switch is as powerful as a Regieleki using Max Lightning. So that is an absolutely amazing first opening turn right there. If you use Electro Drift, it's even stronger than that. Yeah, we are seeing the Terra fire Calyrex again. So thankfully not that Terra Water, so not weak to it. Not weak to those Electro Drifts and not that Terra Grass. We're seeing that Terra Fire very... I feel like more offensive compared to the other two. There's the Fake Out onto the Maridon. Maridon will get to do nothing this turn. Ooh. And Fake Out moves after the other Smeargle. I think Michael was probably hoping that he would go first and his Incineroar would be slightly faster than Smeargle. It is not. But now we are within the trick room. Things are looking dire now for Michael. This Maridon, well, it can tank a hit. It's going to be very low. It's going to have to try and take something out in one clean hit next turn. Yeah, we are see again, with this, this is the Calyrex Ice Slide, Ice Rider set that has the close combat. So no stopping tantrum. So actually a lot worse into this Maridon matchup. If you have Sonic Tantrum, we really put on that pressure early. We are seeing Ditto in the back there, probably waiting to use Ditto until that Calyrex has killed a few Pokemon to copy those uh, those Grim Nays when it transforms. Exactly, is the insurance policy if this Maridon goes down, it'll fill that slot right back up. But no, we're gonna get the swap out right now into the Wimscot. You wanna try and turn this one around for yourself in some supportive way, but the Tailwind is not gonna help you too much in this trick room. No, Tailwind's not going to be super impactful right now. There's the Flare Blitz into the Smeargle. Try and get the Smeargle off the floor, and Smeargle goes away. Big pickup there. No more support mon for that Calyrex. So the first support mon down. We yeah. pulled damage taken, but it's not going to be too bad. I think that fake out on the Smeargle was actually super impactful, as you prevented from living with that Focus Ash on this turn. So really, it got it got the fake out out once, and now it's it. I'm going to hit the Encore onto the... Calyrex there, really forcing it into protect, so I, so hopefully we see the Calyrex switch there so it doesn't get locked to the Encore Protect. Exactly. Now it's in a really rough spot. It could still switch out even if Encore, though, so there yeah, it is. Yeah, there's the switch out. Good play there. There it is. Switching into the Urshifu. This is also another single strike Urshifu. Again, running a very similar team to last time, so that single strike Urshifu taking that dark typing. Whipscott lives! Ursula takes a lot of life orb damage. There's the knockoff to actually remove the life orb from it. Yeah, this Ursula is going to be a big threat on the field now. It's so tough to deal with it right now because what are you? You don't have anything super effective against it. You have nothing to really shut it down either. No, and you're slower and you're faster than it. Yeah, that sure. Urshifu though, incredibly fast. There is the encore. So actually, just forcing it into hyper voice and no chance to do the blood move. Incineroar will live, Wimscott goes down, but it did its job, so it's fine with piecing out for a little bit. Now the Ice Rider is still up on the other side, knocking off the Sash is going to be... Oh, it's a Choice Band, actually. Yeah, knocking off that Choice Band is, re is honestly probably really helpful. You reduce the damage. Now, you have some choices. You could copy the Urshifu. Or... I don't think cop... I think you want to save Ditto for that Ice Rider. I think Urshifu is helpful and probably actually... actually it is not a bad choice. Urshifu will help you with this Blood Moon matchup here. Yeah, and you have the Choice Scarf, which is often a pick on the Urshifu as well. It's not a bad choice at, at all. Yeah, so we'll pick up that Imposter. Again, no boost this Urshifu, so it'll just be a plain ditto. Yeah, you can finally take down this uh, this wall that is Ursuluna, just tanking hit after hit. One more round of Trick Room as well. You're gonna try and turn this one out, maybe outlast just that bit longer, but 
Time is ticking. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens here. We can go to the close combat into the Ursa Luna. Or will the Ursa Luna... Really, the Ursa Luna does not have a good switch out here. So I think if you just fully attack, it d even with the Protect, you hit through the Protect. Exactly. The Ursa Luna switches maybe the Calyrex, and then the Calyrex is eating something. It's not a great position for Ursa Luna. Not a great position. There it There's is, the Hyper Boy. still going to do considerable damage. To yeah, ton of damage. Its general goes down. I think you go for maybe the close combat. Yeah, there it is. Posing Urshifu hits the close combat. Actually knocks out Ditto wow. before Ditto even gets a chance. That Trick Room being very impactful. Exactly. Now that you're kind of regretting having that Choice Scarf at that point. Yeah. So we are going to see Maridon come back in, but facing against their ground type in Ursa Luna, what do you do? Twisted Dimensions go back to normal. Electric Train will go back up. I think your only choice here is to ignore the Ursa Luna until the very end. You're know, trying to get through all of these other threats that you're more effective against first. Yeah, I think you're right. We'll have to see what happens. Here is the Draco Meteor, by the looks of it. No, thinking about it. Still Encore for one more turn. I think you Urshifu, Ursa Luna, then you have to try and do, deal with the Calyrex. Yeah. Oh, it looks like he's going to go in. There's the Draco, Draco Meteor, Meteor to start. out first Luna. But taking that now, that minus two in special attack, I think. I don't think minus two can get it done. You're going to have to hope for crits from here on out. Yeah, there's the close combat. Wow. That does way too much damage. I think this battle has been decided. Things are definitely looking in Artan's advantage here. Just relying on Calyrex, not even as the main carry, just as added pressure, because it always can spin out of control if left unchecked. Yeah, and I think Trick Room is incredibly strong. Using Trick Room, you, you pretty much make Blood Moon now an incredibly positive threat. There's the Draco Meteor to try and go for it, gets it down to half HP. But that special attack falls, and there's the close combat, finishing off Maridon. And taking a Maridon down. Now, that is going to be game one. Going over to Arton. We'll see what happens. How does Michael respond? What does he change up? What does he bring differently? I think Ditto is such an interesting Pokemon, but if you can avoid putting Ditto in a position where it can copy Calyrex with a bunch of stat boosts, it makes it a lot harder to use. I think it was good. I really gave him an out out of that uh, Blood Moon Urshif or that Blood Moon uh, Ursaluna. Uh, copying Urshifu was not a bad pick, but your main goal is to copy that. Uh, that restricted Pokemon there, because having that Calyrex would have gave you an answer to the Ursaluna, would have given you so much value against pretty much everything on the field. Yeah, R10 also made it to our top eight on Monday, on Monday, or top four on Monday night, or Friday night, it's Monday today, on Friday night. So he's looking for some redemption, trying to get back into that top eight circle and pick up a victory today. Exactly, everyone's hungry for those points. They matter so much as we close in on Worlds. So both these players battling it out, trying to earn that in chance for an invite because every point matters so much. And we didn't see the Grim Snarl come out the last game. Did no. We? I, Grim Snarl is an interesting Pokemon. I don't think you need it. I think you can just be so much. You can put a ton of offensive pressure on with your other Pokemon that I think you're picking between Smeargle and Grim Snarl at this point. I think you're correct as well. And honestly, Ursa Luna, he doesn't really have a good answer for that on the side of uh, Michael. No, there's but really not a great answer for Ursa Luna. Doesn't have a grass type, doesn't have a water type. No, and that's that's one of the hard things when you're considering team building is can you, do you build a fire, water, grass core? Without that Rillaboom, without that strong water type, it does create a little bit of a lack, and that's what you have Ditto for. Ditto is there to try and hopefully, I think, get an advantage over Blood Moon or Saluna. So we'll have to see what he can do. Bring back a victory here. Exactly. Going to try and bring this one back from the brink. But it's going to be a reverse sweep situation. It's to win this game, to stay in this, to even have a chance. Artan looking very, very good so far. The Ice Rider. We've seen it so many times today. Finally getting some good use after the past day or two. This is looking to be a very exciting match. Yeah, and both these players are 2-1 in our tournament so far. So winning this battle will mean a lot for them going into round five. Win this battle, go up to 3-1, and, and then put yourself in a great position. 4-1 has been a constant top cut for this weekend. 
so you don't want to drop to that three and two and have the chance of just bubbling out. Our winner from Monday, Steven, has bubbled out twice this uh, during this tournament, so you don't want to bubble out. So we'll have to see what happens. Exactly. Now, let's see it. Want to try and go for that Electro Drift shutdown once again. It's a big threat, but yeah, I think he knows now fake out pressure is massive here. So he's going to go for the switch into Frigoraph. Yeah, Frigoraph's a really strong Pokemon here. I mean, blocking all of the priority pressure, really good against um, against Raging Bolt, really good against Pokemon that like to put pressure on. It can also cancel out Trick Room. It can also cancel out Trick Room. It does, does have Trick Room on it. So that could be a massive play going forward. Oh, no. No! Oh. No! That is the worst case scenario, folks. That is uh, absolutely awful. I know we had a crash the other day. We have a crash once again. They're going to quickly try it. Call no. over Judge and figure out the scenario to fix it up here. And the worst thing is that he revealed a trick right there. An absolutely massive play that I don't think Artan was accounting for in that opener. No. I don't think he was ready for Frigoraph. I don't think he was prepared for Frigoraph. But now, here comes Frigoraph and the crash. Yes. You know what? I am excited for the Switch too, so we can hopefully get away from these crashing issues. Of course, of course. Well, we don't know if that's official yet, just yet. We just know that there are some peripherals for potential new consoles, so whoever kn <laughs> who knows what that console may be. But nonetheless, things are looking very exciting in this current set. It's all going to be decided within the next two games. So we're going to throw it to a quick break as we sort out these technical issues and we'll see you again right back in game.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We're just going to be going right into game here. Right, we'll jump right back into set. So let's see how this is shaken up. We saw a very big opener last time. We're seeing a different opener here. Calyrex and Smeargle. Same lineup of Rhydon and Ursaluna. going to be the different lineup for Michael. Yeah, so it looks like Michael here is going for the full spread attack using that Discharge and that Hyper Voice. Discharge able to go off and not hit Ursaluna because it is that ground type. So we're going full spread, full damage all the time. There it is, there's the Terra on the Maridon. But will the fake out stop this Electro Drift? That's the thing. The no, follow, me, follow will. me, no fake outs, just follow me. Which doesn't deal. matter because they are playing both spread moves. Here's the discharge. Beautiful. How much is this going to do? I have A no lot. clue. It almost knocks out the Smear Goal, but the Smear Goal hangs on thanks to the Sash. But there's a Hyper Voice in the wings. Oh, the Paralysis! Oh, the paralysis. Wow! Does that matter? No, that wow! A board wipe from Michael takes out both of the leads, the hyper carry and the support, leading him down to two. And Michael continues on with a completely healthy team. Oh, I think that actually did matter. I think Blood Moon Earth Luna was actually slower than the uh, than the Ice Rider. So. Because of that paralysis, it allowed Ursula Blood Moon to go first and pick out the double knockout without taking any damage to itself. Now we have an Ursa Luna duel on our hands here, folks. This discharge isn't going to be doing very much at all. You might as well go for an Electro Drift at that point. But maybe you're fishing for that paralysis once again on Ursula. You have that Serene Grace buff in your mind. But now the Terra. This actually might be a Terra on the Ursa Luna. No, it's not. Uh, so that distance is still going to single target. We're getting the Steel Bear this time, but the axe in the head cannot be very comfortable to wear that type of crown. Oh, well, that bear got caught in the wrong lumberjack and woods. There it is. Yeah, That's I'm shocked you go for the discharge here. Maybe you were predicting that you would see an Ursa Luna Terra instead of the. Wow, wow, it knocks out still through the Terra. There goes Urshifu. Well, yeah, Steel types don't resist electric type moves. No. So taking just that full force, and here's the Blood Moon. Let's see it. Wow, and even Michael gets to go first here. Wow, Michael clean sweep within two turns. One for the money, two for the show. Oh, right, it is locked into discharge. Yep. Thank you. Very smart decision, a beautiful play. Michael, just all aggression, working out, paying off dividends. And honestly, great way to get him back in here now. We're just finishing out the set. Whoever takes this next one will win it. Yeah, I think if you're a 10, maybe you're confident. Maybe you sort of, during that break, you got taken out of the flow a bit, sort of got lost in the battle, and now had to come into that and just get double, uh, just hit with all of the spread moves. You hate to see it, and that's a ton of damage for Michael there. Absolute and <laughs> amount of damage. Like it's just incalculable amounts yeah, of damage. Like, I cannot believe battle. that the discharge of the spread move took things down to one and the hyper voice was just there to sweep the board clean. And then once you had uh, those squishier targets up like the Ursa Luna, that discharge was good enough to knock him out and that cues up the Ursa Luna to just be hammered down by a blood moon. And another amazing part of that is he kind of had to tear the other one to get any any value there because the <laughs> the Ursa Luna couldn't tear it because it needs that immunity from the discharge. Yeah, R10 is really going to have to change a few things around here, figure out what he can do differently, get back in the flow. He really has no coverage for these big spread moves. So if you're Michael, do you lead it again and just hit it again and again and again and again? We're seeing the Grimmsnarl Calyrex here. Grimmsnarl making its first appearance on the board versus the Maridon and the Ursaluna. Yeah, the hyper aggro opener once again coming up from Michael. I mean, why not? You won it so handily last time. Hadron engine is in effect here. And I'm excited to see how this one shakes up. We haven't seen a Grim Snarl ever before in v the, this uh, Tetra Series VGC. No, we'll probably see the Grim Snarl and some screens go up here trying to block a lot of damage. But Grim Snarl has no redirection, so Calyrex is just left in the open to almost force to protect or trick room. Could Misty Terrain as well to try and stop some of that electric damage coming its way if it's fast enough, but I don't think it is. I think you're right, the Reflect will go first. Yeah, probably going for the light screen, block all the, a, a lot of special attackers on Michael's side that you want to block out from hitting their big damage numbers. There it is. Terra Electric is being so brutal, so oppressive once again. 
Calyrex with Correct. Protect not shocking there. We know it is shocking. This discharge. And there's the light screen. So gonna have damage against all those special moves there. Here's the discharge. Let's see how much that light screen protects them. Should do a decent wow. amount. But still, it's so strong, especially with the electric drain up. Wow. Oh, the ton to Grimmsnarl. There's and the Blood Moon blood into the Protect. Grimmsnarl will love another turn to either get the Spirit Break up or go for Reflect. Maybe Mystic Terrain to turn off the Electric Terrain, which is maybe why we'll see the switch to Ditto. But the switch to Ditto will take this Calyrex. So he'll be going in, having another heavy hitter on the way. Yeah, that is the that is the power of Ditto in the back. Frigoraph still also a possibility here to block any prior block any priority moves used against Pokemon, but I don't think that will block Reflect. I don't think it will. It does not block the status moves against the enemy team. Here but comes Ditto, so we are gonna see an Ice Horse Ditto. Yeah, here it is. Wow, getting the Calyrex is an absolutely imperative decision. Beautiful play. He has so many hyper carries on this team. The Ursa Luna, the the Rhydon, and now just Frigoraph going to be the one doing all the sport work. Yeah, Frigoraph, a really strong Pokemon here. The interesting thing is if maybe Michael did predict this, or if R10 did predict, he could have done a close combat actually into the Ditto, and that would have been that would be an insane read if he makes it. Exactly, and I think we're going to see a close. There's combat. the trick room. Wow. The choice scar from the Ditto now gonna make it move last. Yeah. The interesting thing here is you do have Frigraph up if you want to turn off the Trick Room. Oh, Glacial right. Lance. But is he He's slow enough to go play? before uh, the Calyrex? Yeah, I think you need to remove Calyrex as soon as possible. Remove any sort of offensive pressure. Grimmsnarl is not a super impactful offensive threat. This is probably a more defensive build. And there goes Grimmsnarl. Set up Mr. and set up the light screen. He did his job and now he gets to hang back for when he needs them to get. There's Glacial Lance number one. Doesn't do a ton of damage. Critical wow. hit on Ditto. Wow. That might matter in the future. Glacial Lance number two. Does a bit more to Urshifu, but not a lot to the other Calyrex. And here's the foul play. Does wow. not pick up the knockout. Doesn't pick up the knockout, but still doing considerable damage there. Do you go for the helping hand to try and knock out the Urshifu? Or do you... I think the helping hand might pick up the double knockout. I'm not positive, though. It's a risk. I think that Calyrex could potentially live it. Yeah, we could also see the switch. I doubt we do, but it is an option to keep Calyrex alive. Do you go helping hand? Do you go foul play? Got to make a right call here. Yeah, there's two decisions here. Two paths diverging. Let's see which timeline is the one that works out best for Michael. There's the helping hand. We are looking for the two hit knockout here. Going for the gambit. Glacial Lance. You have to live this one. You Both will. Pokemon live on 60 HP each. Glacial Lance from Dino does this get the double knockout. Yes, it and does. It dies. Beautiful play by Michael, getting the double knockout, getting the double chilling nay to boot, and now he has a activated. <laughs> yeah, now you have a plus two ditto, and you have a Maridon hanging in the back, and you still have Blood Moon Ursaluna, and you still have all of these big threats. The other Ursaluna is going to take the field, and here comes Grimmsnarl back out. I think Ursaluna can pick up the knockout on. Actually, if Ursaluna picks up the knockout on Ditto, this battle is not as over as it would seem. Well, I, we're still in Trick Room though. Is this Ursa Luna slow enough? Can it try to outspeed in Trick Room this Calyrex? I think it, it might. Yeah, I don't disagree here with Farigraph actually thinking about turning off Trick Room as you want to make sure your other support Pokemon are ready to go. I don't even think it needs Helping Hand at this point either. No, I think you'd be totally fine without a Helping Hand. I think Trick Room here is a great call. Turn off Trick Room for the rest of the battle. Make sure it's gone. Exactly. But now, Hyper Voice. Ursaluna goes first. That's a Hits double knockout. knockout. Beautiful play. Now this keeps Trick Room up. 
Now, for at least one more turn, he's going to be at the disadvantage. We send the ride on once again, and another Ursulina. So there's duel going on, but there's a little bit more offensive power on the side of Michael. But this light screen and the support capabilities might allow this Ursaluna to get the edge out over on Michael. Yeah, I don't know if Maridon itself survives the full power Earth power here, so we will have to see. I have a feeling it does it, but I can't be positive. Exactly, and it can't move first and doesn't have any protect or anything to go its way. I think the Draco meter already being hovered. I think they just want to get this Ursaluna out of here. Yeah, he's confident he can win the duel with this Grimstone. I don't see why not. Just focus in on this Ursaluna. Get your moves in where you can. You should be able to close to that. Yeah, you have to remove Ursaluna from the field as fast as possible. If it stays around, you're in a ton of trouble. It's going for the Misty Terrain. It would matter if that was an electric move, but you can't use it against a ground type. There is blood There's moon. the Blood Moon. Wow! Need to protect! Wins it out with the Protect. Beautiful read by Michael. Here's the Draco Meteor. Does, does not, not KO, pick up the but... knockout. I'm pretty sure Misty Train de decreases the power of Dragon type moves. Beautiful play on both sides. Still in this, but now Artan in a very risky spot. He's just a few moves away from being knocked out. You're gonna see Blood Moon and Dragon and Draco Meteor here from Michael locked in a Draco wow. Meteor on that Maridon. Does not have protect on his. He does not. On his Ursaluna, so he's gonna have to go for an offensive move here. Here's the Terra. Are we seeing Terra Normal or are we seeing Terra Fairy? There it is. The Terra Normal is unleashed. It's going like all powers. offense. Yeah, this Ursaluna has to survive for one more turn. I do not know whose Ursaluna is faster. It's the Draco Meter once again. Doesn't do all too much damage, especially with that uh, special attack drop. There's well, the Blood Moon. Will this be enough to take him out? No, it takes out the Grim Snarl. Oh. Ursaluna still gets to move here. This could be absolutely risky for both players. There's the hyper normal hyper voice. Doesn't do enough. Wow, it knocks out Ursaluna. Beautiful play. And now with the double special attack drop. Very, very low. One HP. Is Trick Room still up? No, That's Trick the Room only is down. Thing. It needs to crit. Draco Meteor at minus four. Does not get the kill. Wow. Artan hangs on by the... <laughs> by the seat of his pants. Yeah, the skin of his teeth, seat of his pants. <laughs> Beautiful play <laughs> by Artan. Wow. I cannot believe that. Michael's gone. Michael stood up in, in shock there. Now, Artan a... now moves to three and one in our day today. Artan drops to two and two. We'll need to win his next round to even have the hope of getting into top cut. What an incredible battle. What an incredible battle indeed. And wow, I cannot believe that is how that one turned out. That was so close all the way to the end. And what a second round from Michael. We got to give him props for that. That was an absolutely amazing second round. Just the absolute sweep was amazing to watch. We haven't seen a round that heavy handed in a while. No, Michael really went full offense there and completely destroyed everything. And but uh, Artend was able to bounce back, change his strategy up a little bit, and win it in the end with Blood Moon Ursaluna. I, so. I wonder if taking out the Grim Style that turn instead of the Ursaluna is what g gave him the victory, the loss. I understand needing to focus on that Grim Style because Marina couldn't have touched Grim Style if it was left. So you have to remove Grim Style, but leaving Blood Moon there really hurt him in the end. Yeah, it really did hurt in the end, but you know. Artan played that one very, very well as well. He came back from a really bad position. He had his Ice Rider stolen from him, couldn't even keep up with the pace that it was set at, and he managed to close it out. He managed to bring this one all the way back from the brink, and that's why he always got to hold out for those amazing plays. Yeah, as much as I hate to say it, I don't think we've seen an Ice Rider team lose today. No. So Ice Rider is still on the path of domination. So it really is up into round five to see if we can see Ice Rider take a r loss in Swiss, or will Ice Rider complete the clean sweep today? So those, answer, those questions will be answered and more after a quick break. So don't go anywhere. We have more Pokemon on its way.
Here we are, everybody, here in the last round of Swiss. It is Swiss round five, and we've seen so many interesting teams, but I don't think we've seen a team as interesting as one of these. The opponents for today are going to be Braden Rabatel and Arshdeep Sandu. So it's going to be a very exciting match just to run through Braden's team. It's a typical Karaidon team we've seen before. It's going to be a sweeper Karaidon with Swords Dance and running all the other flavorings that you usually see as well. Rillaboom, Ogre Palm, Heart Flame Mask, interesting with the Sun, Furigraph, Tornadus, Incarnate Farm, and Chen Pao. But the one I really want to get into, Eric, is yeah. this one. Yeah, this is a sheet that is really cooking up some different flavors here. Throwing back to old, a lot of old formats here. Let's start off with Whimsicott. Pretty standard, except we are seeing fake tears protect Tailwind Moonblast. It's sort of sort of different. See, protect on a Whimsicott is wild, as that is not very common at all. We've yep. got Golden Go coming back here with Make It Rain Protect, Nasty Plus Shadow Ball. Pretty common Golden Go. Let's go to Maridon with Covert Cloak and Discharge Dragon Pulse Electro Drift Volts, which I'm not seeing the Draco Meteor instead going with Dragon Pulse and not going with the Choice Item except going with Covert Cloak. Let's get into some of the more weird things. Let's start off with Lando T, a Pokemon we have not seen since the birth of Incineroar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lando just, T is a, it's a choice. Uh, assault it's a decent vest. choice as well, you know. Decent choice. Oh, Lando T is a great Pokemon. It's just hard to balance it on the team, but it seems like they've done so. They also have uh, Iron Valiant with the Stellar Terra type going in with that electric terrain. It's going to be very interesting to see. Yeah, and then closing it off, we have Spectriar, not the Shadow Rider, just the horse itself, with playing more of a support role with Citrus Berry and will o -Visp, Shadow Ball, Snarl, and Tots. This is a really interesting team here. Really interesting, because if it does get some of these final hits with that Grimnay, it can really spiral out of control. It can really get very, very strong, get some heavy hits in there. But if it's not getting activated, it's not getting those hits, it doesn't have to be that main carry. It can still do some decent stuff here. It can do the Snarl or the Special Defense, or special attack and it can get the taunt as well will o -Wisp just shutting down those attackers even more yeah so Maraidon and Whimsicott taking the lead here versus for Rigorap and Karaidon again we're looking at two different sun cores here where we're looking at sun core versus more of an actual electric terrain core with iron valley and that stellar draw or that quark drive is they have the real boom to cleanse that uh, electric terrain but there's no thing nothing to clear that sun away no, there's really not. And this is the first battle we are seeing actually without uh, Ice Rider Calyrex here. So this is a battle to see who takes, I guess, second place for today. So we'll see what happens. Crad and Maraid on both pretty used. Did not make our usage stats, but I think they're on both a few teams each. So we'll see what happens, what moves you make here. And this is make it or break it for both the players. So we're going to see some absolutely desperate plays come out here. Push to limits. They're going to break their limits here as they switch in the real boom, put out some fake out pressure, clear out that electric terrain, and stop the threat of that Maradon. But I don't know if you notice, guys, there's no terrestrialization on the Maradon. They're not going for the sweep right away. Oh, wait, oh, yes, they are. The, the, the swap comes out first. My bad. Yeah, swap comes out first, and there's the Terra into the electric Maradon. Again, this is a Maradon we are seeing actually without a choice item, so it is free to choose whatever moves they would like, and actually going with Dragon Pulse, which is which is interesting. You don't normally see Whimsicott oh. going with Protect turn one. This is a discharge for sure if Whimsicott's protecting. Oh no, Volt Switch! Keep things very dynamic here. It's Volt going Switch on the into the graph, getting it down to about half HP. Yeah, without that electric drain, it cannot ensure the one hit knockout there. <laughs> Now, what do you swap into, though? We don't know what Archdeep has in his back pocket. I don't know what's going to be. There could be the Spectriar, but what do you switch into against this matchup? Because Spectriar could be doing too much. It's going to be Lander shutting down that attack on the Reelaboom. Now, both of them have the... Oh, the Trick Room gets set up. Interesting, interesting. It's interesting to go for Trick Room here, I think, but I think a lot of... Uh, Braden's Pokemon here are actually a lot slower than the Maridon, for example. I think Coridon is a bit slower, even though they're pretty equal. So, that's an interesting play, though, to run Trick Room without a Trick Room Sweeper. Yeah, it's a very interesting play, indeed. And now, it looks like the battle is going to commence here. Helping Hand on this Arela Boom. I think we're seeing a Helping Hand Grassy Glide, is my guess, or a Helping Hand Wood Hammer. There's the Wood Hammer. Should be a no. It's no, not a knockout. Lives. Very close though. U turn. There's the U turn. A ton of damage to Rillaboom, and we're probably going to see Maradon take back the field here. 
Definitely. You want to get that terrain back out. It's going to force the switch on the reload boom. Cause even if it's low, you want to have that in the back pocket because you don't want that Terra Electric uh, <laughs> monster to be on the field to set up. Yeah, what's important to know here is this Real Boom actually is not running U-turn. This Real Boom is instead running high horsepower, so that puts a lot of pressure on Maridon. We are seeing the Iron Valiant take the stage here. Does not have Quark Drive enabled yet. There's the Moon Blast. Frigraph taking a little bit of chip damage, forcing it into its Citrus Berry. What's really interesting is to see Citrus Berry be run on these different Pokemon. We have with Ice Rider and Shadow Rider both running around, activating that Unnerve. That's gonna. That's actually gonna make berries kind of useless. So I'm shocked we are still seeing berries. Exactly, but Brayden is gonna be operating very comfortably inside of this trick room as Archdeep's team is just so fast. This Iron Valiant has so much speed here. It's gonna be outspeeding everything on the board. But this, of course, in trick room, that's not exactly what you want. Yeah, Landers comes back out, sets up that intimidate. There's the hyper void. Wow. Landers lives. It's gonna die. No, Iron Valiant takes the wood hammer, and Iron Valiant goes down. Even at minus two, it's a knockout. Yeah, I am shocked. Iron Valiant, not the most defensive Pokemon, but I'm shocked that was enough to kill. Iron Valiant never really got that Quark Drive enabled, so it couldn't really boost any of its stats. Really got a chance there. Didn't even get the move because of the Trick Room. Right on, takes back the field here. I don't know how many turns of Trick Room we have left, but really that Rillaboom is probably not going to do a ton of damage at minus two. About the switch, exactly. cried on. No, we are switching back to Chien Pao. And the Hyper Voice, probably going to finish off Landris unless it can protect. I do not know if it has. It does not. Landris is going to take this attack to the face. Chien Pao being committed now. The defenses are even lower here. Let's see. Landris getting swapped out, though, at the last second. They want to keep it for one last intimidate. Sorry, with the Wimscott instead. Going to keep him up. I can take this hit. Hyper Voice, Hyper Voice really not doing a ton of damage. There's the Dragon Pulse actually into the Chien Pao. Chien Pao hangs on because of it. Sash. Yeah, it's still hanging on there. Doing a really good job at keeping things nice and competitive. But honestly, I don't, I have no idea how this next one's gonna shake up. This Chien Pao could, if it's slower, take out this Maradon potentially. But if the Maradon can somehow get a move in here, it's gonna yeah. be absolutely lethal. Speed is gonna be a big factor here. If Chien Pao is the fastest, it does not want to be in Trick Room. Helping hand to the to the Chien Pao. Really committing to Chien Pao. Chien Pao got Sucker Punch. Does not knock out Maridon. on right on lives. There's the Moon Blast. Goodbye, Chien Pao. Man, I maybe would have even liked to see an Ice Spinner there because you could at least clear the train, but I guess Maybe if Trick Room's not up here, the speed differential is just too much. There's Dragon Balls. Frigorath lives on 16. Sunlight goes down. Oh, there Twisted it is. Dimensions go down. Rillaboom would take back the field. Oh, it was going to go last. Yeah, Sucker Punch was the right play there. Yeah, I think Sucker Punch was the correct move here. Yeah, Grassy Surge is out, unleashed, and on the prowl. No more electric terrain here for anybody. Now, Grassy Glide probably going to finish off Maridon unless it switches and sacrifices something else. But I don't know what you do to block this Grassy Glide coming in. Yeah, Brayden, though, looking so good. He still has, like, a full health Karada in his back pocket if he needs it. Yeah, he's in a really good position here. Here's the Grassy Glide. Say goodbye, Maridon. Maridon falls. Now you only have one more Pokemon remaining aside from this Whimsky. It's going to be that Landorus Theory. And sure, you're going to get the attack it. Minus on that Karadon next turn, but is that enough to ensure your victory? Yeah, we'll have to see here. It's a really close battle. Hyper Voice doesn't take out Whimsicott. Whimsicott healing back a little bit of health thanks to that grassy terrain there. Here comes Karadon. It is Karadon versus who is left. I think it's just a very weak land OT. There's the Karadon setting up the sun once again. It even enhance those fire moves on its roster if it needs it, but you know it's just we go for these collision courses. Oh, this is a clear amulet Karidon. These are some very different teams. I was not expecting clear amulet Karidon. I think it will live whatever comes out. We'll have to see what happens. Terra still not being used by Brayden. Brayden not really needing to use Terra. There's the Tailwind. Yeah, really just powering up Landorus to try and finish something off. There's the Rock Slide. 
Okay, so the free grab goes down, doesn't do anything to Karadon. I think he was predicting that Karadon would tear a fire there. It did not. Oh, it oh, flinched! You buy yourself a little bit more time left on the field. The grass turn gonna heal you up just that much more. And now time is ticking. You have one or more rock slide in here. If you can keep procking the flinch, you might be able to squeak out a win. He has to make the read here. He's gonna collision course into the Landorus and Terra. It's a risky Terra for not enhancing your your move as well. Yeah, it is a very risky Terra here. Nice weak. To if he goes slide. for rock slide again, I mean, you have to Terra here. You have to remove that moon blast threat. He got hit by moon blast. That'd be four times super effective, and that'd do a ton of damage. There's the moon blast. Yep. Not doing a ton. Thanks to that Terra. There's Most the stopping stop tantrum. Wow! It loses 20 HP. Collision course is set, and there it goes. But with the tailwind. The Tailwind will probably win out the game for Archdeep. Well, here's the question. You still have Grassy Terrain up. You can protect for one turn, heal up a little bit. And Good enough to live the Moon Blast. You got two turns, you got to 40 HP. He is gonna protect. Yeah, let's see it. This is absolutely intense. Especially Terra Fire. This is gonna be a, fl a Flare Blitz for sure heading this way. A one shot KO guaranteed on this Wimscott. Has to try and take it down before it gets taken down itself. Go yeah, for the Wimscott protect. Actually not having Focus Sash. There's the Moon Blast into the Protect. Wimscott is actually running the Electric Seed, which I don't think ever activated. These are some very interesting sets by Archdeep, something we haven't seen, but making this battle extremely fun to watch. Exactly. Does he go for the double protect? No, he's going to go for the Flare Blitz. He's confident he can live a Moon Blast, but if a crit comes through, I think that might spell yeah. the end. Oh, Wimscott. protect! Why is Wimscott protect? Because it has, it's regenerating even more health, but yeah, it doesn't need to tank a hit, is the thing. No, it needs to be dishing out the damage. Before I'm shocked. this Tailwind. Wasting tail and wasting grassy train. Let him ride on. Get back up to 50 HP. I think ride on. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think ride on is out of kill range here. Yeah, that was a bit of a too patient of a play on the side of our steep. Yeah, I think flare blitz definitely gets the knockout. Don't have focus sash. You don't have anything. Whimscott using protect again. I'm not sure for what. Trying and to there's outlast the, flare the PP blitz. of Flare Blitz, perhaps, but no, I think he has enough for days, and that's going to be it. Wow, Brayden coming back from the brink. It looked very bleak for both players, but Brayden held strong and took this one by storm. Yeah, what a comeback there. We'll have to see what Archdeep can do to get himself in the right position. He, the issue is he didn't get Electric Train. His whole team is based around getting Electric Train set up and abusing it. Never got electric train set up in time, so I'll have to see what he can do to change change that going forward. They did get it set up, but the Reelaboom is just so strong, and he didn't have anything to decisively shut down that Reelaboom. He doesn't have a fire type, doesn't have an ice type, doesn't have even a bug type to decisively take that Reelaboom down. Yeah, well, really have to see what changes they can make as we go into the second battle here, and if we can get this extended to it, our third best of three of the day. That'd our be... fourth best of three of the day. Yeah. A lot of best of three say it's been a good day for some battles. It's been an amazing day for battles so far. And now, I don't, yeah, I think it might go that far. But I think it's just tough with the Maridon, right? You can't rely on it using that electric terrain. It's just too easy to cleanse with just a single Rillaboom swap. And especially with this team in particular, Rillaboom isn't even as bad as it could be. It's rocking the, well, the high horsepower is pretty bad. Yeah, but the high horsepower is actually a great counter to Maraidon on here. I was gonna say, it could pick up a U-turn in one of those slots if it didn't want Grassy Glider U-turn. It could pick up U-turn in one of those slots and then it's even more mobile and even more annoying to get rid of that grassy terrain. Yeah, I think I think it's interesting to not have U-turn, but I think you never want to drop Grassy no. Glide. It's so offensive and so powerful, but that's the question. Do you run Stomping Tantrum or do you drop U-Turn? That's the question that these players have been dealing with for most of the week. Rillaboom is sort of a niche pick this week. Actually, no, Rillaboom has been a great pick this week. Rillaboom today actually seeing the most play it's seen all week. We are seeing Rillaboom on almost 30% of teams. So people are really starting to lean towards Rillaboom to counter Maridon. <coughs> yeah, after it wins twice, you need to go for those counters. You need to go for those outs. And Rillaboom is the best terrain setter, right? And Didi just doesn't have that offensive power to shut 
down the Maridon. Meanwhile, you have the high horsepower on the side of uh, Rillaboom. So it's an absolutely amazing pick. Spectre now being unleashed. This is an interesting pick that I'm excited we get to see. Yeah, Spectre is a really interesting Pokemon. I think this is the first time maybe we've seen Spectre all weekend. Don't see Spectre very commonly. You really see it mainly in that Shadow Horse form, but it's decided it's going to be just the Spectre today. Yeah, that's a fun way to skirt around that restriction. It's not restricted. It's down to roam free as a wild stallion here in this battle. Let's see how this one goes, though. It has a lot of interesting moves at its disposal. It does not have some of the more powerful moves, though, that the Cal Calyrex has. Yeah, and I think a lot of our players, I'm looking at some use stats here, a lot of our players have actually teched against Maridon teams. We are seeing a rise in Rillabooms, a, uh, a massive decrease in the existence of Pelippers, and the massive decrease in, the in, in Urshifu Rapid Strike. So a lot of players are starting to tech against Maridon. Here comes the collision course into the Maridon. How much does it do? Wow. Almost picks up the knockout. Wow. Almost gets it, but not quite the Willow F being committed to the Rillaboom. Interesting. That seems to be the one that's bothering them a little bit more. You don't want to have that high horsepower threatening your ride on. Yeah, I think it's a safer play because if they Terra on the... I think they were looking actually for the Terra probably on the Maridon and didn't want to hit the Terra and hit the Willow Wisp and do nothing. So they targeted the Karai or they targeted the Rillaboom there with the Willow Wisp instead of it being negated by the burn, by the fire typing. Exactly. Great play. I'm seeing the Chien Pao be swapped in here. Grassy Glide looking to take out this Maridon. Yeah, it's interesting to always... I wonder if we'll see the Dragon Pulse from Maridon or if we'll stick with Electro Drift. That's the benefit of it being in the Covert Cloak, actually, is it has the mobility to switch around. It this has that ruined. ability. Maridon leaving the field as well. Out comes Lando T. Is now on the loose attack, falling both sides. Grassy Glide, what a good read. Doesn't do much. And the Will O Wisp actually into the Chien Pao as well. Everything is getting burned. You get a burn. You get a burn. <laughs> you get a burn. Everything's getting burned. Now we're seeing the value of the Spectre by quite a lot. It's kind of being ignored by, uh, by Brayden now. Nothing has come out to quite, kind of squash it in its place. I guess it's going to be the Sucker Punch on this uh, Chen Pao, but as long as he doesn't use an attacking move when his Chen Pao's out, he's not going to be taken down. Yeah, actually going for the going for the Ice Spinner here. He's going to do a lot of damage to Landris. We'll have to see if Landris stays in or if he decides he's going to book it again. But really, at a burn and minus one attack, I don't think that's enough to kill Landris. I got a factor in Sword of Ruin, though. Those things, that thing's always spices things up, so it's a possibility. Here's the Terra. Here's the Terra. Let's see it. On to On the, the Landorus. Landorus. We're going to a Terra flying Landorus. Oh. So it'll still be weak to Ice Spinner, but it will just be regular effective, or just be super effective instead of quad super effective. Yeah. There's the Ice Spinner. It should potentially Ooh, it lives Still it. does a lot. Still does over a quarter. Grassy Terrain disappears, so Grassy Glide no longer effective. Here's the Shadow Ball. It is, yeah, there's Sucker Punch, it's clear. Doesn't not do very effective, much. not a ton of damage, oh. but it lowers the special defense. That's big. U-turn takes out Chien Pao. Beautiful play by Arshdeep here. Yeah, really great play. And using that Flying Terror actually defensively there to resist the, the quad super effective Ice Spinner and just make it super effective. Super effective. And now, Maridon, gonna cleanse that grassy terrain and set up the electric terrain. Yeah, you're getting in a board state here where electric, where you can't remove terrains. Here's the wood hammer. Spectre wow. eats it up. Yeah, he's ready for it, and that burn is doing so much work here against all these physical attackers. Yeah. We actually see Ogre Pond as the fourth Pokemon for. Braden here. Crydon will take the stage one more time. Let's see it. There he is. One more time. Using that so the question is, do you Terra here, or do you want to save your Terra for that Ogre Pond in the back? Exactly. Do you want to try and save the attack? Because Terra, Ogre Pond, and Sun might as well be another restricted legendary at this point. Yeah, a very strong Pokemon. 
Brydon's actually going to switch out here and try to save that electric terrain. In comes Whimsicott one more time. Whimsicott filling out his team. Getting that electric seed so it will gain a defense boost. Everloom going to be drawn back out. There goes Ogre Pawn to the field. This is looking to be very, very interesting. As Moldbreaker goes for the protect on the Coridon. Let's see what flink comes its way. Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball. It's blocked. Beautiful play. Yeah, so really, the issue is here is that if they, they are going to tear a fire, really shut down that Moonblast and make Whimsicott really just ineffective for the rest of this battle. They're really thinking about it. Here's the Terra Fire Flare Blitz into the Spectriere. <laughs> An Ivy Cudgel into the Whimsicott is, I would almost assure, enough to knock out Whimsicott. It does have a Focus Sash, though, so unless it's at, if it's not at full HP. No, Whimsicott does not have Focus Sash. Oh, you're right. Whimsicott it's right has Electric seed. seed. It does have the Defense Boost, though. I'm just not sure if that is enough. Whimsicott is not known to be the most oh, offensive Pokemon. Oh, they Intimidate, though. That could be something that saves it. It might be relying on the Ivy Cudgel crit. That is true. Ivy Cudgel does have a heightened crit chance, so it is possible to crit. There's the Terra Fire on the Moridon, removing its Dragon Weakness, removing its Fairy Weakness. Tailwind goes up. Let's see, Tailwind goes up. There's Flare the Flare Blitz. Blitz. Does Flare Blitz kill? It does, Landorus goes down. Beautiful Flare Blitz there in the sun. It does so much damage, and now losing that ground coverage is going to be falling to anything that's not that falling to those fire attacks. Now, Ivy Cudgel comes through, not a crit, but still crit. doing so much damage. Yeah, Sunlight actually goes down here, so I wonder if Moridon will stay in or will it switch out to reset up Sun? That is the question I'm not positive about. Here comes Moridon. Electric Train will stay up. Exactly. It is, is. going to switch out to the Rillaboom. It wants Sun back in its position. Yeah, it wants it back badly here. Ivy Kudgel still threatening quite a bit. You could even focus in on this Maradon, try and take out the big main DPS here. Now this Coridon has a choice to make. It has no spread moves, unlike the Maradon, so it has to pick a single target here. Yeah, I think what Brayden is predicting here is we are going to see the Maride on Terra, so we'll lose that Dragon Typing and be wide open it to can't. an Ivy Cudgel. It cannot Terra. Oh, it can't Terra? No, oh, because right. we Terra saw the flying. flying, yeah. Right, you're right, you're right, you're right. So they're covering the electric terrain so it doesn't get a single boost at all. And now they're looking to close things out right here. Real boom, out here. Fake take tears. Hit. Victor is going to go over to Ogre Pond. Lowers the special defense, which is really interesting. Not doing a lot with that bolt switch. It does have the switch out as the horse is still alive. Yep, Spectria are going to do some work here. It needs to land some of these support moves. Ivy, Ivy Cudgel. It, it does not knock out. Spectria lives. And it has Eats a berry. It's berry. It's lunchtime. Lunching and munching takes down the Citra Berry and the Grass Drain. The Spectra pretty much reversed that entire hit right there. Yeah, honestly, with all that healing. Rillaboom being chipped away by this burn. Sure, it may not seem like a lot now, but every amount of damage matters here with how close this game is looking to be. Yeah, only a few possible options available to have. Yep, his options are narrowing. It's coming to a point here. This Wimscott really not getting a lot of value here. Sure, you got the special defense drop, but other than that, it's not enhancing your team too much. Crydon returns to the field. Sunlight goes back up. Fake tears one more time, really trying to lower the special defense, but it's got the clear amulet. Shadow Ball goes in. Ogre Pond, wow, Ogre that's lives. a lot of damage. So, Ivy Cudgel should take out the Wimscott, and now it is down to the last two on Archdeep's side. And I believe the Rillaboom is still up, so this Electric Durin could get cleansed by Brayden. Yeah, Rillaboom is still up, still alive. 
It'll be an intense final battle here. There Again, is. both these players, I believe, are two and two. So the winner of this will have a chance to make it into Top Gun. Loser is eliminated. Exactly. There's a lot on the line here. Everyone going for those coveted points. And now this Ogre Pawn is going to use a follow me, open up this Coridon for one single strong strike. Let's see how this goes. Shadow There's ball. the Shadow Ball into the Ogre Pawn. And moving first is a bad move for Ogre Pawn. It wanted to tank the hit from Maridon, because that's going to be the stronger hit. Yeah, Maridon's going to do a lot more damage here. Oh. There's the Grim Day, so special attack buff. Dragon Pulse from Maridon. Crydon oh, lives up four. four! Collision course is now set. Will this be able to take out the Maridon? It Maridon is! goes down. And now it's down to Landorus and Spectrier with a special attack boost, though. No, this I think Landorus is out. Oh, you might be correct. I think it's just Spectrier left. I think you are correct there, Eric. So it is a, a burned Rillaboom versus a Spectrier. A Spectrier is faster than Crydon. Crydon could protect here, maybe stall out a turret. It's just going to full send. Does not have it, that spread move, does not have that astral glide, or the astral, <laughs> that astral move there. So now. There's the Flare Blitz. Crydon is faster. First. This should spell the end right here, and it, and is. it is. And wow, congrats to Brayden Rubitel for winning out the set. And Arshdeeve, thank you for bringing such an interesting team to the table. Yeah, so Brayden will move to three and two. He'll have a chance to make top cut depending on his opponent's win rate. So we will have to see what happens. I am not sure. But whatever happens, it will be an exciting finals. I'm sure there will be quite a few ice horses running around. We may see Corrado now in the top, make it to top eight. It'll be an interesting match. Yeah, it definitely will be. And now both players having just a great set. Going to move on handshakes all around. That's what it's all about. And congrats to Brayden for winning the set. Yeah. This is, that ends our final Swiss rounds, actually, exactly. for the weekend. Yeah. We have had 20, 19 rounds of Swiss this whole weekend. It's been <laughs> intense battles the whole time. Folks, Pokemon events will continue here at St. Clair for the for the future, so be sure to keep an eye on social media for the announcement of the next event. Exactly, and wow, what an amazing Swiss rounds it has been. We've seen so much variety in teams, so many good players here and there and everywhere, but overall, we can tell that we're now we're getting down to the best of the best. All the experience of all four days have has led up to this. This is the moment where we're seeing the most refined Pokemon we've seen in a long while. Everyone going for those long coveted championship points. Everyone wants to go to the Worlds and we will see who may be getting those points after a quick break. So join us very soon for the Top Cut.
And we are here in the top cut, a long round day of a Swiss, but now we're here refined to the best of the best. And once again, it's me, Matthias Mothais, joined by Erica King Levchuk, and we have a new guest here. Here it's a familiar face, though. It's Daniil Bederson McGee. What's up, everybody? I was cooped up in the back earlier today. Uh, in fact, I was kind of like doing even mental casting. It's just innate. <laughs> it's just part of my brain structure at this point. But for the top cut here, while we're going to get into this intense Pokemon action. Three's a crowd, they say. Let's make it really crowded here <laughs> uh, while we're getting to the final day of the final tournament here, and we're getting to the final phase. So, gentlemen, I'm very excited to see what's going to be going on. And some of the battles that we had earlier were already living up to really some really exciting moments i believe we saw a match where like a pokemon lived on like one health yeah the three yeah. hp one hp is very common so far it's it's, just... been, it's been an intense day and all of our competitors have played insanely well and we have to talk about the mvp calyrex ice rider is on yeah is in all four of our final matchups today incredible Exactly, yes. But, you know, we ha we haven't had one win since that first day. So we've seen it been consistently played. It's always, always been in the high play rates, but it has struggled to close out to the end after people have learned to counter it out. We just have to see if the counter... The counter counter picks are correct. But enough about the game as a whole. Let's introduce our game here that we're about to see. It's going to be Connor Heron versus Patrick Chang, and it's going to be an amazing match. The restricteds are going to be Terrapagos, and it's going to be going up against, like we said, that Ice Rider. Yeah, Connor here is playing our Terrapagos team. Connor, one of our locals here in Windsor. He is running the Terrapagos with that Terra Star Storm, Hyper Beam, Earth Power, Sleep Talk. We've got Amoongus, we've got the Chi Yu set, we've got Rillaboom, we've got Fluttermane, and we've got Tornadus Incarnate making an appearance once again here. Yeah, Tornadus Incarnate, a very strong choice. The Bleak Wind Storms, very, very strong, good Tailwind setter. But going up against the Ice Rider, you're going to be weak to ice. You're going to have to try and use that Terra Steel if you want to keep that preservation up. Yeah, and what I'm noticing about Patrick's team as well, he has Chi Yu, so it's got some decent coverage against, you know, opposing Calyrex Ices, but I don't think he's going to have too much to worry about on the side of, you know, uh, Connor's team. No Calyrex, like we mentioned. It's going to be a Terrapagos. So when it comes to heavy hitters against, you know, uh, against Connor's restricted Pokemon, you don't really have that many besides the Urshifu with the close combat. So we're going to be have to see how he's going to try to utilize some of his super effective moves here in this matchup. As we get started, we're going to see the Fluttermane and Chiyu, this is probably one of the scariest leads for any Pokemon that has low special defense because these Pokemon will absolutely shred through any Pokemon's defensive typings. Yeah, this is a very offensive line we're seeing here. And we're going up one of the fa the third time we're seeing this combo in the Smeargle Calyrex Ice. It's a very dominant combo today and we've seen it quite a few times. So we'll see how it plays out here. Connor. Oh, very... yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go. Go, go, go. I was going to say, with no Gothitelle, the Taunt Shadow Tag, this is going to be lethal. Yeah, Gothitelle was a big stopper to Smeargirl earlier in the day, and now we're seeing it without it going up against, again, that Fluttermane has been a niche pick this weekend, but Fluttermane dominated the format for so long, so it's still a very scary Pokemon. I gotta say that earlier play with the uh, with the Smeargle getting taunted, just being stuck there, the Shadow <laughs> Tag. Again, this just shows all the different ways a Pokemon battle can really go. There's so many dimensions and layers, and the fact that it was still actually worse that it couldn't struggle is something that you have to consider too. The fact it was literally just an empty slot that couldn't be moved, but here to get things started off in this battle, we're gonna see Connor terrestrializing his, uh, or rather Patrick terrestrializing his uh, Calyrex with that fire typing. So that should help it a little bit when it comes to um, some of the other matchups going to be dealing with as well as resisting Chiyu's potential attack here. But Fluttermane using that Shadow Ball and Ooh. against the normal type, of course, is not really going to do too much, if anything at all. But Heat Wave with that fire terrestrialization is not going to be that scary to deal with. We get that Trick Room set and it looks to be the case that Patrick is in exactly the situation he wants to be in. I wonder if that was a guess of a terrestrialization on the Smeargle because otherwise that was a very risky play. I would have gone for maybe the solid dazzling gleam that you usually see on a floater main. Yeah, I mean... Man, the, the Smeargle is such an annoying Pokemon to deal with. You have to either worry about Fake Out, you have to worry about Spore, you have to worry about the Follow Me. I think it's totally safe to play that Follow Me, pull that Shadow Ball away, and just try and hit it. Dazzling Gleam, hard choice. I mean, Calyrex, what have we never seen in Calyrex Terra just turn one? The Ice Typing is more of a detriment than it is a benefit. So getting rid of its Ice Typing, but keeping the Stab, Icicle Spear, or Glacial Spear has been so important to it. 
Exactly. He's gonna get protected out for that. She is gonna take a hit. It's not super effective. He's still gonna take it down to half. Yeah, that's again. There's the deck rate. We are getting a plus two. It is gonna start getting real dangerous out here as the Calyrex keeps munching up those desserts. This is where you have to start considering some of your options. If you are Connor, do you try to go for a pivot? Do you sacrifice the Pokemon that you have on the field right now? Can you afford to go without your Chiyu or your Fluttermane? I feel like Fluttermane might have kind of run its course in terms of uh, usefulness, but as I say that out loud, I realize that's probably not actually true because outside of Fluttermane, does he really have any instant heavy hitters? It's already spent the boost energy, sure, so it's not gonna have that guaranteed speed boost, but it's still got a lot of life left in it, guys. Well, yeah? I think he's waiting to try and just clear the board as much as possible and have that last baton pass anchor there in tow, that Terrapagos, to try and sweep the rest of the team. He needs to clear this Calyrex because there's no wide guard user on the side of Patrick. Oh, that's true. He wants to just try to whittle them down as much as possible, potentially, and yeah. come in and try to sweep with the Terrapagos. You almost want to keep Chiyu alive for Terrapagos. This Terrapagos we've been seeing all this week has been just hitting under the damage numbers they would like. So we really need to see it hit hard. And Fluttermane is going to fall there. Really, that defense out of Fluttermane being like a 35 is not going to live a Glacial Lance in any circumstance, especially not a plus two. And now, now you, plus three. What you really want to do now is just try to stall out that Trick Room uh, because that's what really is going to be the main hindrance to your plan here if you are Connor. I'm pretty sure Ter uh, Terrapagos typically outspeeds the uh, Calyrex. Not many things are slower than that. So yeah. you want to just try to go as slow as possible and then you can really start putting the pressure on. Not many things are slower than than it, but one Pokemon that is slower than it is Amoongus here. Mm -hmm. So I would, wouldn't be shocked if we see a follow me from Smeargle this turn. I'm shocked he's going for the Dark Pulse. Going for the Protect on Amoongus, that is an interesting move. Maybe trying to bait out that follow me. He could be blocking the Spore, um, but he, yeah, he's gonna go for the follow me, so he's just gonna protect with the Amoongus. Um, that's gonna protect it from the next Glacial Lens that's gonna come through, but I think he might be losing your Chiyu to this one. Uh, it's pretty low. Again, it resists the fire typing, but with those boosts, uh, it's probably gonna go down here, and then you're gonna be using your, uh, your Terrapagos without that extra special defense reduction. And now this Calyrex is at max power here with that last chilling Nay. And it's going to be a major uphill battle going forward. You're going to have to bank on maybe this Spore hitting, maybe doing something with this Amoongus. I think that's why he wants to protect. He wants it there to be the supporter of this Terrapagos. Yeah, it would be a different story if Terrapagos had protect here. I think we are running low on Trick Room terms. I think this is either a last or a second last Trick Room turn. So Connor needs to find a way to bait it out. But right now, I don't know if it can. I think yeah. Connor is banking on Terrapagos' ability here to tank that's one lance. But that's the thing that's so scary. It's max boosted. I don't know if it really can. Probably, it might not get one shot, but it would be in a very low range to the point where, of course, you have your Terrapagos ready to go. I think Trickle has got one turn left, but can you survive the next two Pokemon that are coming out full HP? I say plus four. Smeargle goes to sleep here. There you go, you remove the follow me potential here, but let's see what happens. Here's the Glacial Lance. Terra Shell will block it, making it not very effective. It'll be enough to tank it, let's see. It is no, not. not! Wow, and a big sweep from Patrick Chang, taking the first game and, and taking crit. the crit on the Amoongus to boot. The crit really feels unnecessary, but sure, why not at this point? Yeah. I mean, plus six, what's living a plus six Icicle Spear? Not many things, and not even a not very effective typing on, again, a respectably defensively uh, favored Pokemon. Terrapagos is no pushover when it comes to resist, especially with that Terra Shell, but again, plus six. <laughs> Six, Glacier Lance. There's what, a what limit. To yeah. do, right? <laughs> it's not it's not like it's uh, immune to damage. It just reduces it significantly. Yeah, it's not a mimic you with that nullification ability. A it match. still has to take the hit. Yeah, oh, Tropicos is a is a is a really good defensive Pokemon on its own. I mean some really high defense stats, but again, like there's not nothing high enough that can block that. Exactly, except for Protect, you know, nothing can eat that hit, really. Except for, mm -hmm. Except for Mimikyu. So maybe yes. Mimikyu is going to be I've been play. saying, like, Mimikyu, Meta. I love that Pokemon. Definitely one of my all-time <laughs> favorites. You know, me and my ghost types, all right, we, we walk around with those. But Mimikyu, honestly, in VGC format, I think it definitely has a place. It takes a lot of exploration. I wouldn't be surprised if teams really, over, especially over this break, try to maybe just take some time to experiment a lot more with this format, see what they can get away with, get away with working with. But if we do see Mimikyu... 
I would be kind of surprised, but I can't be. I can't say I would be totally surprised. I yeah. think it definitely has its place. I think the issue Mimikyu comes into is that disguise ability really, in a doubles format, leaves it so vulnerable. As much as disguise is a great ability, if you double target it, Mimikyu is going to go down instantly. Exactly. It's not the single threat that it normally that it can be. But the fortunate thing is, with this meta, with all these like main DPSs here, it's usually only one thing swinging at you. We rarely see these double swings unless it's like a Karidon team. And having your Mimikyu there to absorb two hits from your main DPS Pokemon. Well, it does have pretty threatening moves. I feel like if Thunder Wave becomes relevant again, we might see Mimikyu. Yeah, but we are seeing the change here for Connor. We are seeing Tornadus take the field with Chiyu. Now, Tornadus is a choice. Again, Tornadus weak to those Icicle Lands, so will we see a Terra early and take that Terra away from Terrapagos? Be the first one, Dark Pulse, onto the Calyrex, potentially. Maybe trying to go for that Heat Wave once again. You gotta try to assume, at the very least, he has no reason not to Terrify her. I don't think he has a lot of important Terrors on his other Pokemon that he has to worry about, so might as well protect your Calyrex. Meanwhile, yeah. Connor needs that Terror there. With no Wide Guard on the team, that puts the value to Rapagos up to the max. He needs that for the late game. Yeah, here goes the Terror Ghost on the Chiyu, maybe trying to block that Fake Out. We'll see if he gets the call right here. If he gets his recorrect, that'll be a massive read. That Terra, Terra going onto the Chiyu. Um, it would be huge, but actually, it's going to see that Smeargle get switched out entirely. Furograph is going to be the play. This Pokemon also blocks Fake Out. Thankfully, there are no Fake Outs on Connor's side of the field at the moment, but it's something you definitely have to consider when it comes to priority moves. Terra's going to come out most likely onto that Calyrex, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, no, well, we're going to see it first on the Chiyu. It's going to be the Ghost Typing again to block that Fake Out that never ended up coming out, but at the very least, you know. It's got purple colors to it now. Who doesn't love purple? Yeah, it is a very defensive Terra. We are going to see the Terra fire here. I'm really not surprised. Really, Calyrex has Terra, and I don't think we we haven't seen a Terra in any battle today. I think it's Terra every match. The first turn, it Terra's every single time. You don't want that Ice Week. This in Psyche, also a vulnerable type with Incineroar and Chi Yu being in the mix. There's a Taunt. Block the is. Taunt because of Prankster. That is why you switch to the Frigorath. There's the Heat Wave. What a great read by Patrick. Trick Room goes up. Yeah, that prankster, that prankster blocked by Armitail, absolutely insane. Yeah. The one benefit going into this match, though, is it did not get buffed by that Smeargle. It is not set up completely just yet. It's going to have to go through two lances before it gets those nays going. Yeah. We will see him, Connor, protect the Tornadus here. Which really you have to do, you can't lose both Pokemon here. Making the double protect here actually, protecting both Pokemon, really going to stall out these turns of Trick Room, which is a great move. What makes this even harder to consider is the fact that it's not just this, uh, this Calyrex that you have to worry about. There's still at least one other Pokemon that uh, Patrick hasn't revealed yet. It could even be the Ursaluna, which is also very capable of one-shotting most Pokemon. Yeah, if Ursaluna is in the back here, that's going to be a world of trouble. We're seeing that foul play hit into that protect. That is very scary for the Chiyu there, as it now has opened itself up to a darkness weakness. Uh, it's a week to dark and now. It's, it's a lot on the table, so let's see a switch come in here. You don't want to get hit by that foul play. Gonna switch in the Terrapagos, potentially. I feel like you're kind of playing your hand a little bit too much there. It would be unexpected, but then you do also lose that element of control because you wouldn't have that Terra Shell anymore, most likely. So he's gonna opt to switch out the Chi. You bring up the Moon. It's a little bit more of a safer play. Uh, right now, seems to be a little bit more setup focused. Calyrex is gonna go for the Glacial Lance. You're gonna lose your Tornadus. It's just oh, Tornadus goes down. Amoongus lives yeah. on 25, just barely holding on, preventing the double boost but not a great position for Amoongus. It is slower, so maybe it can get a score off, but it's gonna fall to oh. foul play. Yeah, the Amoongus falls over and gets hurt by the Rocky Helmet, so maybe a little bit of damage there, but now I think Connor is playing around this pairing. He wants the Beads of Ruin with yeah, this Terrapagos. Yeah, that's... the issue is he doesn't have that spread move on Terrapagos now that he's committed oh, to Terrapagosing or to tearing the Chiyu instead of the Terrapagos. So we'll have to see if he can pull it out out of his back pocket. We see the Terra shift. Really weird that they gave it that they gave it a tiny Pokemon version. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting that uh, Terra onto the Chiyu because yeah, without without the Terrapagos, you kind of lose out on a large part of your strategy. I guess you still reduce the special defense for your own Heat Wave on the Chiyu, but then you are also losing the stab on it too. So it's a double-edged yeah, sword. Here's the Glacial Lance coming out, the Terra Shell blocking it. It should live this one attack. Yeah, it's up two chilling days though. And wow, Chiyu, Chiyu lives on one thanks to Focus Sash. 
but will it fall to Frigoraf here? It does. Yeah, it's definitely going to fall down, and that's the problem with Terra Ghost. He used to be such a good defensive type, but with Shadow Rider in the play now, and with the weaknesses of uh, both riders being psychic, exactly. you are there's so much dark coverage. Yeah, there's, yeah, so there's a lot coverage. of, and especially foul play has been so effective on Calyrex using its using its own attack set against it when it gets so buff that that foul plays are just they're everywhere now. We saw Gothitelle, we saw seen all these Pokemon, and there's the close combat. Going on to the semifinals will be Patrick. It's crit. <laughs> to end crit just once for, again. Just for that extra insult to injury. A little touch there at the end there. Yeah, Patrick just demonstrating what a Pokemon battle when everything goes right for you looks like. Uh, really not a lot of uh, not a lot of for him to be worried about in those games. Felt like he was really under control for most of it, and kind of just played his game plan, played it well. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, Connor just had a lot of issues to deal with in that set that he wasn't able to really recover fast enough to make something work. So, yeah, Patrick taking this first game here, 2-0. Yeah, congratulations to Connor on making it to top cut today. Mm -hmm. Sad to see him go out, and we lose to Rapagos, and we have one more Ice Rider make it to finals. It really is the battle of Ice Rider today. People have been seeing Maridon, so they went, well, how do I counter Maridon? I guess I just play Ice, I just play uh, Ice Rider even more. And that's really been the tech today. We've seen all of the Pokemon weak to, uh, weak to Maridon just fall drastically off the cliff. And all these Pokemon that are strong against it rise right up to the top today. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little rock, paper, scissors we have going on in the meta currently. But I think, I don't know, we don't know what's going on in that second bracket. It could be a duel of Ice Riders happening, but it could also not be the case. Like No, we know there's, I know there's still a Maridon in one match, there's a Coridon in another match. And I think our final Pokemon is, is the Ghost Horse himself. Shadow Rider. So we'll have to see which Pokemon make it into the second round, or do we just have four horse ice horses in the fi in our semifinals? <laughs> yeah, well, we will see if the four horsemen will show up here in the next little while. But before we see that, we're going to throw it to a quick little break, and we'll be right back with the next game.
And after an amazing uh, quarterfinals, we are here in the semifinals of the top cut. And, and now we are getting into the thick of it. We saw the Ice Rider team, and it looks like we're going to be seeing it again. But we do have an interesting team up there to match it. Yeah, we're going to be seeing Artan making his return against Rishi. And these two trainers, we've seen them today. We've seen them all throughout this weekend so far, and they've never failed to deliver an interesting match. But now, I believe this is as far as either of them have gotten in the tournament so far. Yeah, I think on the so. line. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're correct here. Let's take a look. We did see Rishi earlier. He's playing the Coridon, so we beat one of the four Ice Riders and took one of them out. He is running that Coridon Gothitelle team that we did see earlier. He did lose to an Ice Rider team earlier today, so we'll have to see how he can bounce back and defeat it this time. Again, that Gothitelle with that taunt being and that Shadow Tag being such a prevalent force against the rest of the teams here. Exactly. That shadow tag is going to have so much play around it. As just not even a single option. Even Terrid that could, would be able to switch out of shadow tag. So there's going to be a lot of mechanical play around that. And not to mention Coridon is always under threat. We've seen uh, threatening that uh, Calyrex Ice Rider. So we've been seeing it Terra fire every single time, every single turn. So you can know that that is the one Terra you can clear. You can get rid of it. And you only have to worry about that. And... Let's say you know that one's going to be fire because you've seen it every single time. You have that Ting Lu you can bring in there, which has Stomping Tantrum Fissure, which is another powerful ground-based combo that can shut down that those fire types. And you still have the Terra type Poison if you need to make it a little bit more defensively oriented. And that's the, actually the thing with this matchup. I know we've had our like back and forth throughout this week and trying to figure out who has the edge in this. I feel like the Coridon matchup, if you have a specific kind of team, it makes it a lot easier to handle those Calyrex, but that's not the lineup that we're seeing with Rishi. This is a more offensive type of Coridon, and hopefully we're going to be able to see it find some success as we discover who our leads are going to be. Rishi is going to, or uh, Artan is going to be sending out the Rillaboom and Gothitelle. Rishi is Smeargle and the Calyrex, both of these teams, I believe, running a Smeargle. Let's see. And we saw this in Game 3. This is probably the best opener uh, Grishi can throw out here because you threaten the Fake Out to stop the Trick Room. You also have the Taunt to stop anything that the Smeargle does. You can force it into a situation where it needs to swap out, but once again, can't swap out because of that Shadow Tag. And then once it's onto that first turn, it has to go for the second Fake Out, which is a cancel, and then you can once again taunt that Calyrex and prevent the, the setup once again. So yeah. it is a long delayed turn. Oh, the double Fake Out here. A crit! Oh, the crit! Oh my. So it's both finished. Pokemon not gonna be able to move, which means Rishi is gonna get a full turn of just that extra damage. That heal up though is really, just going to mean Calyrex couldn't move last turn. That's really all that changes here. So Smeargle starting with a bit of damage. Smeargle. Go for the Decorate. Yeah, I don't disagree. We just have to see where, if this taunt comes out and where it comes out onto. Something that's also very relevant with this Smeargle, we saw it earlier today. If it gets hit by this taunt, it's very devastating. It basically becomes a brick that can't really accomplish much. And this Gothitelle is running taunts. You gotta watch wow, that, that Smeargle goes down. That early crit mattered so much yeah, in this early that... knockout. Now the taunt goes over to oh. the Calyrex, preventing the Trick Room. And now Rishi is up so many turns here. That's yeah. what we call in the fighting community an option select, okay? When, it's <laughs> a, when an option, a choice just beats all the other options, you just go for it. That that taunt hits the Smeargle, great. If you knock out the Smeargle and it hits the Calyrex instead, great. You just press those two buttons, you press it on the same Pokemon, it doesn't matter, you win either way. Yeah, Artem made a really risky play there just by trying to force the, trying to still force the Trick Room through against the Gothitelle and he'll have to learn to adapt to play against that. I don't know if he's played against this Gothitelle team earlier today and now he's started to learn some of the pitfalls that he can fall into against Gothitelle. So we'll have to see how he can adapt going forward. Such a flexible Pokemon. It is very capable of pressuring a lot of different team types. And Shadow Tag, such a unique ability that really changes the dynamic of VGC a lot. Obviously, singles is known more as like the switching uh, format. But VGC, it can be just as important. And not being able to do it can have quite devastating impacts. We're going to see the Gothitelle leave freeing up these two Artan's Pokemon. But we're going to see the Rotom come out instead, threatening this Calyrex. 
we're gonna see the terrestrialization come out as well. Lily might be trying to buff up his Calyrex to make it a little bit safer. That's exactly what he's gonna be doing. This fire type terrestrialization now, this Rotom might not be in a very favorable position to do that. Yeah, Rishi's Rillaboom actually is running the U-turn instead of the high horsepower. So it doesn't have much to deal with the fire type Calyrex, really only doing about a quarter of its health there, and now get off the Glacial Lands and do a ton of damage. There's the Wicked Blow into the Rillaboom, wow. gets it down real low for the finish with Glacial Lance. Oh, so it's not running, uh, it's not running Sash, it's just survived that, incredible. Yeah, just survived that. It's running Miracle Seed actually to boost those grass type attacks. But Rillaboom goes down and we do see the Calyrex gets the plus one attack stat now. We'll get some healing thanks to that grassy terrain. Protect, you can get back almost up to full and pretend that Rillaboom didn't do anything. Yeah, and now he's bringing this Rotom again on his team, and I don't know if I love that choice, especially when the Calyrex is going to always be terra typing fire. You maybe want to bring in that Ting Lu. I know it's a bigger risk, but I don't know. You just don't have that offensive pressure, especially with a high horsepower. Yeah, I think Rotom's a great choice against the Terra Grass uh, variants of um, of Ice Rider we've seen, the Terra, the terra Water variants. But we are seeing, again, these just soul these soul Terra fire types in these top rounds. We do get the dark type Terra from Gothitelle. Yep, probably going for the foul play. I don't know if this knocks out at plus one. It's pretty low, maybe. It wow. will do a lot, but not enough to get the knockout. Thunderbolt, though, will pick up the kill. Finally Beautiful play by Rishi. Yeah. That dark type terrestrialization also helping just protect it from the wicked blow that would inevitably have come out um, against that Gothitelle. Uh, facing that down as a psychic type would be brutal, but at the very least, oh, I'm just gonna go to the Rotom instead. A crit, of course, thanks to that uh, secondary part of the move, gonna send Rotom out of the battle for now. But with Ursaluna being the last Pokemon next to this Urshifu, Coridon coming out now, you're out of your restricted. Now you have to face down your opponents. You have a normal type on the field. It, it is looking a little scary for you. I'm not sure what type of Urshifu or uh, Ursaluna we're gonna be seeing here. It's got life or no protection. Attacked. This this Ursaluna is as good as gone. Yeah, this Ursaluna is going to be in a lot of trouble. Again, no redirection because Smeargle went down so early. This might be a game one win for Rishi, but there have been some incredible comebacks later, and I don't think R10 is quite done yet. It's still a flat 2v2, let's be honest. He just cleared that early one and has the type of advantage here. The collision course, though, needs the one hit knockout, and, and it, it gets it. Yeah, but thanks to the collision course, the secondary effects going to do double damage against super effective, or at least boosted damage it's against 30%. super effective. Yeah, 30% 30 boost against super effective. Huge damage regardless. Foul play onto the Urshifu now. Not going to be very effective. It's going to resist, and that's going to be Wicked Blow coming out now onto the Coridon. Not doing a lot. Too. So it's looking pretty bleak for Arcton here, and like you said, Matthias, probably Rishi taking game one. Yeah, locked into the choice band here. Doesn't have another choice. It's got to just fully commit to the choice band throughout the whole thing, but... Oh, it you can see it's there. Taking the win is going to be Rishi Gupta in the first game of the set. Rishi playing so excellently that first game. That was uh, that was one of probably the more simple and straightforward matches we've seen so far. Of course, still very high level play coming out from both players, but there's not a lot of super secret knowledge checks you gotta worry about. Can I do this? Can I do that? Is he gonna go for the terrors? Everybody kind of just played straightforward. And ultimately, Rishi's gonna come out on top there, but that's usually how game ones usually go. Everyone's playing straightforward. Nobody's taking too big of a risk. You just gotta try to play your game, get a feel out for your opponent. Game two is where you really start to see some of the crazier mind games. And one thing I do want to say is, once again, the big uh, counters to these Karadon teams are just not there on this Ice Rider mm -hmm. team. You don't have that Pelipper to set up the rain to clear that sun. You don't have anything that can deal with that Shadow Tag. And there's just so many good counters out there. And what I really feel like is especially strong about that uh, Karadon team is even if it does kind of get countered out, it's such a flexible Pokemon fighting and uh, uh, dragon type and fire it, and fire. You can use fire with the terrestrialization. There's like three different types that you're pretty comfortable hitting with. Even losing the sun, it's not that big of a deal for you. Exactly. Yeah, I think I do think where he struggled the most was fighting against Gothitelle. Arton, like maybe he's not comfortable fighting against Garth Gothitelle right now. So he's gonna have to figure out what he needs to do to beat mm -hmm. Gothitelle and play just a bit smarter. He really tried to f push through and force that 
Trick Room to go up in that second turn and really just led to wasted turns for him. I think he just cannot lead with that Smear Smeargle Calyrex because that seems to have been figured out by But Smeargle Calyrex has beaten Rishi earlier today. But only because I think of a mechanical, like a little bit of a mechanical uh, mess up there. Because I think if he plays it correctly, if he plays it perfectly well like he did this match, it like it's... I don't even see a world in which he can play out of it because it's just restricting his movement so much. There's a lot of opportunities that both these players can find. I think, obviously, especially in VGC, your lead is super, super important. I think in this matchup, more so because it really does set the momentum. If you are leading with a Smeargle into the Gothitelle, your game just gets so much harder. But on the flip side, of course, if you do lead that Smeargle with your Calyrex in a favorable matchup, the game just gets so much easier. We're going to see the same leads coming up from both players here, but now with that knowledge in mind of how your opponent wants to play, hopefully you'll be able to make some better decisions. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if we see maybe a Protect here, if we see a Follow Me. The hard part is the double fake out. If you're R10, are you predicting him to do the same thing again? It looks like he tried to switch, but again, that Gothitelle with the Shadow Tag forced to stay in. Going for, for the deck right here, for the fake, the double fake out and the taunt threatening is just so strong. I think we're going to see that double fake out again. There's no reason not to press it unless Rishi kind of outplays himself and goes for like a mind read, like super high brain, uh, you know, check. Say going for a Terra really early. I mean, why not? You don't, you don't have the threat of that uh, high horsepower, so no, to stop that grass coverage from hitting at a heart at all. Yeah, the other thing we are seeing is we are seeing the close combat instead of the stomping tantrum. And maybe if he had stomping tantrum, that would be a real decision in this matchup here. Exactly. There's so the there's taunt. the taunt. He's making him unable to do anything here yeah. for the taunt. Cannot so use Smeargle decorate. Is now, yeah, Smeargle is now stuck. Like, you don't even need to use Fake on the Goth still for this opener for it to be that strong. Yeah. Yeah. Smeargle great. can't decorate. Smeargle All can't fake, fake out. out. Here I, comes the Glacial Lance. That's all he can do here, because it'll get stopped by the Taunt if he gets switched over. Yeah. Yeah, you're basically just stuck with a little runt on your team that is just doing absolutely nothing. The best part is for Rishi, he doesn't even want to get rid of it. Now it's a 1v2. This Smeargle can quite literally do nothing. But at the same time, you still have a whole Calyrex on the side of your team. This Pokemon has been brought to so many teams for a reason. It's capable of doing a lot of things, but can it take on a 1v2 of some of the best support slash um, pivot slash skirmish Pokemon in the meta right now? The Woodhammer is going to do decent enough damage, but the Glacial Lance is going to hit the Rillaboom for sure, and maybe even taking it out. Yeah, he's going to take out the Rillaboom. That's a really important knockout there. The question is, does Foul Play one more time knock out that Calyrex? I don't think it gets knockout, no. but bringing out the second Pokemon will ensure the double hit, and I think that could get the knockout. I think what's the best part for for Rishi here is now the game is predictable. He knows exactly what his opponent can and can't do. He knows the spear goes not going anywhere. There's no switches. It's just cutting the consideration you have to make by half. Now you only have to worry about is Calyrex's moves. Even the Calyrex can't switch out. So what move is Calyrex going to go for? Do you get a trick a room or glacial land? That that's point. basically it, right? That's the only stuff you have to worry about, and you can just set up yourself to be in a good situation for no matter what move he goes for. You can try to play around the trick room. You can try to play around the. Uh, the, the uh, Glacial Lance, and on top of that, actually, you could try to just taunt for the Trick Room, waste one of his turns if he goes for that. And then You're taunt right again. Up. Yeah, and then you could just tear onto your Coridon, so it resists a Glacial Lance. I kind of figured out maybe that might just be the play. Taunt and then, uh, you know, fire Terra on your Coridon. There's a turn for you. Yeah, I thought he was actually going to go for the Protect here, but it looks like he's going pure offensive with the Glacial Lance. Now, we did see Terra Dark Goth until last time do a lot of that damage. We're not seeing it this time. We'll see how this damage calc runs out. Again, R10 needs to win this game and get to the finals here. There's the fake out again. Can't do anything. And that's the downside of Smeargle. Smeargle needs an attack move. Here comes Collision Course oh, into Smeargle. Interesting. Oh, one. Sash. Breaks the sash, but why would you attack Smeargle? You can just leave it alive. Well, you can just ensure that it's an easy clear later yeah, on. You don't want to have to be put it. in a position where it's a risky play, but no, oh. No, he's just knocking, knocking out, out Smeargle. Interesting. Rishi, that is an interesting play. Maybe Rishi wants an honorable duel. He's up <laughs> one game. He feels comfortable. But now, this is going to be a very dangerous game for him. It's going to be an incredibly dangerous game, as we are probably going to see the Urshifu come out and put on that pressure. 
Or the Ursa Luna Blood Moon with the Hyper Voice, but yeah, it's gonna be that Urshifu. You know what I'm actually considering now is the fact that Taunt is an Eternal. I think Taunt was gonna run out the next turn. Do you really want to be dealing with the Smeargle here? I don't think so. I think I you could you could cycle the Taunt though, for sure. Yeah. I don't know if you can. We know Gothitelle's Goth Goth faster. Okay. Gothitelle is yeah. faster in this matchup, so Gothitelle could have just. Yeah, would have cycled it. Now it's the question is Gothitelle going to attack this turn? Or do you just try and focus on the Crydon who could who could also protect the turn? Or do I you just taunt on the Calibrex? I, I think you have to just go for an attacking move here. Either way, you just stall one turn, you're right back to where you are. You want to try and take this without your Crydon taking damage. So you want to try and take down this Calyrex as soon as you can. Yeah, Godstail is going to protect. I do not hate that move. Try and get some of the grassy terrain health back. He can strike through protect. But it, can't, it could have used Wicked Blow, you're totally correct, but there's the collision course. Probably into that Urshifu. Urshifu not going to take that very nicely. Ooh. No, it goes down. So Blood Moon is all that remains. Ah, oh, I forgot Dark Type is weak to fighting, so that's going to be a guaranteed KO on that Urshifu. Only really one Pokemon left on uh, on Artan's side of the field here, but the Glacial Lance is going to knock out the Crydon but I think it's pretty manageable. I think Rishi is maybe playing, expecting an Among, uh, uh, among us, an Amoongus yeah. on the enemy team because he wants to be able to have that taunt ready. For well, Arten doesn't have Amoongus. Arten has Grimmsnarl on the back. Oh, you're right. Maybe mm. even for this, he's just playing for the support mods at this point. Maybe, but that Blood Moon in the back is very scary. Oh, Tinglu is pretty scary as well, though. Yeah, Tinglu is incredibly scary. Foul play is incredibly scary, but you cannot Dis the blood, the blood moon again. Tinglu lowering the special attack stat of everything. Gonna go for the hyper voice, probably glacial lance combo, or do you protect? A lot of things to consider here. You might have to protect. Out. Yeah, I think the protect is a great move here. You'll have to, you'll probably leave something open, or double protect this turn. But Gothitelle has to do something. It protected last turn, so Gothitelle will have to do something this turn. I feel like you might want to try going for a taunt, especially with that Ursaluna coming out. But at the same time, your Ting Lu, fairly slow, at least I just guessed by looking at it. Maybe slower than the Ursaluna. In either case, you really don't want this Calyrex going first, but Calyrex is going to go for the Protect here. And now it's just going to be the rest of the Pokemon here left to play. Gothitelle going to go for the Foul Play on the Calyrex. It's going to get blocked. And now it's just these two Terrestrial <gasps> He went creatures. for Fisher. Ooh. Oh, it missed. The Stomping Tantrum coming out next turn. Yeah, it is going to be a Stomping Tantrum hovering On the over. Calyrex. On the Calyrex. Probably on the Calyrex. I think that, that is, is a knockout. 100% that's going to be a knockout. It's a Fire type. It's going to have boosted damage. It's going to be a stab. And Calyrex is not going to be able to. So I think. I think this is going to come down to a Fissure on the next turn. I think. Yeah. <laughs> or you try think, to go for I a double Blood protect. If Blood Moon Earth Luna is faster, it's not. Tinglu is the fastest thing on the field. It lives on what? 5 HP! Wow. How is that even possible? It lives. Calyrex has been living all day, and it pulls it out one more time to live on 5 HP, and R10 pushes this to game three. That's, wow. That's insane. The amount of times we've seen Calyrex survive on ranges, I think it survived every range possible today. Calyrex Actually. has been absolutely insane today, and R10 pushes it to game three. You see the stress on his face of what an insane matchup. Yeah, that is absolutely wow. insane. The fact, if that Fissure hit, different game entirely. Yeah, but, but, actually, you're, ba but you're banking on a 30% Fissure hit. He really was I think you'd have to go for the double Fissure to ensure that but, game win, but he wouldn't have done that. But honestly, the lower chance than Fissure is that Calyrex surviving, exactly. right? So I can't even I can't even put that into the factor list here. The fact that that Calyrex surviving, completely unprecedented. I didn't even think it was close in the calculation range, but I guess it's just that tanky. I mean, we talk about the power of Calyrex. I mean, look, Calyrex had to solo most of that fight. I think Rishi really taking out Smeargle there put him at a disadvantage as it mm. allowed Artan to bring in something else to help Calyrex. Calyrex was stranded. Calyrex was alone, but he brought in, he was able to bring in something else to help it and win that battle at the end. Yeah, I think that's where it was a little bit of a, of a misplay. I think he really wanted, was banking that he would bring on another support mod. He wanted to clear the supports before mm. he took on the DPSs because if any more setup would have made it much more difficult. But I think the fact... I don't know. Yeah, it was just clearing that it's, Smeargle kind of put things a little bit more loosey-goosey for uh, Arten to put it The only way to find way. out 
would just be asking him after this match. I probably yeah, really. wouldn't mind doing that myself. Just it's so interesting. If you're if you haven't come to any of these events, hearing these players talk about Pokemon is some of the most interesting discussions you can hear. The amount of perspectives you can have on one single game, the exact same game. Four different people can look at it and see it in completely different ways, and all of those ways could be correct. There's no single way to look at or break down a battle or a single analysis that's 100% clear cut, except if you're running Calyrex with a follow me, because there's always one button to press, and that's yeah. Glacial Lance follow me. But in any case, overall, with general Pokemon battling, there's so much to consider, and that's uh, another reason it's very and important. I think Rishi has an amazing opening here. Like, even against people that aren't uh, the Calyrex and Smeargle, it's amazing. But no, it's going to happen when we're going to see the run the back. Leads. I'm shocked we actually haven't seen the Fergraf come out anytime. He, as he block has those fake outs. I didn't even realize. I think Fergraf would be an insane lead here. You can't swap very out. Smart. Oh, but you'd have to lead it, yes. You would lead you it, at least and get then you have, turn. Yeah, you, you have two chances to room. put up Trick Room. You block Fake Out. You do a ton of damage. We are just going to see the Terra, no threat. Terra Lance here right off the bat. Because if you do lead with the Fur Graph, you block the double Fake Out. They're not going to be able to knock out your Calyrex in the first turn. You could at least guarantee a Trick Room because of that. Or, yeah, because there's no Fake Out to worry about. You get a Trick Room well, up, but... Yeah, but then the taunt comes to play. There's still a lot of pressure, but yes, True. I agree that it would probably be a little bit more of a flexible opening because you could also help in hand the Glacial Lance. But mm. nonetheless, let's stop talking about ifs. Let's see what's going on right here, right now. We've seen the opening. The double fake out pressure is happening. There's always that choice. Maybe you just forego it because your enemy might do something you don't suspect. But once again, we're seeing that fire terror type. Yeah, we know Calyrex that even if it takes the fake out, it heals back up to full thanks to the grassy train on the next turn. So I think it, as much as it doesn't want to be fake out, there's the one. Yeah, really only doing about seven points of damage. There's the double fake out doing a lot more to Smeargle. Smeargle can't move and the Calyrex can't move. So it's a nothing turn. Smeargle will get some health back. Calyrex will get some health back. And now Smeargle should out. get taunted next turn. <laughs> Most likely. Uh, and what can you really do about it if you are if you're uh, Artan? Really, nothing. You can't switch. You can't no. change anything up. You just gotta you, take you, the taunt. You could take a risk by going. There's the grass guy. Wait, he's just removing Smeargle from the field. Very interesting choice coming up from Rishi. Again, I'm sure he has his reasons for doing so, but from what we've been able to, oh, he maybe just wants to completely nullify the threat of the trick room, a guarantee the taunt, and then have a very easy way of dealing with the Calyrex. But then again, making any switch-ins into this Calyrex still is pretty hard to do so. Rillaboom is going to go down, so you at least you get your switch in now. I think doing that, getting rid of that smear goal, makes you have to consider so many more options. Such a risky move taunting Calyrex, because it's a risk for him to go and not do the Glacial Lance, because Glacial Lance, nothing can stop that at that point, no. aside from a Protect. But outside of that, a lot of things can stop that Trick Room. I think Rishi expected R10 to play the same way he played in game one, but R10 switched it up. He decided he's just going to go full force offense here. We will see the Sucker Punch. Now, do you hit? Go, do you go for Sucker Punch or do you go with Wicked Blow? That is the question you here. Maybe if, go with Wicked Blow. If you go for Sucker Punch and Gothel doesn't attack, you've just wasted a turn. I think you have to go with consistency here. Maybe the Sucker Punch is the play you threaten anything that dares to attack you. Yeah. Chat, chat pointing out the 5D chess. That really is what it feels like. So many different moves on different moves on different moves that have to happen here in these tight battles. And now we're seeing the Sucker Punch. The only real risk at play there is if he just goes for a switch and then your Urshifu is wasting one of his precious, precious turns. But with that Protect coming up, uh, that's not going to hit through because she's technically not attacking. So that's going to get... Wait, we're not seeing Terra on Coridon. You're right. Oh, that's true as well. So it's going to be vulnerable to the Glacial Lance. It's going to KO, but maybe he wants to save the Terra for Ting Lu, potentially. That puts Ting Lu's survivability through the roof. Yeah. I think I think Karada may be able to live this one out, because there's no there's one chilling nay on here. It's still going to hit like a truck, and no, yeah. it's not. One's more now, than enough for the Karada. again, being weak to chilling, being weak to that Glacial Lance is almost a guaranteed death sentence at that point. Mm -hmm going for the foul play, but we've seen this calc. I don't think the plus two foul play is enough to kill uh, to kill the Ice Horse. Stomping Tantrum might be able to. 
Yeah, Stomping Tantrum is totally a possibility. I'm just worried about this Ursaluna here. We're seeing the special attack, so this Blood Moon is going to be slightly less threatening. However, this Ursaluna being on this field still, I, like if this was just Calyrex, I feel like this game would still be kind of hard. But now you got a Calyrex and an Ursaluna, you only you don't even really have that many heavy hitters. It still feels pretty scary. But if you do get the Fissure... You have to go for the Fissure here. If you miss, you go Stomping Tantrum. You cannot guarantee a knockout next turn. But we already saw it. It's not actually a guaranteed it's knockout on enough. the Calyrex. It survived. And it was... I, had, I believe it had... Near guaranteed. No, it was... I think it was reduced HP that that I last game. Right. But full HP oh, and surviving on a range. He's going for the foul play here. Going for one last-ish effort. It has two chilling nays. That's true. That could it be hits huge a little damage. bit harder. It's we'll still not super kills. effective, though. We've seen it so many times today. I just don't think it does enough damage. It does not. It lives at 35. But the stopping tantrum. Onto who? Onto who? Onto the Calyrex. Okay. Takes out the wow. Calyrex. Wow. Beautiful. Well played. No trick rooms to worry about. So, again, Calyrex is such a threatening Pokemon because you can make it go first consistently. Without that, it is a little. Uh, There's the Hyper powerful. Voice. Does not remove either of the opponent Pokemon. We're seeing one more foul play in here before it goes down. Yeah. Or another move. It can even protect, stall out a little bit longer. Yeah, I think protect is a great option here. There's the hyper voice. Chris on both. Oh, it's going for the hot foul play. He wants to end it right here. Foul play. Foul play not doing a ton. He has to go for fissure. Oh, There's throat shot. Oh! oh! Watch the hyper voice. That is wow. incredible. I didn't even think of Throw Chop as a move. Yeah, that's an incredible play coming up from Rishi. Again, this this game, unless something really weird happens, will most likely be going Rishi's way. But yeah, oh, there's the there forfeit. Yeah. This wow. Is a great game from both players. For yeah, sure. an incredible game by both players there. So we will see Karidon make it to the finals versus. I'm not sure who the other two Pokemon are. Rishi, though, gets to the finals. Congratulations to Rishi, and congratulations to R10 for a great performance all weekend. For I sure. think R10 made it to the semifinals on day one, so now he finishes here back in semifinals on day two. Yeah, great performance. On day four. Yeah, great performance all both of those days, and now, I mean, this team is going very, very well, especially if it's going up against another one of those Smeargle teams. It can definitely shut that one, lock it right down, but... You have to consider the Terra Ghost that could mm -hmm. be coming there, the Pelipper that could be there as well. Shut down the shuts down the sun and, and complicates things just a little bit more. Yeah, and complication in a game is already as complicated as Pokemon. Just really makes any decision making process ten times harder. Well, more than ten times, exponentially harder. Every factor you add just makes the decision that much more difficult. And I just wanted to add that um, if I feel like the Coridon matchup into the Shadow Rider is even worse because it can't hit mm -hmm. that collision okay. course. Yeah. It has nothing super effective against it. It has the Flare Blitz and the Sun, which will hit it hard. But if they have something to clear that, it's still going to be a very, very tough battle. But I think still this got is, the Gothitelle, at least. Yeah, I think this is the Gothitelle's interesting thing. Gothitelle's weak to Astral. Of the meta here at St. Clair, I don't think we would have seen as many Smeargles. Yeah, I don't think we would have seen as many Smeargles played as we would if... This wasn't a four-day event. People were not playing Smeargle on day one and were not playing on day two. But we've seen three or four different Smeargles today. So I think people really developed. And there was a group that came together and said, we're going to use Smeargle. And maybe the Coridon players or some other players got wind of that and changed their teams and added God's Tell to counter Smeargle. Yeah. Exactly. Like if you, if you don't have that God's Tell, if you don't have a taunt or a way to shut that down... Like, even if you do have a taunt, you don't have that shadow tag. Mm -hmm. It just is such a good support. Monica has the follow me, has the spore threat. It has the decoration, which is another amazing move. It has the fake out pressure as well. So if you're yeah. able to get some fluidity in there, the swap out's going. And if, <laughs> if you don't even need the swap out, it's just that strong. It's the best part of every support Pokemon that people run put into one small, <laughs> slow, frail body, basically. And I, and I hate to say it, but... You could honestly make it even better by giving it Terra Ghost. Shadow Tag doesn't affect that anymore. And now you have something that can swap in and out. So it, it, this isn't even fully developed yet. We're just yeah. seeing the beginning of this meta. Yeah, we did get word that our other semifinalist is our Windsor local, Emma. We have not seen a Windsor, a Windsor to Windsorite win all weekend. So this is the first chance for Windsor to get that win and put their self themselves on the name board of our champions today. So will Emma be able to do it? That's the question going up against Crydon. I don't know. It's going to be a hard battle. I'm pretty sure Emma is running the Ice Rider as well. 
Exactly, and now with all that setup, all that suspense, we will see the exciting conclusion of the Tetris series MSSs, and after a quick break.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to the grandest of grand finals. This is the final one we're having in our series of MSSs, and this is it. This is the penultimate showdown. It is the Corridon versus the Ice Rider, a fabled matchup. Between all three of us, we have some some horses in this race. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, let's some, get right uh, into it. Some literal horses, too. I'll start <laughs> off. I think, I think this is a Calyrex Ice Rider session. We've seen Calyrex Ice Rider be dominant all day, so let's go over our MSS. Team representing the win representing Windsor Kyler X Ice with that water Terra this time with the Glacial Lance high horsepower trick room and protect. We've got a Moongus, we've got Incineroar, we've got Raging Bolt, Urshifu, Rapid Strike, and actually joining the team Gothitelle on the Kyler X team, which is really interesting. Again, I actually think that Water Terra is almost even worse for Coridon teams than that Fire Terra was. So this is not a great matchup for Coridon here. Yeah, but I think the matchup is good for Coridon based on the rest of the wealth that Rishi's team has to offer. You know, the sun, there's nothing out there to block out that sun. We have a Gothitelle there to match it. You can switch in and out with the ghost typing. You have the Rillaboom there to set up the grassy terrain. You have the Fluttermane for some burst DPS. You have the Heat Rotom, put some fire pressure and gank use of that sun. Meanwhile, it also has lightning coverage as well to shut down any aerial threats. And then we also have Ting Lu in the back with that fissure stomping tantrum to shut down any fire types. And that's the thing with this team and this uh, these Pokemon matchups. I feel like uh, if you build the team slightly differently, I feel like this matchup is very cried on favored. But I feel like if it's just reg it's more like uh, the one that we have here with Rishi's team, I feel like it's actually uh, Calyrex kind of sided. Um, the Definitely. fact that you're basically forced to um, ter Terra on your Coridon, or it just com gets completely knocked out because of Glacial Lands. Sorry, I just had uh, I just identified something here Go in the it. sheet that is absolutely imperative for Rishi to play upon. I think this is why he has this Pokemon on his team. Mm -hmm. He has the Coridon, right? Sets up the sun. Mm -hmm. You throw in the Heat Rotom. You threaten with fire. It also has lightning. And we've been seeing the Terra fire. Calyrex, but this is Terra Water Calyrex, threatened by the lightning itself. Yeah, oh, I think okay. that's the interesting call of can you bring Ting Lu in this game? If you do bring Ting Lu, great. You can counter Raging Bolt, you can counter Incineroar, but you don't bring Ting Lu and instead you bring Heat Rodom to counter Calyrex. But we're pretty I'm pretty sure that Heat Rodom dies to an icicle to a glacial lance, at least a plus one glacial lance. So this yeah, is really so gonna be, be a plus. matter of the Pokemon that come out. The, also, the other thing that Emma has that maybe Rishi isn't pre prepared to face is the Gothitelle on the other side. Now Gothitelle can come out, it can lock Rishi's Pokemon in, and what? how does Rishi now deal with not being able to switch his Pokemon around as freely as he likes? Yeah, there's so many moving parts in this match. There's so many pluses and negatives on both sides. It's up to the trainers to use their mastery to play around them. Let's see the opener. It's going to be Raging Bolton center roar for Emma, and it's going to be Rotom and Gothitelle for Rishi. Uh, immediately, we're seeing the Incineroar here with the parting shot available, I'm sure. I'm not sure if you are blocked from switching with, uh, like, switching moves with Shadow Tag. So that's definitely something to consider here. We're going to have the, the Raging Bolt. I feel like this is just a solid lead all around. It's pretty bulky, especially if it's running the conventional Assault Vest, which it is. So it should be able to withstand basically anything that these Pokemon have to throw out. This is a very good, I feel like especially on game one, this is a very good lead. Gets information, and you still have potential to run away with the game if you play everything properly here. Gothitelle's going to lead with the Protect. Makeout's going to go into the Gothitelle, of course, and that's going to get blocked. And now it's just the Raging Bolt and Heat Grime we have to worry about. But Thunderbolt onto the Incineroar. Wow! Oh, Paralysis, dude? No, just gonna be huge damage. Full switch gonna get Wow! That crit yeah. really mattered. But I think the one thing that Rishi does have to worry about here is if you do set up Sun, that Raging Bolt only gets stronger. So you have to really be careful about positioning around Raging Bolt. You don't. Raging Bolt's already a, a very offensive threat. You don't want it to get even more powerful than it already is. Exactly, but that Raging Bolt can't really strike this Rotom with any effectiveness because of the electric type. And got to tell, it's going to be effective, but still, this is a great opener for Rishi, and there's no switches for Emma here. I feel like this knockoff onto the Gothitelle might knock out. I'm not exactly sure, but now I think about it again, Gothitelle is not specially defensive, it's more so physically defensive, which, uh, yeah, that's very good. It might not get knocked out by the knockoff, so it's not even really something you have to worry about if you're Rishi, but there's still so many things you have to consider on both of these sides. That's exactly why we're going to see the Gothitelle switch off after protecting turn one and sending out the Rillaboom instead. 
probably wouldn't be doing any fire moves to that slot, so this Rillaboom is pretty comfortable here. And uh, now we got the Grassy Surge up too to help recover anything that might have gone through. Rotom is going to get knocked off. Uh, the Citrus Berry, unfortunate, would have definitely eaten that up, but Bolt Switch is going to come Ooh. on. Incineroar lives on four. Another range survival here today. Or maybe it's not a range. I feel like it might have been, but actually can't Could be just an EV spread as well that's uncommon. Yeah, this Incineroar exactly. is very tanky. Guaranteed to live there. The one thing, again, the Goth Tail gets the protect, but it is going to take a big Volt Switch there. And Raging Bolt's going to go back and hide away. Problem is, now there's a lot of fake out pressure. You could eliminate this Incineroar. You could even stunt whatever is going to be thrown out here. It looks like it's going to be the Calyrex. And now things are looking relatively still good for Rishi. Yeah, but I think Emma's putting themselves in a position to get ready to win. Again, I wouldn't be shocked if you see Protect here. There is the double fake out possibilities out here, but I think Emma knows that and is prepared to play around that. Yeah, we're seeing the double fake out. Usually we see that threat on turn one, but with these two coming out off of the switch ins and everything else, now you have to worry about that. And Cinemar, not a follow me user, so you're not going to be able to re redirect anything. Your Calyrex is definitely facing down some threats with those fake outs. So do you call it out? Do you call that they're going to play around the fact that you're probably going to protect and just go for a trick room once again? Or do you expose yourself to unnecessary damage? But it seems this time we're going to play things safe. You're going to use the protect and just hope that Rishi isn't able to come up with any clever tricks to play around that. Yeah, here's the protect going up here. Again, one downside to Rishi here is he, again, you have that grassy train, but you do not have the stomping tantrum to deal with the fire types. We will see if grassy glide goes out here. Parting shot, no, Rillaboom did not grassy glide. Rillaboom might actually be hitting into that Calyrex trying to double attack it, which may be a bad move here for Rishi. Oh, and it can't switch out of Shadow Tag. Can't switch out of Shadow Tag if it uses a switching move. So now Raging Bolt and Incineroar are going to have that movement potential. Raging Bolt going to come back out and now threaten a lot of damage here. Yeah, there's the U-turn, but that's really not going to do much to Raging Bolt. And Raging Bolt will probably heal more, will probably heal back up to full thanks to Grassy Terrain. It's very interesting matchup here today and we also have the Rotom still but I don't think you want to throw Rotom back out into this yeah, maybe he, you do. He's going to throw Rotom out so now you have to make a call do you overheat or do you Thunderbolt I think you overheat because on the off chance that he doesn't it will just have that much more value. Either way and even if you do manage to get out the Amoongus for example taking an overheat would be detrimental and it would still KO the Incineroar if it comes back in as well so overheat is probably oh, just wait. option select Thunderbolt, never mind, I thought it was still fire. I think Thunderbolt would have more value because yeah, it will either do good damage or super effective damage. Yeah. The, also, the other really important thing to note on Emma's moveset compared to the last the last uh, oh, I see. Ice Rider we saw is we're seeing that Stomping Tantrum instead of seeing that, uh, instead of seeing the close combat, that Stomping Tantrum is crucial for a Karidon matchup. Exactly, we're seeing the early commit into this dark foul play, trying to take out this Calyrex as soon as possible. But I don't think it has any stat boots. No, boost no stat boots, yes, on Calyrex. It'll still do a ton of damage, probably about half. Sure. So now the question is, does Rotom finish it off? That is the question. It's water. If the Thunderbolt was selected, this could go the way of Rishi. Oh, play lands, gonna do a good chunk of damage. They're not going to knock it out. And they get the Thunderbolt. Wow, brilliant play by Rishi. It doesn't kill, it lives on two! What? That is insane. This Calyrex Pokemon is absolutely absurd when it comes to the defense. And Rotom is actually going to fall this turn thanks to the Draco Meteor coming out from the Raging Bolt. Glacier Lance is going to be the retaliation, and that's going to hit the Gothitelle pretty hard enough yeah, to knock it out, in fact. Wow. Unbelievable. Calyrex really what? just choosing today. I do not want to die. I will not fall. Nah, I'd win. The king of bountiful harvest is reaping the rewards right now, getting even stronger here with that chilling nay. Nay, I'd win. In fact, <laughs> it's what this Calyrex is saying every time it gets hit with a move that definitely should knock it out. We're going to see the Karidon making its debut. This game is far from over still. At the very least, you still have some options. Really, move at full HP, nice, happy, and healthy. You could Grassy Glide or at least threaten it into this uh, this Calyrex, you got a Grass-type Pokemon facing down a Water-type. Everything's still hunky-dory for you if you're on the side of Rishi. You just have a little extra work to do. It is gonna oh, be Emma's fully well. committing. Yeah. Just going for the Glacial Lance? Going for Glacial Lance, the full commit. Will it pay off? 
Maybe you just uh, fake out into the Raging Bolt and just use some chip move that would threaten any of the Pokemon that could switch into the Caloric Slot to just get rid of it. I feel like that might be a solid play for Ishii. We're going to see if that's going to be what he went with here. There's Collision Course going to take yeah. out wow. Calyrex. Interesting. Not onto the Raging Bolt. No, not on the it's Raging probably Bolt. probably going to get faked out. The no, most. if it was going to be faked out, it would have been faked out already. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah it looks like you're going to go for the grass. The Rillaboom's just going to hit else. it. With a what? The wood With hammer. Wood hammer. I don't know if this gets the knockout. It's gonna be good damage. I be think. good damage. No, not, no, not even, even close. Really. But that means it's not gonna take that much damage. In fact, it's probably gonna heal up off of the self damage it just did. And the Volt Switch also not gonna be that effective here. So gonna... now we're gonna see that last Pokemon for sure now. So we know it. It is a Moongus. You get the Incineroar Switch to at least reduce the attack from both these Pokemon. Both of them are physical attackers. Right so... up, is holding the Clear Amulet, so it won't oh, get true. reduced. Yes, but. With just an Incineroar and an Amoongus coming out, I guess your play is to just really hope you can try to get a Spore off on one of these Pokemon. But, uh, well, in fact, you'd only be able to get it on Coridon because Rillaboom's a Grass-type, so just hope you can get the Spore off onto the Coridon. And the way I'm seeing things, I don't really see a way for Rishi to avoid that unless he just goes for a Protect play, but then you're not knocking out the Amoongus. It can just sit there and keep pressing Spore. Yeah. There's, there's not a lot of pressure. There's U-turn from Rillaboom into a Moongus. That is an option. But this Fake Out and this Spore is a very deadly combo. You have to fully commit to Protect. Not going to do it. We are going to see Coridon take a little snooze. It's wow. the Moongus on three! Unbelievable. Folks, you cannot make this up. Wow, it looks like Emma Brooks just has the blessings right now. All the luck is going their way. Maybe it's not even luck. Maybe it's just the EV spread of Who knows? to be tanky. Who the all-powerful deity deities have come down. Lord Arceus from above has decided your Pokemon shall not die on this day. And you know what, actually? I feel like this might actually be kind of better for Rishi. Now that this thing's asleep, there's still the chance that it could wake up and this baits out basically Emma doing anything but sporing that slot again. Like, you might want to Pollen Puff into your Incineroar, for example, or do anything, but now this Rillaboom's, or this uh, Coridon's asleep, you're not just going to keep pressing sporing it. So you hope for the first turn to wake up and try to get something off. Yeah, it is guaranteed one turn of sleep, so it could wake up next turn or the turn after at this point. There is a chance for three full turns of sleep. If it is, if it is three turns, that is deadly and probably a game ender. Has a, oh, and he, yeah. he's using the Protosynthesis on that Raging Bolt, guaranteeing the speed boost. The Woodhammer going in, but once again, not doing any damage at all. No. So yeah, I got, got a special attack boost there, so we'll go up by 33%. On There's the, the Paul Puff doing a ton to Rillaboom. At least the term ton here being pretty relative. And now this is where you're comfortable just mashing Spore to make sure that if it does wake up, it's going to go right back to sleep. But it will be able to get something off before it goes back to sleep, I believe, since Amoonga is probably the slowest Pokemon on the field here. But now Crown's going to stay asleep for at least two turns. It could sleep for one more possible turn, but it's not going to enjoy taking this Draco Meteor to the face. Not at all. No, op no opportunity to switch. That's going to be your right on gone, and that's going to be your game going to Emma for game one. Yeah, Game's not over it. yet, but I think it's pretty much as good as done. Yeah, the spore. Well, you can't spore the Rillaboom. You can't spore the Rillaboom, but you can pollen, pollen puff. puff and you can thunderbolt. It's a lot of not very effective. No spread moves move. Yeah. yeah. Fed rock slide. There's always the chink to gamble on the rock slide, but right now there's no flinch, nothing to stop this from yeah, happening. Battle is canceled. Emma takes round one. Very what an incredible set of plays for Emma there. Yeah, what a brilliant round one from Emma, just getting those small survivability chances. And you got to think, maybe this is all calculated. Maybe this is put down on paper, got the right EV spread to live that exact move, get down to three HP. Because at this point, it has to be. It's way too consistent from what we've seen today. Yeah, I mean, I think people have run these calcs. They know the foul play got the tell or got yeah got the tell is a total option. So they are calcing how much do I need to be at to live a plus two foul play. But there's also so many different calibrics we've seen in that exact situation where it does end up surviving with one or three HP. So 
Again, who knows? I'm not out there. I'm not in the fields. I'm not in the trenches doing the calculations myself. I'm just here spectating. And when I see this happen so, so, so many times, one can only wonder what's exactly causing that. But now, as we're heading into game two, I feel like both of these players were able to really observe each other's play styles, their habits, the way they want to try to get their game plan going. Like I said, I felt like that opening from Emma was really good for, especially for game one, for scouting your opponent and get information while still being able to pivot into more um, offensive strategies. Um, but now, if you're going into game two, we might see a different type of lead. Let's see what they're going to be going for in this game two for the grand finals of the final day of the mid-season showdown here at St. Clair College. Ooh. Um, Del Lu is going to be the lead. Del that is a very interesting lead into Ooh, the Raging Bolt. That's Cinderella. a very good lead. Rishi actually probably leading a, making a lot better of a lead here. And I'm trying, I want to know who's faster, and I do not know right off the bat. I know Ting Lu is not the fastest Pokemon in the world. I would definitely say that, yeah, Raging Bull is probably the fastest here, but when it comes to the Incineroar, Gothitelle, and Ting Lu, I feel like Ting Lu is probably slower than uh, Baker and Ting Lu, do not hate that option, and the crit, because why nice. not? Gothitelle with the taunt onto the Incineroar, what a great actual, what a great move yeah. there. Not going to be able to get the parting shot off at least. It's going to have to leave the normal way or with the... Yeah, it's going to have to leave the normal way if it wants to get out of here. But do you actually just let your Incineroar stay here and just keep swinging? Um, that's that's always an option too. This Pokemon is no slouch when it comes to offensive play. People will use it defensively and supportingly, but it can still get some work done. But we're going to see the Ice Rider making its way onto the field here. And now things are about to get serious. Yeah, I think we are just going to see that Terra hit right off the bat and go knock off into Gothitelle here. Or the Will... Can't use will o because Ooh. of the taunt, so it really is just locked in a knockoff. But I don't think a Gothitelle wants to eat a knockoff. Oh, we might have to see the Protect forced out here. Or unless it goes for a taunt on the Calyrex and takes the knockoff. Yeah, we'll see what happens. That might be a pretty valuable play. Um, you're basically removing your opponent, one of your opponent's win conditions um, for at least three turns, but we're going to see the Terra come out onto the Calyrex get it into a water typing uh, and that glacial lance without the stab probably oh it is actually no, no. keep forgetting assault vest special defense and glacial lance physical attack so Tang Lu is still, still pretty weak it still has decent defense but yeah it's, it's gonna tear a poison here okay. it would have been weak to glacial lance if it did not tear so it's got a tear here to try and avoid it glacial lance is still gonna hurt real bad I have a feeling we might see a fissure come through I, I, I think would, that is I the win condition. If Fisher lands, that would be the biggest pop off I will have had all weekend. But There's you, the knockoff, gets yeah. the kill. But you got the taunt off, and that's very important. Now you don't have to worry about this glacial lance coming out every turn. But with honest, I feel like this is a very good position to be in if you're Rishi with your uh, with your tank. I wouldn't say great position. Yeah, you're down a Pokemon and a half. Stop it, Tantrum. Tantrum coming out right away. Onto the Incineroar. Again, trying to focus oh. on Incineroar, but Incineroar lives. I'm shocked that you would focus on Incineroar rather than the full health Calyrex that is destroying the rest of your team currently. You're if we went for the Fissure, I think that might have been, even if it doesn't land on the uh, You double Calyrex, your you attack double for next the next turn. turn. I don't yeah. think you can risk a Fissure at this point. Again, you have to win this game. <laughs> I think you need to play for some risks at this point. Yeah. You're down. You're down on Pokemon. You already did a risky move with that Gothitelle taunt. I think you need to go big or go home here. Especially with that taunt, you're basically calling out that you might be stalling a turn. So if you're hoping that you're stalling a turn, then you get one free turn yourself. Oh. You do the Fissure to get the setup for the Stomping Tantrum. The Rotom is out, though. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think. but Electric. I don't think Rotom one-shots. Does Probably not, not one shot, but uh, maybe with the stomping tantrum, it'll be able to take it down. Yeah, this is now you don't want to be doing fissure. <laughs> yeah, now is not the time to fissure. But we're gonna have, have to see, see what we go for here. Um, what's, what's scary to know here? This incineral oh, drawing Team Lou. Okay. Is like Crydon coming out? Crydon. Oh no, Crydon's gonna eat a full. I think Crydon goes down here. Potentially, but you're playing the long game here. If you're Rishi, you want to just get this your team in a position to just wipe the rest. There's knockoff, knock there goes the clear amulet. Coridon is susceptible to intimidates to those parting shots. There's the thunderbolt. I don't think it gets the knock, oh, I don't think it gets crit. the kill. It does not, just sure. under half. And here's the glacial lance and down goes Coridon. That's gonna be pretty huge. And Coridon, unlike uh, Ice Rider, is not gonna be living off of those like very small HP margins. This one's basically a guaranteed knockout. So, Chilling Nay is going to get plus one, and you're going to be sending your Tinglu back in. 
but at least you still have your Rotom threatening with that electric um, Thunderbolt, and there's no, yeah, there is no uh, Trick Room up right now, so I think you can just... Oh, Calyrex can't protect after the taunt! Can't protect, but Calyrex can switch oh, out okay. into a Moongus here. Moongus sure. will eat a, an attack of any kind. So now you could just play for the Fissure maybe into the slot and just hope you get something. And if you don't, you have your Stomping Tension for the next turn. Exactly. Yeah, I think the only option here is Fissure. Emma's in a great position. Fissuring the Moongus here would be great. Uh, and it would be Retribution for all of the bad luck so far. So knock, knock off. off. Does remove that Assault Vest, Ooh. making it weak to those Thunderbolts. There's the Thunderbolt from Moongus doing pretty much nothing. And there's the Fissure, does not land it. Oh, oh. man, but the Stomping Tantrum now gonna be a little bit stronger, but will it be strong enough to take out the Amoongus? I don't think it will be enough to take out the Amoongus. Especially with that redirection from the Rage Powder. But it's, Rotom in Sun now has fire as well. I think that fire is strong oh. enough to take out Incineroar. I think we're gonna see a fire and move. Yeah, yeah, no Trick Room up, so at the very least, Rotom will be able to act first. If you do go for the Overheat, um, that could just knock out the Amoongus, but yeah, no, it's not Heat. Does it have Heat Leaf? I don't no. know. I can't see no, the No, you don't go for the spread. No, and, it's got uh, overheat. Parting shot oh. onto the Rotom as well. With with uh, Vessels of Ruin also reducing a special attack. Yeah, it's this really not going to do a lot here. No. I think we will see... We see Calyrex take the field again. Interesting. All Pokemon too on the side of Emma. It's looking very good for Emma right now as the Calyrex makes its way back into the field. Can you make something work here? If you're Ishii, just hope for the crit. Of course, you're not going to find that one. Fisher <gasps> is Fisher Wow! Fisher is able to take out the Amoongus. The double bet on Fisher. I think that was the only option he had. Yeah. But you're still kind of shaky right now with the Incineroar coming back in with the Intimidate. This is not going to be the most relevant point here, but I believe it's still going to be able to threaten Fake Out now. Yeah, uh, it's got Fake Out. It's got... I mean, if you fake out, yeah, you fake out into the Rotom. High horsepower to take out the Ting Lu. Yeah, this is looking bad for Rishi. There's no way this Ting Lu is going to get a move no off. Attack on Ting Lu. No, Ting Lu is full attack. There's the fake out into the Rotom. That's looking to be game. There's the high horsepower. It is just Rotom left. It is a 3v1. Yeah, that's it. Can Rotom find any wins here? But I think Emma's taken off their headphones. Emma knows they've got this in the bag. I can hear the people clapping outside. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner for day four is Emma Brooks. An incredible match all around. So many different strategies at play, different ways you could try to go for things. And at the end of the day, you reach for the sky. Sometimes you'll be able to grab a nice juicy prize right from it. Emma Brooks taking this game in a remarkable fashion. We even get to see the fissure, but still with the way that game was going for Rishi, there was not a lot to recover from. Yeah, that was such a great game by Emma, really taking taking the charge for Windsor and leading Windsor to finally win one of our one of our mid-season challenges and taking the force of Calyrex Ice Rider. I think Karino put up a great match, but just some rough switches in there for Rishi just let Calyrex or let Karino be in some really bad positions. Yeah, it was an amazing match from both sides, such high-level plays all around, and it's nice to have someone on the final day from Windsor finally take the win. But overall, that is going to be it. We're going to start to wrap things up here. So big congratulations to all the winners. It's going to be Steven Stark winning day one. Day two is going to be Kazuki Konohiro winning that day two. And then day three is going to be Rowan Hall. And of course, you just saw Emma win day four. Yeah, yeah, especially big shout-outs to Kazuki Kanahira for coming out and commentating yesterday as well, imparting a lot of his wisdom for us. You, you know, you and me? I know, I, we know, team. we built the theme, yeah. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> huge shout-outs. But of course, again, much love to all of the competitors, much love to all of the winners, much love to all the participants, and much love to the Pokemon community as well as everybody who helped make this event possible. For yeah. Sure. Big thank you to Ben, John, TK, Nate for choosing the St. Clair College Esports ne Nexus as your venue for this event. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, this is not going to be the end of Pokemon events just here at St. Clair. We are just getting started on this train of making St. Clair and Windsor the hub of, of VGC here in Canada. I hope so. I so really hope so. Yeah, so make sure you're keeping an eye on social medias for any of our future events. And we hope to see you out here. We know we had a lot of people in chat over these last few days who are really excited about Pokemon. Since 
some great numbers. So we hope to see all of you here at St. Clair for your chance to be on stream. Exactly. For your and chance to play Pokemon here. If you want to know when we're doing more stuff, always be sure, especially with all the new faces showing up on the Twitch stream, be sure to drop a follow. Okay, if you really love us, you could even subscribe. But if you want to know, keep up to date, join the St. Clair Saints Discord as well as follow us on probably most of the active social media like Twitter and other platforms TikTok. like Instagram, TikTok. We got everything and most of the events are going to be posted there as well. Exactly, but that's going to be all for tonight. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. And thank you to our sponsors, HyperX, Subway, Tim Warren, St. Clair SRC, and uh, am I missing St. anything? St. Clair College Alumni Association. There we go. Yeah, it's been a long day. Thank you, everybody. And that is going to be all. And we'll be back very soon with more Pokemon, but you're going to have to stay updated. So have a good night, everybody. We'll see you then. Yeah. <laughs>